Welcome into the Chemistry Podcast, episode number 228. Yeah, man. Presented by Hair Club. I just saw those guys. How was your it? consultation? It was good, man. They, they got some, because um, I was worried about the hair in the back, because they mm-hmm. had to like pluck out big, thick hair in the Were back. Were you honest with them? Well, I don't need to be honest with them. Like, they're honest with me. They, they're looking and evaluating my head, and they, they, they could do it. They have a new pill now, too, that just like boosts your hair. What? Not just on your head. Wait a minute. And maybe your eyebrows get it, and your beard gets a little mm-hmm. thicker, too, which you should probably take anyway. For my beard? Yeah, because you don't really have one. No. And, um, but I went there. Everything was good, man. I got thick, healthy hair on the sides that are going to yeah. use. So I, we're going to so do it after So they were happy with it and everything? Happy with what? The way your hair is looking, how it's well, growing. Well, they're happy with the front part, but the back part needs work. It's mm-hmm. been like four years since I've done it, and the front part's still there. But like yeah. the back part that they didn't do. See, if I didn't have the front part done, I'd be balder than a, a doorknob. Oh, really? And, yeah. God, yeah, Andy. I would have been balder and shit. I'd have to shave it like Stone Cold Can Steve I ask Austin. a question? Yeah. Um, cause I'm not exactly sure how it works, yeah. but like, I need you to maybe fill me in on a couple of things. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners, uh, well, all my people hear, out there in Saskatchewan, all my people, no, my like people out there in Alberta getting ready for barbecue season with that Alberta beef. Yikes. I won't forget about everybody on the East coast either out there in PEI. Somebody Alber- reached out Manitoba from, too. Oh, Manitoba. Got, yeah, but we can't bullshit. Ontario. Yep. Ontario, Nova Scotia. Uh, um, new fan land. When you had the front done, yeah. like when you get the front done, yeah. true question. Yeah, true question. Um, re- uh, honest question. Yeah. Will it, will that, could that ever fall out? Or is that permanent? It's pretty permanent, man. Like it does, it won't fall out. Yeah, like the uh, the old hairs weren't permanent and the new ones, they are. And it's just like the other, the rest of the hair that didn't, that was there four years ago is gone, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just got to get a re-up on the back. You're and not wearing to, a hat today. Well, I just took it off. I didn't even recognize you. Yeah, I, I was like, I was too. like, who is this? I know, very weak looking human being. <laughs> I'm 250 still, homie. <laughs> Pretty jacked. I've been working out. Hey, it's 75 right now. Close the windows because I'm about to sneeze all over you. Really? Oh, uh, my allergies are just absolutely killing me. Bubble boy, man. You and Brody both. Uh, I dude. told Brody he needs to start drinking or something. Why? Because he's always sniffling. All right. No, we don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. He's like sounding he like He comes you. in here, he's like <laughs> sniffling like crazy. He's sniffling like you did last weekend. Well, when I had the panic attacks? No, it seemed like you were doing blow all weekend. Oh, that was two weeks ago. Was that two weeks ago? <laughs> yeah. I had a rough last go, and I, um, I, I just remember I was in a weird mood last podcast, mm-hmm. And I think I was pissed at you off the back. Oh, you, you were me. such a dick I know, last week. I know, and I called and you. you know, I okay, know. can I just set the table, yeah. let the people know, because, yeah. listen, I got a lot of shit kickers out there that are ready to, like, they're like, do you need me? <laughs> yeah, do you sure. need me to call Cam <laughs> and, like, deal with Cam? That's got to make you a little bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. it does, because yeah. they don't like, the big boys like you. <laughs> You're right. Um, mm-hmm. So we're doing the podcast, you know, and like my mind is like uh, on a million different things. You got the trade deadline yeah, and whatever. Such a busy guy. So I'm just kind of yeah. like, you know, I'm ready to like, you know, rock and roll. Let's get through it and mm-hmm. and, and do our thing for all the people, and uh, and then we're gonna leave. But I'm like, Cam is just like, he's very irritable, and yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking it's because I told him I want to buy a farm. He's pissed because like. Because no. I'm getting a farm, and I he know. probably wants a farm. About and that, he got very upset. The entire See, mood like in the room changed. I, I know. And he became such a dick. I did. And, of course, I, I, I don't take it personal. Yeah. It's for entertainment purposes only. But, but Cam goes back and listens, and he oh. called me. He was oh. very distraught. Oh, I fucking rattled. You ever so seen bad. a grown man cry before? Yeah, or well, a tough guy cry? I well, you, you were about to. I was. You're on the verge. I, 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 I Look, I chirp myself a lot, but I know where I'm at. When it comes to different things, you know, like I, I can evaluate myself and I was just sounded so dickish and I was irritable and I didn't eat anything after my show. I'm up early. Okay. I've heard other people make those excuses no, too. I when know. they don't eat. Yeah, no doubt. I was just pissy. Andy was texting me during my radio show, just rattles the hell out of me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it's not his fault. It's my fault. And I listened to it. And I'm like, fuck, I was just such a dick. And you were bringing up this like farm. Which is, like, exciting. Like, I should be like, hell yeah, let's go down there and shoot guns and do stuff. And, yeah, you have your family there. And I still kind of ride on, like, you're probably going to have some infighting and stuff like that. And I'm just warning you about it. But I was being such a dick. And I called you. Rattled as all hell. I'm listening to it. I'm calling Brody to delete things. It just sounded like How an much ass. was taken out? Oh, my God, a ton. A lot? But we, oh, my God. Brody, yeah. you put him to work last I week. I did. I'm going to pay him 100 bucks. Pay, give him $100 next check. His fingers are bleeding. I know. And that's his job. Don't get me wrong. And I don't do that much. But that time, I well, we kept going and going and going about stuff. And I was just being such a dick back to you because we weren't really going anywhere with it. So that's my fault. And I did get some texts from fans 
about finding Jesus. Well, and they weren't joking about this it. This has happened on more than one I occasion know. now. What do you think? And they're from different people. They know I have demons or something. Dude. So, and yeah. they're starting to reach out. Let me you. read a couple. Well, I, 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 I would actually appreciate I, I it if you would. I will. I just gotta, yeah, if I you gotta, don't mind, hey, do you, I, I'm you not going to say his name. Hey, though. if you don't mind, please do. No, I, I am. Yeah, okay, thank Andy, you. <laughs> but like, I'm not going to say their name. I'm not going to say their name. Let's see if I can find it. Well, real. don't say the name now. Um, I'm not going to say their name, but, it's but been, there's, there's a, a couple. couple. There's a couple now. <laughs> and just for the record, listen, anybody who's religious out there, man, I'm weird. We're not demeaning no. religion or when anybody. When did I do that? Well, I'm though. just That's, saying. No, I think it's more we're like, not making fun of the message. No, 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 no. I make fun of everything, okay? But I think this is more like, you need Jesus. Oh, here's one. Okay. Mm, yeah, okay. I skip into every... I skip the intro into every interview now. Ugh. Cam Jansen, stop all your cursing and using my Christian Savior, Jesus Christ, in all your shows. Oh, he's got a point. I love you, brother, but I've had enough. Jesus loves you and died for your sins if you believe. Stop. Yeah, well. I'm like, dang, D dog. Now, now listen. Now, when go, you when you read that, Cam, I know. Can you explain the dramatic impact it'll have on your life, like the rest of that day at the moment? Well, I thought I was gonna get struck down by lightning. It was a clear day. I was worried about going outside. Can you believe you're upsetting these people? Like yeah, that? I don't I, want you, to. You feel probably pretty I bad. Don't, I, I don't. I don't want to upset yeah. Jesus. You yeah. know, he's a he's a big guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's powerful. Well, that wasn't who texted you. Just no, so but you he's know. part of that group. Or you know, he talked. You. He said and he I messaged saw some of these messages too. I know, and he he, he chirped. Um, he chirped Elliot Friedman, too. Want me to read that? Oh, well, go ahead. I've listened to every episode many several several times. Like, over and over he'll listen to This it. is a worse interview. Elliot Friedman needs to apologize to us Christians for saying Jesus effing Christ. What, is that? I am, what, what, what does effing stand for, you think? I'm not saying it. Okay. <laughs> I'm tired of Christians like myself being disrespected, and that goes with Cam always slamming Jesus oh. Christ. Stop, capitalized. When do I oh. chirp Jesus, dude? Okay. You when have, did I do that? You have taken this way too far oh, in terms of how you're... another one? Oh, my God. There's another? Yeah, man. Yeah, I don't you know. don't mind like, reading I, it. I, 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 you Jesus let, ain't happy with me. Let my people know. Jesus ain't happy just with me. let my people know. Okay? Let me see if I can find this gosh dang thing. Let me see if I can find it, Dere. And uh, mm. this one's kind of hard. God dang it. Let me see where... I made coffee at home this morning, for the record. Yeah, I, I, it's the most amazing coffee that I've made in quite some time. Oh, I sent it to you guys, didn't I? Hold on. Oh, thanks, Andy. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Did I, were you talking? Oh, well, oh, see? I'm sorry about that. Can I hear a little nice, Cam? I, I'm being nice, dude. I didn't... Oh, oh here. Okay. Oh, Brody's oh, got it. Okay. Let's say everybody, everybody's got it. Hold on. I'll, I'll find the exchange I had with them, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's I, up? God has been telling me for a few weeks now that he needs to use you for something and has big plans for you. I'm not sure if God is having me say something to you as confirmation you're asking for, or if God is having me say something to you so you stop ignoring him. Also, he doesn't want to use his name in vain. It upsets him. God bless. I go, what? (laughs) Wait, are you using his name in vain? Yeah. Are you doing that? Well, you got to, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. Have I done it yet? I, it's been, not it's been be doing five, that. six minutes. I've I mean, all good. I'm trying to do is buy a farm, and this guy I is. Know, oh, is can, can somebody I, please give him I, some religion? I, I, no, I know that was. I know I called you right so, away. I was, Has anybody else done that when they were mean to you? Very hurtful. Is anybody? Well, else nobody done else that? is mean. Are you sure? I about don't that? think anybody else in my life. I'm trying to think of another person oh, besides yeah? Chaser. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait till we get back from Nashville. I'm gonna have to stick up for you left and right. Just remember that. I listen to the show some days. <laughs> God has been telling me that he has plans for you and gifts, talent for something. There's and, more here? And your gifts, talents for something. I don't know what that means. I only know God wanted me to pass this info along to you because you either need confirmation on something or you need to stop ignoring him. And when God tells me something, I listen and have to be obedient. I go, is he mad at me? And he got back and said, no, God's not mad at anybody. Oh, I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. And I'm like, so this is turning into a productive conversation. Yeah. And then I go, now. is he dis- disappointed in me? Mm-hmm. You know, because you, wow. you're not dis- And I think, I forgot what he said, but I think he's mm-hmm. disappointed in me. And, I'm sure and I'm God like, I need to do so. Gets mad at some people. I mean, well, if you kill a family right. of four. Well, did you, are you even following the Alex Murdoch? Yeah, the case? redheaded weirdo. Yeah. Well, did you hear the, uh, on the stand, uh, he was asked, and we should play the clip here. Uh, Go ahead and in, insert the clip here. Yeah. Okay. We should start doing that stuff. Oh, yeah. it's interesting. So, so listen to this clip right here from Alex Murdoch. 
<clears throat> Were you friends with Andy Strickland? Yeah, I was friends with Andy Strickland. So that was on the stand, asked by the uh, prosecutor if he's friends with Andy Strickland. And, and he says, yeah, I'm friends with Andy Strickland. So when he says that, now listen, Cam. Brody, what the hell is he talking about, homie? I'm, I'm not going to be mean. Story. I'm not going to be mean. Well, I'm not going to well, be mean. I put it on my Instagram story. Well, no one looks at it. Well, <laughs> oh, my God. I had well, thousands. Why don't you put the mic up to your mouth? Thousands and thousands of views. Uh, that. I, sh- I bet you I did. Mean it. I should have because this is such a big story. I didn't realize how big of a story. So he so, talked about an Andy Strickland. So, yeah, when he um, <laughs> said this, I had one person reach out with the clip and then another person. But I wasn't very familiar with the... Um, with the with the with the case, yeah. and then I started kind of doing my own research, and then Cam, one clip after another. I mean, I'm talking like about at, Andy Strickland. About two dozen people is he? sent clips, at least, of this particular exchange in the courtroom. Um, you know, between the prosecutor and uh, and of course uh, uh, Alex Murdoch, who was found guilty, by the way, yeah, yeah. two life sentences for the murder of Maggie. And uh, his uh, youngest, our yeah, youngest son Paul. Yeah, really weird, man. And and he was like a big time. I mean, his family actually. Yeah. Big time lawyers in the uh, South Carolina community, where they're from. In fact, the grandfather, his picture was in the courtroom. They had to take it down before the case. Oh my God. So who is Andy Strickland? Well, in the he's, case? A, he's the sheriff in the town. Oh yeah. So oh, he's so, so I want everyone to the know Sheriff Andy Strickland. Yeah, That's so, cute. Man. So I don't know uh, Alex Murdoch. We are not friends. I mean, no. he's telling everyone that we're friends, and people are reaching out to me, being like, "Dude, you're friends with this guy." No. Yeah. I'm not friends. So no. listen. You're so, just the, the sheriff. so the sheriff, dude, he gave this family like I mean they have. I mean, they have a farm, Cam, 17,000 yeah. acres or I something like that. I think it's like 17 hundo. 17 hundo. Yeah. 17,000 And, and they're, they're, they're hunting quail. They're hunting yeah. dove. Well, then what do you want to do? They're hunting uh, turkeys. Yeah. Uh, uh-oh, oh it's God. the Monday alarm. It's oh, the Monday listen, tornado hey, alarm. Listen, this is Midwest for you guys. Oh, God. This is what we have to deal it's with. It's coming in the, this spring. All y'all out there, it's coming. Tornado season's coming. Mm. This is a horrific, horrific sound. That means a monster's coming. <laughs> Not so, today. It's actually a beautiful day out today, but so so the guy um, who was the Keep best you. friend of uh, of Paul, who was like part of the the Murdoch family, like because yeah. at one point in time you wanted to be a part of this family. I mean, they had beach houses, they had river houses, they had yeah, farms. They're I mean, privileged, wealthy dude. People. They are. I mean, they had everything. And the, and the here's what pissed me off the most. Not pissed me off the most. I like murdered, murdered, but like mm-hmm. that dumb dummy kid they had. You know. Who, so wasted. Who Buster? So wasted. Oh, no. The, and Paul, he, and he, he died. Made, you shouldn't say that. He's the one that got murdered. Is it the one that killed... In the boat accident? In the boat accident? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I, okay, he died. And there were All charges right. that were pending. But I'm just saying, like, time you saw death. the video of him, like, so wasted. And he's like, everybody get on the boat. Like, I'm a boat owner, man. Wait a minute. There's video? There's video. And the, there's, like, and the, TV shows about yeah, this going Netflix, on right now. I know. Is it real footage or is it actors? Dude, it's Netflix, dude. They put... Tons of money and time into all that. So I footage, should watch it. 100%. Okay. And there's another... So anyway, like, like you know, you're so wasted and you're forcing guys on your boat. Like, get on! And then he just runs into something and kills a little girl. It's just a horrible thing, man. You're forcing guys when you're wasted. To 19 damn, years old. Oh, it's horrible, man. I remember being down... He hit Lake, a bridge, dude. I remember being down to Lake Ozarks when I was younger, partying beyond belief with my buddies that had monster boats down there. And I remember having 40 people on a boat one time. What's the max night. you oh, should have? 10. That's, 10. That's stupid. It's so dumb. And my that girlfriend at the time, Kate, and Derek, who was my cousin, my blood. You had a blood. different girlfriend named Kate? No, no, no. It was Kate at the time. And I remember being on this huge 43-foot mm-hmm. badass black thunder with trip 750s on the back of it. And we're right, driving at night. And my buddy's wild. And he's driving, and he were all fucked up on all kinds of things. And that was so pat. We had forty people on that thing. Is it at and nighttime? It's at nighttime. Do you have the lights most- on the boat. Yeah, but you can't see anything. And he's flying. And one of his dumb ass juiced out buddies, who I didn't like, was like messing with him when he's driving. And I move everybody away. I go. I look at Sean. I go, settle down. Get out of here. And I threw this kid over there. I took Sean. I go, pay attention. I got my 
wife, my girlfriend and my cousin Derek in a bo- bottom barrel of this damn thing. You run into some, they're dead. Settle the fuck down. Oh, because you will panic. Because <gasps> you did this oh, God. also when somebody <sighs> was driving a car very <sighs> fast with the lights Don't off, remember? play with me did with you, that Did shit. you knock somebody out in the grass when you got out of yes, the car? Yes, I did. We had girls in the back of the car driving back to Eureka mm-hmm. at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And dipshit boy was going 115 miles an hour. And I couldn't control him. Girls in the back were freaking, freaking out. Mm. And I got to my house, and I knocked his ass out, and I dragged him, and I laid him on a tree in the middle of my front yard. And my dad had to carry him over to his house. I didn't see that on Fight Haven. Man, don't play with me when it comes to that stuff. Don't play with me. Mm. If there's anybody getting wild, like, you get the hell out of there, man. Don't ever drive with somebody with a fast car they're going to show off. Don't do it, man. Okay, so don't do it. are you supposed to be taking the boats out at nighttime? Is it allowed? You can, but you have to go a certain amount, mile an hour. It's very scary. Um... Man, what else are you watching nowadays? Uh, I watched, I watched, I watched a little bit of soccer. Oh, you did. I watched. You, uh, have, a, you have Apple TV. Yeah, but uh, how do you know if you have it? Um, you just, I don't know. You just have it. You switch over, and there's Apple TV. I don't oh, know. you just switch over. Yeah, it costs money. It's like a box you have. Um, but yeah, like that. I barbecued, man, um, all weekend. Uh, oh, I've got a guy coming out to clean my grill I tomorrow. Did, uh, He's going to clean it since you won't I mean, come didn't over you ask and me do a question? it. <laughs> I mean, didn't you ask me what I did? You well, came and I let mean, me get it out. No wonder I get mad at you. and barbecue. No. I mean, I'm waiting for you to really well, get you to do? the meat of the what'd story. What'd you do? Let me tell. Let me guess. You you went to so- practice. Then you're going to tell me about practice and stuff. So you asked me what I did. I had to work. I went to... Um, a tie was in a tournament. Uh, my daughter had a game last night. I smoked a cigar on the porch yesterday because it was very nice out. I could keep getting asked to go up to the clubhouse to smoke cigars with my neighbors. And oh, I'll go if you can. I'm like, I'm not into cigars. Can you man. grab some cigars for the trip, please, to Nashville for Why? me? Why? Because I don't smoke them. Well, I gotta, just, just bring a I'm, couple. You, okay? need about, you need to worry about... Oh, you need to worry about... Oh, I forgot a, to tell you hey, that I'm dealing cash. with an injury. You need to bring cash, too. Why? Because, man, just have cash. Around. I always have cash like, when right. I, for stuff like that. But I'm why are saying. you saying bring cash? Just always bring cash. Okay. Well, you, you think know? it's I've never been out of town before? Like, I don't know what to do? I don't know. Who are you going out of town we with? Have a med- we have a medical trainer. It's a big difference. We have yeah, a tra- they'll have big time. Okay, because I have an you injury. Heard our well, I have an injury. Hey, if you're hurt, you ain't going. So I'll get somebody else to go. I got 10 people waiting in line. I have to f- I mean, fight, fight my way yet. through it. He hasn't yelled at me yet. I have to fight my way, fight my way through it. You can do it, man. It's all good. It's not going to be as hard as you think, dude. We're going to have a good time. Oh, everyone keeps telling me that. It's like, like, dude, you never know, though. Well, there's, a, there's a ton of players. Because I keep saying I'm going to go skate tomorrow morning. We'll skate Wednesday afternoon. So... We have a good time, man. We're gonna we're gonna go down to Nashville. We talked about that last uh, last podcast, and uh, just will be a ton of NHL guys retired. You know, just we'll all just kind of take the go around town, do our thing, go to different events, mm-hmm. go to Kid Rock's place, just hang out and shoot the shit with all these guys, man. It's so fun to have all these alumni around, not just from the Blues, not just from Nashville. Like Chaser will have everybody come in, man, from all from McGratton to like Mikey Keene to Stu Grimson to Man, I mean, just to be new guys, probably Gretter's going to be down there. And, you know, like, he just knows everybody. Mm-hmm. And they're all going to come down. We're going to play a big tournament. People pay good money to be on, our, on those different teams. And uh, we're going to have a good good time. Then I got to go to Florida. Ugh. Kate's coming down to pick I'm me up. I'm worried about your Florida oh, trip. Andy. I'm worried about I, I'm oh, not going to lie like about listen, that. Listen, I'm kind of worried, too. And Kate doesn't listen to this. And thank God her parents don't either. But I'm, I'm go- for, you know how I am. I'm like. Uh, Can I just tell you, you're about to have a very long road trip, and this will be the time when your in laws are like, oh, let's put on Cam's podcast. You <laughs> might be right, Andy. <laughs> let's just put it on. Well, they need to know anyway. <laughs> so I'm just not, you know how I am. I'm a princess now. Like, I like to be, especially out of town, I don't like to be around anybody. I like to be, I'm very particular in who I'm with, like I, sharing stuff with people, whatever. Kate and I just, we do our own thing. If we're somewhere, and be like, come stay with us. We'll never do that. We'll buy a hotel right next door or we'll spend the money just to get away from people. I like to be a- away from everybody. I have my own routine. I smoke. I drink. I do shit. I don't want people this in my grill all the time. Mm-hmm. So I am. we did run a big house down in Rosemary Beach. And it's going to be me and Kate, her mom and dad, her brother, his wife, the two daughters. Or two ne- I know. And then her cousin and her cousin's mom. Ugh. All in one house. You're going to need to get away, dude. I'm just Andy, telling you. I'm I've, not, I've been Andy, in these situations before. I am not used to that. I'm not, I, I get up early. I go have my coffee. I like to just go do my own thing. Well, 
get, get my mind right. Do a little You're going to be walking into the kitchen and be like, ah, excuse me. Like, can, can everybody, I, down here now. <laughs> hey, can you hand me that uh, Family sugar, meeting. Fa- no, ca- Cam, where's Cam? Cam, oh, yeah. where's Cam? Cam? Cam, get down here. Cam, get down here. We have a, um, Cam, are you ready to go? Cam, you ready to go? Okay, let's go. Where are we at? Okay. Whoa, Andy. Dude. What am I going to do? It's one of those things where like everyone, oh, especially like going to dinner, uh, they're God. all going to want to like go together. You're going to have to oh, break away. And going dude. to, hey, by the way, and going to dinner with them. Oh, God. They're like, what? Uh, like, I don't know when I'm going. What do I? What do I get? Is the is the broccoli good? Is it? And I'm like, oh god. I'm like, just order, just order. And they're like, we we need to. Oh god. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. I got a golf cart. I'm gonna get in that son bitch. And I'm gonna let's jam out in the morning. I'm gonna get my goddamn mind right. I'm gonna make a bloody mary before I leave. Before everybody gets up, I'm gonna get. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to go cruise around that goddamn golf cart. I'm going to go mingle around. I'm going to walk on the beach. And then I'm going to take the, the, the niece, my nieces out and stuff like that. I'm going to show them a good time. I'm actually excited. This sounds might be sounding weird, but there are 10 and 11. They're cute as hell. And I'm going to I'm gonna be like Uncle Cam. You got to suck it up. I, I am. going to. Can't I complain a little bit? This week, can't I complain? You're going to have to suck it up. Yeah, but can't up. I complain a little yeah, bit? Yeah, for a little I'm bit. I'm just complaining a little that's bit. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be like a transition to go from Nashville to that. <sighs> Because you're going to need a nap, dude, after Nashville. You think, Andy? You think? Kate's, <laughs> Kate's going to so, be like, okay, like, uh, your turn to drive. No, no, no. She knows I'm not driving. I'm not going to drive that way. Are you one of those? Well, now I am. Your wife drives you around everywhere? Yeah, because I have vertigo, yeah. Oh, that's why? Yeah. Yep. Oh, so I should assume everybody just has vertigo when their wife drives them everywhere. No, and another reason I drink a lot, so she drives me home. Oh, you know. So, so that could safe, be why, yeah. too. And we live far away, Andy, so like she knows the game. Like If I have to go do an event, she's going to take me, and mm-hmm. she'll be with me. Yeah. She doesn't care what I do. Like but I, I do. see some couples where the husband is driving none, or the, the well, wife is driving at all times. I would drive. If I wasn't drinking, and I didn't have, mm-hmm. I'd drive all, all the time, but I just get weirded out, man. It comes and it goes. I've talked about this on the podcast before. But, yeah, when, when she picks me up, mm-hmm. oh, God. Dude, I know, a, I know a couple, and... Um, like you just never know what's going on. They seem so perfect, yeah. And then you hear they're they're getting divorced, dude. Oh, funny how that works. I know, man. Because because Andy, you can't just look at people's social media and be like, "Wow, they're happy." Wow, look at them. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, that but even way. hanging out and stuff like that, they yeah. always seem happy. Yeah, and you know you could put a front on, dude. You could put a front on. There's sometimes Kate was so mad at me, and we had to go somewhere, and we just we just figure it out, mm-hmm. and then. She forgets about it, and we're okay. Usually she doesn't, but, you know. But sometimes you got to just, you got to put a front on, dude. The husband's but, very distraught. That sucks. That would suck. Like the know? wife just blindsides you? Yeah, well, there's always something to it. What do you think there is? Well, there's always something, Andy. Like, they don't, you don't get divorced for nothing. You know what I mean? Sometimes husbands get content, and they lose their focus on, because you're like, my wife loves me. I don't care. I'm going to eat like crap. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you get overweight and she looks great. Or, you know, like you got married too young. She wants to go out. I don't know. There's a million different things, dude. There's a million different things. You know, Kate and I aren't perfect. We have a, I wouldn't change it for anything, but like we fight. Sometimes it gets a little crazy, man. Sometimes she won't let something go. You know, she's a little nervous about Nashville, of course. Always nervous. And, then, and we're, we're, we get 20 swinging dicks going down there. Private jet. Everything's paid well, for. She's very nervous about it. There's girls everywhere down yeah, there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, look, anytime you look at somebody on social media and they're down, like, they're ha- everybody, we're, we're good, we're good. And you're like, you just, it's all fake. And that's why these kids, it's man, not all fake. A lot of times it is. And uh, a lot of times these kids see happy lives. Everybody's perfect on social media. You think somebody should create, like, an account where they're, like, it's all crappy. When they're fighting. Yeah. Yes, and I'd watch that. I'm like, you're real. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Fuck you. You know, like, <laughs> I. That's what I'd like to watch it because that's normal. That's reality. Clean up your shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't love me. Do the damn dishes. Didn't make love to me. Do you know what I do around here? Yeah. I bring home the bait. They'd get millions of followers. Yeah. Well, that's just a reality show. That's just a reality show. Instead, we just get like happy, happy times. All yeah, time. happy, happy, happy. You know, Kate did a little happiness. Although, like, Sundays, man, like, at our house, it's happy. I always tell you, like, I'm Love drinking Sundays. Bloody Marys. I'm watching Battlehawks football, which is goofy. Why do you watch that? Because it's on on a Sunday at 12 o'clock. And I'm like, okay, 
And then there was yeah, a hockey it's like game 70 on. 70 degrees and, and sunny outside. It's just kind of cool to watch. Is it cool to watch? It was okay. You're like, I mean, would you watch like a minor league baseball game? No. Andy, no. Would I you wouldn't. watch like American League hockey if it was up? Yeah, no. You might. No, I wouldn't. Okay. Would you I watch, watch Triple A baseball game that was I wouldn't watch game? anything. But you'll watch the minor league football. On a Sunday. And we celebrated here in like St. Louis, like, like, it's, like, like it's, it's the Buffalo Bills playing the Kansas City yeah. Chiefs in Wild Card Weekend. It's just like you're not watching Patrick Mahomes or you're watching A.J. McCarron. He's cool, though. His wife was, His wife was damn good looking. She's still there? I think so, yeah. Are they still together? Yeah, they are. I, haven't, I haven't checked their Instagram. He made a lot of money. I haven't checked their he Instagram. He made a lot of money. Did he? Backup oh, at, Al- at Alabama, he probably made more. No, he didn't. Not at the time. He didn't have an NIL then. Doesn't ma- oh, uh, you're that naive, aren't you? No, I know they get no. paid, but not like they're getting paid now. It wasn't that much. Not all, of them, get are, not all of them were getting paid. Yeah, but it wasn't that. Like, he still had to Dude, be so shady. these guys, Reggie Bush, was get, these guys were getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. But now you're really getting paid. Dude. Even back in the day. Like, I remember uh, going to visit my sister at college one time like in, like, the late 80s. Like, very early 90s. I was super young, dude. And I saw these basketball players. Yeah, the cru- well, they didn't have them back then, but they're cruising oh, yeah. around in, like, big old SUVs and yeah. shit. Like, where'd you get that... I know you came from the hood. Every player <laughs> is coming from Detroit, dude, mm-hmm. at one point. Like, the entire, like, program came yeah. from Detroit. Like, and then all of a sudden, like, the assistant coach got, got busted for, like, crooked recruiting out of, of Detroit. And everybody's like, whoa, we never saw this coming. Or it's like, uh, who's that dude, Hugh Freeze, who, like, preaches to you, you know, like, very religious, which I don't mind chirping. But then he goes up and, like, goes calling prostitutes from the phone on his private jet or something, Jay's. Jeez really? Louise. I shouldn't say Jesus. I said Jeez Louise that time. Well, you've been much better here. I've been pretty good, having not I? In this episode. Yeah, I'm not bad. What's going on? Is it on? better when I'm mad? Is it better kind when I'm cranky? Of, kind of. I like a little hybrid. Well, you'll make me mad by the end of this. <laughs> I like a little mix. I, I got to be honest, I don't take it as personal as you do when, I did. when you're a jerk. I know. I, I, I pissed at myself. I didn't like it. Man. How was trade deadline day for you? Did you enjoy it? Did yeah, you? I thought Biz and those guys did a good job, man. They're just entertaining. Like, who else was um, entertaining besides Biz? That's about it. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious. No, that's about it. I didn't, I was down a hunker down oh, at Blue's he, headquarters, so I, did, boy I, I, we, I didn't have the sports net. Our boy Elliot, of course. I yeah, he's good. Shout out. Oh, yeah. He was good, man. Yeah, like, uh, who's like, who, uh, Kevin Bieksa, too. Yeah. Oh, he's cool, too. <laughs> he's cool. Yeah. Thank God he's cool, because you know what? The cool factor on that show is at a minimum. Really? No offense. And he spices it up a little bit. But you're, it's not, they're not saying, making me laugh. They're not, okay. they're not entertaining. And, you know, Biz is never on Mm-mm. on there. Mm-mm. That was like a one-off. They're not going to have Biz on there. So, oh, shit. You kidding? <laughs> Biz is too much for that He's show. He's the best, man. He is, dude. He's really good. He really is. I just don't like him when he's serious. <laughs> like when he's like breaking when it down. When he's breaking it down, that's how when I he's feel. Like, no, he looks so goofy. No, the Jets need a right shot defenseman. I I'm like, this be funny. To be able to match up <laughs> against. And he might be right yeah. on that. It's just, I can't take him seriously. I, no, I hear you. That's why I love him. Nobody wants to. Because that's how I am. Like, I know. If I, I was know. like, hey, the Jets, you'd be like, shut up, Camby. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. Something. I would never want that. Unless I'm talking to him, like, pissed off mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. But, like, if I'm like, the Blues yeah. need to, we need to do more. I'm like, I, I don't know. I like when he's just goofy. Mm-hmm. Like, his, he's talking to these cats, and one guy had, like, his button down. He goes, you want to unbutton me? You want to have a button cut? And he's just yelling at this. It's funny. And he's taking his shirt off. Like, I don't know. I love him, dude. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah, no, he's great, man. He's so entertaining, man. And he might be uncancelable. Really? He might be getting there. Uncancelable. Is that the right word? Uncancelable, yeah. Like, mean, like, it's impossible to cancel Like, he's Charles him? Barkley, in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, and Shaq. Oh, well, I got be you. Like them fucking bloomers down in San Antonio, right? Big old women down yonder, which is probably true. Well, they eat a lot of cheese in uh, Wisconsin. Cheros, in dinner, them dinner. cheros. But you know, I think he took a lot of heat, a lot of backlash. He did, for but that he doesn't comment. give a damn. Talking about Charles Barkley, and then he goes on. He's like, "I gotta apologize, right, to the women, right, of San Antonio." I know, I know, because I had some cheros. So what you're saying, and they were is, so dang good. You're saying biz, um. He's at that level, but Cam, there are certain comments you can make that that you cannot, you 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 can't overcome. <laughs> you think Dave that. Portnoy is uncancelable? No, really, nobody really really is. Now Charles Barkley's at the upper echelon of that because he's got every, he doesn't give a damn. He's getting old. He's already paid out. Like Portnoy could get rocked if he wanted to. Now it's tough to get him. He is who he is. He stands by it. He doesn't apologize for anything, and I like that. Mm-hmm. I truly do. But if he 
he's smart, dude. He's a smart guy. Can he be a dick? Probably. Is he hard to work for? Probably. But he is so smart. He knows exactly how to get. He could still be himself. He's created this wall around him full of stoolies, man. Like, you try to get him, they'll get you back. Mm -hmm. He's got an army. And, uh, but if you really mess up, like, he's just smart enough not to. He'll toe that line. He'll do this. Now, he, they almost try to get him with these girls stuff where he's. Yeah, but drink, then he like. But he's like, I'm suing you. And he, and he, and he posts, like, all these articles about him. Like, da, da, da. And but, he's like, what do you. But why lying? don't most people react like that when they're innocent? That's the way you're, you should react if they you're do, innocent. You, but you can. But he has an army. He does, yeah. So when he does it, people can see it, actually. In a platform. If, if we did it, man, we're way down, dude. Like, I'd have to real. And we'd be okay. But mm -hmm. imagine if Brody got into a jam. Who's he going to text? Who's he going to tweet at? Am I going to listen to him? Think about it. That's tough, man. Like, you can get rocked. But so. you know what? Sometimes if you're just, uh, like, I don't stress out about it because I would. Well, you're pretty straight down the yeah, middle. Yeah, nothing's ever everything. come into my mind that I You I'm don't say anything it. controversial unless it's a trade thing. And you get rocked for that, but that's petty. Like if I say Thatcher Demko. Thatcher Demko. You get to, I'm like reading. Can I get canceled for getting, that? No. You're getting bashed. And I'm like, should I chime in on this? No. I'm like, I don't. Oh, that's. Uh, listen, the Vancouver. I was trying to stick up, up, uh, stick listen, up for you a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if I was talking to you about this or not, but I think Vancouver is a uh, tougher market than Toronto. <sighs> it's hardcore, man. People say Toronto is the most difficult market. No, I think Vancouver. Toronto's well, up there, bro. It is. Hey, New, York, New York's up there. How about Stephen A. Smith the other day? I saw a clip of him. Okay, well, we got to talk about you that. You see that donkey? God, I look Gary Bettman. How about the, so the one dude, so they go, who's the girl, by the way, beautiful girl, what's her name? Molly Kiram. Molly Kiram. And I love her. She's a beauty, like yeah. she's a beautiful woman. I don't know if she's cool or not, but she's beautiful. She used to be married to Jalen Rose. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, she brings up who's going to be the next New York team to win a championship. And right. the one guy. Who's the white, like the, white the radio broadcaster. And this uh, is so like. Why do you have to call him the white guy? Because he's white. So? Well, you have Stephen A. Smith, and then you got the guy. I, I don't know his name. You, he's a big white guy. You're going to get canceled for that. I mean, uh, you, listen, I'm yeah, about as white as you can. Well, well, if I call for I my hillbilly. I don't know why you have to refer my, to him No, no, that's, that. that's in my territory, brother. Okay, so listen, uh -huh. he's the play-by-play -play announcer, I for, think, for like the Yankees or something. Oh, is that what it is? And okay. like somebody else. He goes, know. the Rangers. And they start laughing at each other. The, and and, and they're, <laughs> we don't count them. No, they were like, they don't count. They, <laughs> they don't, don't count. count. And Stephen A. Smith, well, let's stick to football, basketball, let's baseball. Football, baseball, baseball, baseball. We're, we're like Gary Bittman, though. Gary Bittman's my Gary guy. Gary Bittman's my guy. He's my good. I go sit next to him at games. Jesus. So, I mean, hey, Jesus. <laughs> hey, I was, I texted with a high-ranking league official. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, I did. Did you? Yeah. About that? Why are you being, I just said, hey, it's been a tough week for ESPN. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Like they know. I thought you were joking. No, okay. no I'm serious. Like you're acting like, like I wouldn't do that. Like I wouldn't. No, no, no. I just thought you're playing one of your games. But no. so, but that's ESPN. Like they just bought a contract with that. You're not going to talk about the NHL. So you're not even going to mention the Rangers after what they. The Rangers are gigantic in New York. They're gigantic. So let me just say this. It's so weird. And this whole thing was talked about because they just traded for Patrick Kane. Yeah, the biggest name going. If you're Gary Bettman. Even though you got Stephen A. Smith, and let me just say that show that he's on first take is like the most popular show that they have on ESPN. Yeah, I think it led the entire network in television ratings for the month of February. I think the ratings are even higher. I'll watch it all the time. I like to hear what they have to say when they're kicking around NFL and NBA talk and whatever else. Man, it's like the who's better, LeBron or Jordan? Well, I who's don't better, mind. LeBron I don't or mind. Listen, I can only take so much Where, sometimes. Where's Aaron Rodgers but, going? I mean, the reality of it. I mean, hockey is not on the radar of that show. It doesn't make the rundown. I would never tune in to hear anything about the National Hockey League. I don't go there to listen yeah. to anything about the NHL. I don't want to hear them talk about the NHL. Some people are like, ah, oh, they don't ever talk about hockey. Hook them high. Well, what do you want to hear them? You want to hear his opinion? No, but what's don't gonna... denounce it. But not that I care that much. When but... they are a partner of the National Hockey yeah. League. I mean, we're talking about... This was major news. I remember for years, Cam, I was always writing that uh, the NHL, in order to be successful, had to get back on ESPN. And I was, I was, I always had that mindset, yeah. you know, because no matter where you go around the country, every sports bar, every restaurant, every hotel room, everybody, and I mean, everybody has ESPN. At the time they were on like the Outdoor Life Network, it was on Versus, I was like, fuck, half the hotels in, in the country don't even have it. Some people even you're in your own market don't even have Versus. Some people do, they don't know where to go to it. I'm like, just get back on ESPN. Well, now they're back on ESPN. 
And, and I just would like to really know what the NHL truly feels about this relationship between the league and ESPN. I mean, this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, the, the NHL is so second fiddle. I mean, it shouldn't even be called second fiddle. It should be like sixth or seventh fiddle on the radar with ESPN. No one ever asked for it to be as big as the NFL. Nobody asked for it to be as big as baseball or the NBA. But to have it get disrespected like that on the biggest show that they have when they're your television partner and for the people who work yeah. there to not even protect a partner, they laughed at they're it. a rights holder, yeah. dude. Hey, it's Patrick Kane. Like, you don't need to know the sport to be like, this is a big-time deal. But like, I think this is not something that it should just be swept under the carpet. Yeah. Like, I want to hear the league's response to this. I like Gary Bettman, though. I'm sure Gary Bettman's happy that like, you're not going to bring up the What does the league truly think, Cam, in your opinion, to the most popular show on ESPN? Just denouncing. Just completely, like, kicking hey, your ass to the curb. You, dude. I watch, so I get into the radio show about an hour and 15 minutes beforehand, and I just put it on. I just put uh, it depends on what it is. We only have it. So I put on ESPN, right? And I, and I just see what they talk about. And they'll they'll play hockey clips. But they'll, it's it's after. Unlike sports. It's center after or WNBA. Yeah, they'll do It's that. after women's, like, college basketball. Which, mm-hmm. like, I mean, come on. And, like, then they'll, like, barely say anything. And they'll go back to something else. Something else they tried to cancel that one guy from ESPN because he said, now let's go back to real oh, basketball. And he dude, wasn't even, he like, wasn't talking. He wasn't trying to, Andy. You're right. He was, was just like, like let's get back to the real game that we've been watching. And people blew up on that. That's why I like what we do, man. I got pissed the other day because I was worried about you. Not worried about our sponsors. Not worried about any of that. Although we do, because we always have to worry about them. But I was worried about you getting mad at me. Mm-hmm. And it sounded like a dick to you. And I didn't want to. So I hope you appreciate that in a way. But, like, imagine, like, working for a company, like, even, like, the radio show we work at. Like, we could say what we want, dude. And we do. I told the line every day, but that's what people like. You told mm-hmm. the damn line. But if I work for a company like that, it's like, man, you mess up. How about locally here? We had a guy that worked for TV news, and he's supposed to be, you know what I'm talking about, and he's, he's supposed to be the nicest human being mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. And Fox there's, affiliate, there's a couple more things about him mm-hmm. that if you knew that, I'm not even gonna say, but like the nicest guy ever, and he's do, been there forever, and he's doing this cast and he's talking about martin luther king mm-hmm. and he said he he was reading a teleprompter and he kind of mixed a word together he said like a kind of a racial slur after a word that he, it just didn't go together but it didn't dude he's the nicest guy in the world they would never do that and they got him so fast oh, he, he was, was done he done and nobody stuck up for him there either nobody. you pussies no one stuck up for him. He's been there forever. You mean like he had so much to, to like come to his defense and be no, like, "This like, is the this person is that we un- know." Yes, this, this is, is unacceptable. Character. You're gonna fire him after all these years because of one fumble on the teleprompter that made no sense of anything, and you thought that he said something, and you're gonna fire him. Mm-hmm. That drove me. It's scary, dude. Mm-hmm. But I think he got the last laugh. I think he oh, sued. He? And oh, he sued. Imagine you get. Imagine that happened to you. You just said one little thing on 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 Bally's. What was the, and they all come the, after uh, you. I what, would lose my mind. What was the um? What's what? the word I'm looking for? Uh, the settlement. I. It's under. No one talked about it. That's when you know that you haven't heard from them in a while. That's when you know you're. What's okay. your guess? Couple, or, millions, north of ten millions. I would have sued so bad. You guys mm-hmm. buried me all that time. I worked for you. Never a complaint with anything. I'm the nicest guy ever. This is different than like another television yes. guy who was on a radio show just denouncing that female and being an asshole. Oh, yeah. who? That one dude who was being a dick to that female co-host on radio, remember? And he and his kids were like high school football players here in town, and he was like being a dick who to was the that? girl. Oh, really? She worked at the Fo- he worked at You're the Fox girl. affiliate. He worked at the Fox affiliate, yeah. too. No, it's different. But this, it's just, it's scary. You know what I'm talking about, dude. I talked to you about this over and over again. You told me you partied with the guy back in the day. Oh, Oh, my God, yes. God. Vicky Faust. Yes. His name's Vicky? Vic Faust. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him at a party at like 4 o'clock in the morning. Years ago. Years ago. But yeah, he screwed up on that. And I think he's got another podcast out. But he did screw that up, man. He's Mm -hmm. yelling at this girl. Just, and it was, and his teammates. But he was Dunzo, too. His teammates. Ratted them out. So they. Oh, was, yeah. No, yeah. they were hardcore on exactly. Twitter, too. But this other one is completely different, Andy. Okay. And they, the mob got them. They got this poor guy all those years. It just pisses me off so much. 
And no one even stuck up for him at the station. It's like, okay. I know. <laughs> work for TV. I've seen this happen like in hockey too. Sometimes you accidentally say something and whatever. A lot of times if it happened before the cancel age, you just wonder how many of these legendary broadcasters would have been canceled. Oh God, Bobby to anybody, dude. Okay, so answer the question. Should the league be upset with this? I mean... Because, you know, know. hey, Stephen A. Smith got bashed. That's one thing about the hockey media. It may not be the, uh, the hockey mafia, it may, it may not be, the Army may not be as big in terms of the fan base as, as some of the other sports, but they're very, very loud. Yeah, he doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. But, like, do you think the bosses at ESPN said, hey, guys, we just can't bash I the, mean, the, we can't bash he, hockey. He, like, belittle him, like, what? Huh? No. He's, no. like, the only Never thing, mind the Rangers. Like, the oldest, isn't it the Stanley Cup, the he oldest? He says the like, only thing that he though? knows about hockey is that the puck is black or something Yeah, like that's that. so cool. Good for you. Well, I like Gary Bettman. But oh, yeah, Gary Bettman's happy with yeah, you. Yeah, but right like now. here's the thing. You try to act like you're like an MMA expert. Yeah, and you got bashed by Rogan and those guys. Like, you don't know anything about MMA. No, I know. You try to you try to be an expert on everything, but then it's like cool to not know anything about hockey. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, I know. You know what I'm saying? So I but don't then th- the, but then the hockey you know, the NHL like complains about it, then they look like babies. Right. But like, you look, want we need attention for our sport. Hey, you, know? you want to go to ESPN? The only thing hockey gets for being on ESPN is that highlights. the games are on ESPN. And yeah, maybe some highlights. No, no, no. Just the games are on ESPN. There's highlights now. They still showed some highlights No, before. they did not. Oh, they would. The big games. Okay, but they show the games now. I got you. I don't watch I watch it every morning, ever. unfortunately. Okay, okay. well, you, you, you would know more than, more than I would Tony, on that. I'm Tony, I do. Okay, so they show some highlights. They show some after the WNBA and, and the, the women's couch. And the games are on ESPN. But you're yeah. not like, if you think like those shows that are very popular... Around the Horn, if that is even still on. Yeah. PTI, if that's still on. First Take, they're not talking about hockey on any of those shows. Yeah. So, you know, I know they have some individual hockey programming where the hockey fan, if you really go and want to, you know, if you need your hockey fix, you may turn to those shows. I think they call it the point or whatever. So, you know, it's uh, so th- those guys who never seen that. Well, they do it. The point on ESPN. Well, no, you got about people hockey? like Butch Gross and Kevin Weeks, and they, oh, okay. they, they love yeah, yeah, hockey, yeah. right? Remember and Barry they love Melrose the NHL. Used to do it back in the day? Oh, that was NHL Tonight. That was awesome, and that was a great show. Yeah, and I feel like back then everybody watched it. I know that's when they like, like they I had the I had friends like back Yoink. then, like in junior high and stuff like that, who they weren't even hockey fans, but they became hockey fans because of hockey being on ESPN. Dude, I remember when I first played for the Devils when I was like young. I knew all my. My old teachers, my old football coaches, all watch Sports Center, and if I got to a, a good fight or a big hit, they would play that over during during two thousand five, six, seven, when ESPN. I remember getting in the locker room and like waiting, and all the guys would chirp me because I just knew they would show my hits and fights. Mm-hmm. And the guys were like, "Were you watching yourself?" I'm like, "Well, kinda." I just want to see what everybody back home gets to see. Oh. And so they would show all kinds of fights and stuff. And then Barry Mellows would come on back, check this fight out by Cam Day. Blah, 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 blah. He hits everybody. Look. And they showed all the violence. It was mm-hmm. cool. It was really cool. But mm-hmm. then it kind of, then they went, we went to Versus right after uh, duck hunting. You know what I'm saying, dude? Remember that? Nobody knew what Versus are out. You know, unless. Remember you, Versus? Oh, yeah. Dude, it was like, they would. Literally play duck. Like the guys out- were hunting duck, it was the, and all of a sudden it goes boom right to face off. They had like the outdoor network. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what hockey was on. The so outdoor network. Then it turned into ESP. Or NBC bought it, and yeah. it got. I think it got much better once it became. What year was that? An NBC programming, and the games were on national television on the weekends. Stanley Cup yeah. final games were on national right. TV on the I, network. I love that man. I'm telling you. Yeah. A, a week- and you had Doc Emmerich, and you know you had that's some right. of that. Yeah, I love I love like weekends, man. I turn the TV on at one o'clock in the afternoon. You think ESPN Saturday. has done a better job than NBC? No. At what? They're, pro- they're covering the league. I don't know, man. Some sometimes I I don't know. And, and NBC wasn't great. The, the the top guys were good, right. right? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. They got a couple. ESPN's got a couple goofy things they got going. I think TNT. TNT is great. Is. I like it. I like TNT. By far, I miss having the most though. success. I miss who uh, Talk? Yeah. I will say That's this, Biz though. Biz is like right-hand Well, man. I said, listen, because I feel like Talk and Biz had the they best had it, chemistry yeah. together. And I feel like by not having Talk, you know, you're trying to find someone who can establish the same type of chemistry to allow Biz to be Biz. Yeah. Where he doesn't have to break down, like, the PK. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. Now. Speaking of PK. I like Lundquist on there. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Not Mr. Energy, not Mr. But you know what? It's still Henrik Lundqvist. You see the players' reactions when he's doing the interviews and stuff like that, and they're talking to Hank. But I feel like he has the ability to kind of create a little bit of chemistry with with Biz. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, he can settle Biz down a little yeah, bit and put yeah. him in his place a little bit. You need that, though. Like, mm-hmm. you can't, like, Biz, calm down, here or whatever. Like, yeah, that's what you yeah, want. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Bottero ain't going to do that. You know, Ace ain't going to do that. He'll try to. Ace is not bad. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, that's Anson Carter, by the way, mm-hmm. just in case you didn't know. Oh, I, I hear him say it. But I do hey, miss Hey, Kaner, Kaner, it's Ace. Hey, what, who? <laughs> hey, did, uh, I didn't even look. People get pissed at me about the PK Subban Mark Messier thing last week. I don't think so, Any man. Any bad messages? Okay, good. No, I get worried about. I that. was saying the same thing, man. I was I just know. like, hey, you can't disrespect. Like, yeah, it's we want disagreements on the set. You want you don't want everyone to agree. It's terrible television. I it's terrible. Yeah, I agree with you at the end. I agree. Of that. It's funny. Hey, it's terrible television. It's terrible radio. All of that, but. Why just have the disagreement? Like you're not like sitting. You got you can't be like waving your arms and like rolling your eyes. I think we kind of made <laughs> that clear. Like, what here. do you know? What do you know, Mark? Mark. Well, I don't even know who you are, Mark. I know. Get out of here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get somebody else on here? Hey, are you talking about some expansion? Are they fucking expanding again? Pardon my language. Dude, are they expanding I, again? Oh, did you just do that yeah, again? I did. Well, you're gonna get another text, dude. Another email. I said a part of my language. Oh, you're not cursing on this episode, by the way. Not much. I've been pretty good, right, Brody? Pretty good. You got. I fi- was just crazy. You got to find a hybrid. I got no. I got to find a balance. Um, That's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, but the farm is looking I'm good, dynamic. by the way. The way I'm looking. At, the what? The farm that I'm looking to get. That's. No, I know. Yeah. You just got to get some oh, outdoors. You see stuff. my hat that I wore today? Yeah, Howie's hockey. Looks well, no, cool. but look at the. What color is it? Yeah, it's. Camouflage. Yeah, I so can't I'm, see I'm yeah. well. So I'm wearing that for my. Well, kind of. Well, I'm a farm boy now, dude. You haven't bought it yet, have you? Bought and it? And then watching them watch. It? It, well, I'm just in my mind. I'm I'm <laughs> closing in on it. Thirty family members. Behind. And then and then when I um you know watching the Murdoch trial and stuff like that yeah, and seeing all these like farm that. boys on there, you know, I just I know exactly what they're talking about. You are a Murdoch kind of farm boy. <laughs> well, once I saw this clip coming, I had to figure out exactly. Like, we got what Steve was going McIntyre on. coming on this. And, oh, yeah. and he's talking about Oh, he's a farmer, dude. Yes, he is. So he knows a lot he's about what... real farmer. Yeah, he and I have a lot in common from that standpoint. Yeah, you and all those guys. That's um, why they all love you, Andy. Oh, he knows. He knows. McIntyre was great on this episode. People are going to love it. But yeah, expansion. I don't know, dude. This completely threw me off guard. I'm at the rink the other day. In like Pacific, Missouri, dude. Like way out. Yeah, I know. That's is where that I grew by up. you? Yeah, that's where I grew up out there. Yeah, okay. Way out yonder, boy. That's where them shit kickers are, boy. I drive by. All the UFC I drive guys by like a there. sushi truck every if you day. Grow like, up, I don't if know you if I can have the sushi out here. No, they don't have sushi out there, homie. They do. It's a truck. It's yeah, parked in the middle of a parking could. lot. They, um, you grow up out there, man. You're automatically growing up tougher. You really, just are, dude. You're out in the woods. Everybody's just like tough, man. Everybody's like country strong, tough. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Every one of my neighbors growing up, fucking way out there, dude. They're all just like. Tough, like on they'll the fight Mur- you on the Murdoch farm. They uh, not those pretty boys. Those no, are pretty boys, dude. That's dude, a- they stock the the duck pond with ducks, and then they drain it in the in the when, it, when it's not duck season. Do you know when duck season is? By the way, no, I don't. I believe it's March. I don't know. Turkey I season starts around Thanksgiving, I think, and then I don't know. And then there's like two I'm turkey on seasons. I'm on a hunter. Never got into hunting. No, it's boring. I um, you know, all my buddies growing up out there, dude, they're all hunters and. You know, farm guys and like tough construction. They mm-hmm. just know. So to... you are tougher out there. Yeah, dude. Guys just fought, man. Like just a different mindset. A lot of military. You think it's still like that? Yeah, out there hasn't changed much. Out there, you go out to House Springs. You out Pacific hasn't changed. In I'm 30 out there years, all the time. Hasn't changed in thirty years. I'm out there all the time. <laughs> because it's a it's a it's a threshold of too being too far out from the city. Mm-hmm. So Eureka is a cutoff point where you can still get in and out and it's still in that loop. But you get out past Eureka and you get into Franklin County, you get into Jefferson County. Good old boys out there, man. A lot of crystal, make crystal meth and stuff. A lot like of that. meth. Oh hell yes, a lot of meth. People make money on that. Yeah, you can make money on meth. More painkiller sales, more than anything, you can make more money on because you can up the price. I saw these dudes get busted the other day, and they found like they seized like hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. Mm-hmm. What are they doing with all the cash? That's they probably got. They probably dropped everything off. They probably dropped off the kilos. Well, they probably dropped off whatever and picked up the cash, and they're going to drop the cash off to the kingpin 
and they disperse it the way they should. Oh. So if you have that much cash on you, you don't have to have any drugs. You're going to jail. Oh, really? Hell yeah. You're not allowed to have $300,000 in cash. Hell on no. In a Pontiac fucking, or a, 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 you know, a, a fucking Sunfire car. What if you live, what, what if you drive a nice car and you live in a nice no, area? You no, can't no, have $300,000. No. Hell no. At the, at the rink in Pacific, somebody like comes up to me and says, hey, what's the story about Atlanta getting a okay, NHL you're try team? that again. And I'm like, I kind of tried to act like I knew what he was talking about. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Last time I was in Atlanta for an NHL game, they were literally giving away free tickets to, on the sidewalk children. before the game. Like, and then he still please come in and watch. And they had great players back in the day. Dude. They had Hosa, Covey, Walt. All kinds of guys. They had tough guys. They had bolts. They had guys that rock. Who's a defenseman that killed guys all the time? They had a, they had an awesome team, but um, it just didn't work, man. It was a goofy setup there. You had it like underneath the train tracks or something. Like that. It was mm-hmm. really weird. Anyway, did you I, like? Pl- do you ever play there? Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And like nobody was there. Yeah, it was about twelve thousand. So here's the deal now. So I, I talked to somebody with the league last night and. Because Houston apparently is getting a team too. I've been hearing about Houston. How about you get rid of a couple teams? I'm like, first? are they expanding to 34 teams? Is that Already? We're at? Like, how about we chill we for a couple years? We just got Seattle. I know. Can we well, just working. like how slow about, it down? How about we change a couple other teams that aren't working? Like, uh, you know, Arizona. God, is that goofy? You know. So anyway, all I know is talking to. You know, a high-ranking official with the league, he says uh, we've received a number of expressions. It, he or she could have been either one. Or she, her. I just don't want to give it away, whatever. Could be well, I'm just know, non-binary, Andy. How well, dare you? I'm just saying. How dare you? I'm not trying. Uh, uh, here's I, I will report said. you. They've received a number of, of expressions of interest. There's a lot of people who have said, hey, I want to bring the NHL to my city. Like, I'm sure Quebec City. I'm sure Hamilton. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure, you know, Houston has been talked about for quite some time. Some people have even well, suggested, cool. you know, move the Arizona team from Arizona to Houston. But, you know, we'll have Bill Armstrong coming on well, with Houston us work, very soon. And we'll, we'll talk to him about some of that. Um, but uh, he said uh, a number of expressions of interest, including uh, from each of Atlanta and Houston, but nothing putting either of these two ahead of anyone else and nothing happening soon, if at all. I had a follow-up conf- uh, questions, and he said it's not even accurate, the stuff that's out there. He said some people like to put insider stuff out there, but not sure these two cities are even at the top of the list. No. Now, I do hear there's a guy. I, saw, I heard East St. Louis is going to get it done. I said, our, oh, our team, well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd compete with the Blues. Yeah. I don't think that would be good. <laughs> East St. Louis. East St. Louis is like number one crime riddle place. It was in, in the movie country. Vacation, remember? Yeah. When they Roll them like, up. <laughs> <laughs> they slashed the tires. <laughs> what do you say? What, what do I look like? Christopher Colombo? Hey. Although that's really his name is Christopher Colombo. Mm-hmm. Although they're chirping it. Oh, my God. Know it, but his real name is Christopher Colombo, I think. So... Uh, there's a guy apparently by the name of Vernon Kraus out of uh, Atlanta. And he owns like all these like high end car dealerships, like Lam- Lamborghini dealerships and all this type of stuff. And apparently he's invested a bunch in like restaurants and condos in an area of Atlanta called Forsyth. It's like a suburb of Atlanta. I, I don't like know Atlanta geographically. Yeah, so if, I, if it's not Atlanta. a suburb, whatever the hell it is, it's not in downtown Atlanta. He apparently, from what I understand, is a guy that's very interested and, you know, who's invested like well over 100 million bucks, apparently, like to this area of Atlanta called like Forsyth. And he apparently is the guy, the main money guy that is interested in bringing the NHL to Atlanta. But I, listen, I if you care. were to ask me, I think that's a terrible idea. I just don't even care. I, I, the yeah, NHL, enough teams, man. Well, the NHL in Atlanta, it was, it was awful. It's terrible. You finally got it out game. of there. Why would you go back there? Well, you did it twice. You tried it twice, didn't you? Yeah, because the flames were there back then. Yeah, the you tried and it didn't I know, work. I know. So what are we doing? Yeah, there you thought it's getting insanity? a little better. I think when you do the same the thing same over and over, over again, expect, expect different yeah, results. I mean, yeah. come on. Hey, what do you think of John Cooper benching his best player? There's a reason for it, man. I don't know. They I mean, both scored that game, didn't they? I don't think it was a smart move, dude. I think I want to take it back because originally, like when people were texting me this, I didn't really like really wrapped my head around it. I was just like, oh, well, you know, not many guys would have the balls to bench those guys, you know? 
I mean, you bench Braden Point. He had like seven shots on goal in the first period of that game. And he scored. Or he Kuchi did. scored. And you're benching Stamkos and Kucherov. Okay, now these are three of the most iconic players, and they'll go down as three of the most Kuchi's iconic like players high in, in the history points. of the Tampa Bay Lightning. You've been to three consecutive Stanley Cup finals. So I understand John Cooper's like, hey, listen, we're not playing as to the, up to the standard. i got to get yeah. these guys' attention so we can get our shit together and be ready to rock and roll when we face Toronto in the first round. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because right yeah. now, it's not happening. Because as it sits right now, they've lost five in a row. They've been outscored something like 11-3 to three in the last two games. Goal in a period. So then they bench those guys. Well, here's the only way you can sit there and say, well, did it work or not? Well, how do they respond the next game? <laughs> they didn't do well, Cam, the next game, they lose 6 nothing to Carolina. They had no shots on goal in the second period. They got killed. They got absolutely killed, and they lose Victor Hedman to a back injury. Yeah, I saw that. He got hit. It weird. That wasn't a bad hit. Well, so I don't know. People were complaining about that. Oh, hit. were they? He, he just finished them. Like when Tyler Myers rocked somebody the other day. Oh too. no, John Tavares, get your head out of your ass, I know. boy. I know. You want to play that game? Now, break now. Uh, Shin, Luke, Lukey starts hitting guys off the bat, and all of a sudden Toronto's like, "What? This is interesting. We have a hitter on the team." <laughs> well, well, well. So anyway, so Luke Shin. Hits a couple guys. Because he got traded to Toronto got traded, from And Vancouver. all of a sudden, now you got a hitter on a team. Mm-hmm. So, Luki Shin rocks a couple cats. And everybody on the Toronto bench is like, well, well, d- d- what's going on here? Yeah. We we have a hit. Uh, what, well, uh, now it's going to get feisty. Well, this is interesting. This is interesting. I, I thought we could fl- cruise through this game hey, without physicality. Cam, did you know this new guy, Luke, this, likes to lay the body? Oh, he hit a guy. He's well, what's hitting. going to happen now? Are they going to hit us now? And then, yeah, they are. <laughs> and they know they ain't ain't that tough. Mm. And so, Tyler Myers, I mean, rocked. Oh, my God. Tavares is like, I'm going to dangle everybody. Yeah, well, they're not. Sit down. Because Tyler Myers is like, this dude who just left our team is now rocking our players. So guess what? Sit down. We're going to start rocking you. And they did. And so now they're sitting around the room, and they're saying, "Uh, Uh, I don't like uh, this. The new guy, can you, like, not hit guys? Can we float through this, please? This is regular season, okay? (laughs) We need to float through this. We don't really like I don't like when our captain gets rocked like this, okay? No. No. Vancouver don't give a shit. They got Ricky Tockett. They're like, no, no, no. Lukey's going to hit some guys? No, you better get some cats. And they did. And now Toronto's like, well, what's going on here? Yeah. How dare you? Well, he was probably pissed because Vancouver, like, <laughs> basically had him, like, uh, isolated from the rest of the team for yeah. whatever. You know, it's one thing to do it with Jacob Chikrin, who's, like, Handsome. delivering, like, you know, yeah. high picks and whatever. Yeah. And, but, like, Luke Shen... He can't, like, you're going to bubble wrap him, too? Yeah, the whole bubble wrapping thing is so goofy. stupid. Some guys, I get it, but you better, like I said, you better have a deal in the works if you're going to do it. But, yeah, man, I mean, so those were some uh, yeah. some monster, I, monster I, hits. So getting back to Tampa Bay, though, Cam, so all I'm saying is we're going to judge whether or not it worked the next day. All I I'll, Listen, and you lose 6 nothing the next game, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, homie. It's all good. Don't and, turn it around. And, and I have heard. Like, and this is just human nature and the way it goes in professional sports. Don't always assume that the star players have just an incredible relationship with the head coach. Yeah, even if you won. Like, Doesn't matter, man. Each other, man. Doesn't no, matter. No. I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's all rosy. Never. So so John Never. Cooper's in he's he, listen, he obviously is solidified as any head coach in the league. He's on solid ground. He can lose. He's yeah. not gonna get fired. Yeah. I don't look, I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but, but when it doesn't res- work, it, it, you it opens yourself up for this type and of conversation. And, look, and we're bringing it up, but they probably had a meeting like, look, I was pissed piss at you guys. You weren't bringing it, although you did score off the bat, and he had seven shots on goal. Yeah, like, the rest of the team's probably guys. like, you're going to sit these guys? Well, sometimes you need to sit the big boys and not the fourth liners. You know? I get it. No, yeah. I'm with you once there, in, too. Hey, the coaches that only sit the fourth liners, Fuck you. you lose the That's room, easy. too. Exactly. And because... The big boys like the fourth liners. Oh. And the other big boys are looking at the other big boys and like, no, no, no. No. Sit his ass. When you only sit the fourth sit liners, the... the first liners are like, okay, you're a phony. I remember Walt doing you're that. a phony. I remember Walt being like, why are you sitting to him? Mm-hmm. Sit Paul, Korea. Why are you not sitting Paul? He didn't do a damn thing. Like, I, I just know that went down. Yeah. Like, you're sitting camp, not, right. or whatever. Like, right. I, I, I'm, like, staying out of it. Like, hey, when Mike Yo was the coach, I just remember, like, it was, always, it was always Tage Thompson's fault. So easy. It was always well, funny. T- well, Tage isn't doing this. Tage, Andy Murray, the same thing. Same it was thing. some of the young guys. And, and me. I get it, you know. So I'm not going to listen. I can't completely second guess a guy like John Cooper. You're right. You're he, right. He's, a, he's a future Hall of Fame coach. He's had a ton of success. But when you lose 6 nothing. 
the next day. This tells me, hey, this may be a deeper issue than we realize. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Can I like, give a shout out to somebody? Yeah. Tanner Chano. Oh. God dang, boy. Like, Tampa's tough, man. You got you solidified that bottom six. You got some big boys, Perry and and uh, Patty. They're going to play 10, 12 minutes. They're going to get in your face. They might not be doing anything right now, but come playoff time, <laughs> they're going to be all over you guys. Just so you know. Just so you know, they will. But that Tanner Janot fought that Stillman. Is it Stillman? What was he doing? Like, man, sometimes I look back at some of these yeah, but cats. He went right at him. I'm like, damn, dude, I'd love to fight a guy like Stone. It's a guaranteed knockout, man. Mm-hmm. You know he doesn't know what he's doing. Right. And I'm like, I just wait to get that uppercut. Tanner's like, wait, wait. He, and he, look, you know when you're going to catch somebody. Because mm-hmm. once he caught him with that uppercut, he backed away because he just knows he's going to hit him flush. Because Stillman's like, what do I do? I, I'm going to put my yeah. head down. Yeah, put your head down. Yeah. I'm going to throw this bomb I on just, you, boy. Yeah, listen, with the, st- the thing with Coop, I just, you just wonder – if he talked to his star players before benching them, it's just such a, uh, we don't see don't this know. happen too often. And I know kids today and players today are probably softer than they used to be. We all know that. That's yeah, fine. But, you know, did you communicate? Did you talk to them? Uh, you yeah, just but those don't aren't see kids. that. Those are These aren't kids, man. Like, I know he did say, hey, 99.9% of the chan- time they give us a chance to win, but tonight they didn't give us a chance I to win. Mind. I don't care. I don't mind benching them, I don't but. Care. When the, you react the no. way that they did the next game, well, it, it might, tells me, it like, might, mm, yeah, man, well, maybe might, this didn't go this yeah, well, didn't go over too well. Well, we right then it didn't, but maybe in three weeks, yeah, maybe it will work out. So listen, I'll summarize it by saying this, man. I love Coop. He's got an unbelievable handle for the personalities on the team and who they are. And, and, and listen, he 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 knows what he can and cannot do. So I'm going to trust him in this situation, but I think we're all going to monitor it and see how, how this goes. Because now for the first time, Cam, I will sit here and say, like, maybe Toronto will beat Tampa. Maybe. <laughs> in the first round. A lot of you time know what I'm left. saying? You still got 20 games to get your shit together. Like I said, Tampa Bay, they've lost five in a row. As it did Ryan O'Reilly right get now. hurt? Yeah, he did. Took a puck off the hand. Oh, no. And I, from what it sounds like, he broke a finger. Oh, no. They haven't said officially yet. But he had that splint on the finger after the game, didn't return to the game. And, you know, it was a shot from Austin Matthews that hit him square on the hand. And then At least Matthews it wasn't a broken too, hand. Did Matthews take one off a foot? Yeah, he did, actually, I think. Yeah. These last 20 games, when you're already in the mix, sucks. Oof. They suck, dude. Like, every shot you block, you're like, damn, my But this break happened to Toronto a few years back. Remember, they got uh, Felino, And then three games into his time yeah. with Toronto, he yeah, hurt his back. I thought. He hurt his back. Didn't he get suspended, he too? He might have, he but he hurt Boston his back, and then he wasn't like – it never worked out. He traded first for him. Hey, man. they love him in Boston. Yeah. We're going to get those guys on this summer, man. I want I want uh, Big Marcus, dude. Get Marcus on. He follows me on Instagram, I think, dude. Oh, does I'll he? Message him. Oh, he's cool. Yeah. Big Marcus? Yeah, dude. Who'd he like... fight the other day? God, he piss-pumped somebody the other day. Rock somebody and piss – why didn't Luchik and Reaver go – Oh, like do something. What do you think of that? Go. What are you doing? Have they never fought? They never fought. Fight each other for the boys. Dude, Lucic tried to fight him. Oh, he did. Oh, Luchik. yeah. He tapped him and like was like, let's go. Oh, Lucic caught McDermott. Oh, oh yeah. god dang boy. Damn McDermott. Use your reach, homie. Lucic waited for you. Waited for you. He caught you with that right cross. Boom, right in the button. Damn. Now the other kid Stillman, dude, you don't know what you're doing. Like, just remember, don't don't fight anybody else. But McDermott, like, don't get caught like that, homie. I wanted Luchik and Reaver to go. Why aren't you fighting? Is Reaver like, uh, I'm playing tonight? No, you're not. Just I fight. Know. I mean Sometimes I think Reaver doesn't want to go with some guys. Man. Well, I will tell you this. Lucic tried to fight him. Yeah. And they dude, didn't Lucic fight. doesn't give a shit. Well, Come on, Lucic, Reaver. He's got that confidence now. Reaver, go on. He's not that he didn't have it before, but like he just and, and Lucic will last longer than Reaver. Reaver don't want to get hit, dude. Lucic will get hit. Reaver don't want to get hit, and he gonna get hit mm-hmm. by Lucic. Lucic has that weird, weird reach. He's got that back thing, mm-hmm. you know. He's got that hunchback. Yeah, he's got he's got two inches on that. Mm-hmm. Reaver will get caught, man. Yeah. Fight. Are they playing again, Brody? Coming up here. Come on. Dude, everybody's texting me, well, like, we, what's we, going we, on? We, we, might, we, we might need to pump that I might have up. to do something yeah. on this. Like, let's entertain the hey, people. Hey, do you think Patty Kane going to New York could disrupt the team chemistry? Uh, maybe. He doesn't look that good, dude. I'm watching him. Dude, I slow. S- what I say all year long? He looks slow. 
I know he turned it on for a week there. Vladdy looked good dealer tonight, man, in high he school. Did. Oh, well, Vladdy, ever since they got Patty Kane, he's like, uh, don't forget about me, and I now know. I'm going to turn it on. Although his last game, he had no shots on goal. Yeah, but Kaner, I haven't, I haven't noticed him much. Mm-hmm. I noticed him. He had on a couple his... shifts of Panarin where they were like kind of going, using the width of the ice, you know snapping what I it around. Him? I noticed him getting scored on. Yeah, he's been minus. He's like right in the picture. If you stop, I, listen, all you guys out there, anytime there's a goal, right when the puck crosses the line, press stop. See where everybody's press pause. at. And yeah. to see where everybody's at. Here's the one thing I'll say, though, about Patty Kane. He's played with one team his entire organization. I'm not about to judge. I know. Patty Kane as a New York Ranger two or three games in, right? So I'm just telling you right now. You got to give it some time. Oh, good. Just like Tarasenko, you got to give it some time. And, I, and and now they're being rewarded. Remember I told you a few weeks ago he's going to score some big goals for them? And you were like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, well, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Tarasenko? A big goal is going to happen in the playoffs. Because no, whatever happens until I, the playoffs doesn't I got matter. you, but, you know, he's not in the playoffs yet. And he, well, then. He scored then that Forsberg about? goal, and he's, That's like, a big goal. scored an overtime That's a goal. Cute. That's a cute goal. The overtime goal is a, is a game winner. That's a big goal. We're talking playoff big goal. They're not there yet. Well, when they do, then don't talk about big goals until the playoffs. Are I understand that, I, but I said he'll score We're big goals in the, in the playoffs, and now he's starting to a score big some goal big goals. Now, because you won, you got an extra two points. That's not even going to solidify that much stuff. You're in the damn thing. Cam, you're, like, not. You're just like trying to like you're reaching there. I didn't mean it. I'm, I'm just saying as of now, like the games he's playing, he's scored some big right. goals for them. Okay, he scored an overtime yeah, winner. I, I, I'm they not haven't gotten to, to the playoffs. I'm not trying yet. to be a dick. I'm being dead serious. That's not a big goal yet. None of these goals are big goals yet. The big goal is going to be in a goddamn playoffs. So none Pat, of this counts. So I watching Patrick Kane live yeah, on a couple of occasions this year. I said the same thing. I'm like, man, this is he's got Kane on the back of the jersey. He's but, not going end to end. Like he's no, not using his speed. No, he's not like spinning off of guys. You know, a, he comes down. Hey, he will like spin and do a backhand. I've got the same injury that he's dealing with right. Well, you now. You ain't going. <laughs> You're not going to Nashville. But I can still give you know 80, give what eighty percent. You're going to give speeches or something. Are they going to have oh, you on the panel? Oh, am I going to give speeches? Is Chaser going to have you on am the I panel? Am I going to give speeches? Is Chaser going to have you on the stage on if the panel? If he was smart, he would. You're right. It ain't going to happen. You don't want us talking about the podcast on there. He's probably going to think we're doing podcasts and stuff down there. No, we're not. We're, we're playing hockey. We're bringing a team down. We're going to have a good time. How long are the games? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, Jacob Chikrin finally gets moved. Handsome. Jesus, he handsome. Holy cow. <laughs> Good Lord. His parents are cool, too. I know his dad dad was eating Tim Hortons. But even, like, I heard that, like, uh, the way his family and the way that he handled this whole situation with Arizona was great. Get out of there. I like Ottawa. Yeah, but it was great how he handled it. Hey, I like that Ottawa team, man. Me, too. They're not playing around right now. No, they're not. Hey, Claude Giroux deserves some credit. Absolutely. This guy's fit in great. He wasn't a good fit with Florida. I, and I and I came into this season having a different feeling about him than I do now because I'm like, okay, he disrupted. It felt like maybe the chemistry that they had in Florida maybe, last year maybe. by coming there. You know, he's a big personality. He's on the power play. Listen, they um, he's a hell of a player, and he's been really, good team. really good for that team. They get a pretty good team. Will they make the playoffs? I hope so. I hope so. I hope Montreal starts. That's not starts the with, answer I'm looking for. I, I don't know, Andy. I got well, to yes yes well, let no. me look where their points are. Are they four back, three back? What's their – how many games have they won in the past ten? They're doing pretty good, right? <laughs> well, that's what people do, Andy. No, like, been, I don't know. They've been red hot. They've been good, dude. Yeah. And Brady is just the coolest – he's the coolest guy going in the NHL. Yeah, he is. Oh, you think he's the coolest guy going? Yeah, I do. Brady's up there. Really? Yeah. He's scoring fucking goals. Hitting guys, he's challenging no, he Minnesota. Is. Who do? You, oh, he challenged the entire bench. Good. From, from Detroit. Good. Hey, like, like John Wincic style. And we got him going to Nashville. That's our coach. Yeah, Big Johnny Wincic. Like, what are you gonna do, boy? You little boys. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? Like, I love that man. Brady's like, what, bitch? What the fuck? What are you gonna do? All you. I'll bag all you up. Sit down. I love that dude. Yeah. And he goes out there and scores. Mm-hmm. Brady's the coolest thing. But Chikrin, listen, people trying to chirp what Arizona got. I don't think it was as easy to move him as people yeah. thought it would be. Arizona. You need to do something. Well. <laughs> I love Bill Armstrong because he's a good dude, man. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I, They know what they're doing. I know they, him. They, they have you a plan, him. Cam. I know. So A lot of people have plans, Andy. I'm just saying. they, ha- they But there's a method so behind the madness. The now, whether or not it pans out or, I mean, time will tell, right? They got their own problems. You know? Yeah, no, they do. And, and I want them to crawl out of it. 
Because I like Bill. Yeah. And we love Clayton And they're Keller. taking on, you know, ran, like just random contracts of like anybody who's not playing. They got some all stars on the team. They got Datsuk. <laughs> they got Pronger. I they know. got. Um, Oh, they got some heavies on that. Who did they just get this year? They got Andrew Ladd. I Andrew think Ladd. Good. They got uh, Paul. They, was Paul Creel? They had Patrick Kane for a minute. Oh, they got the Kane dog. Um, Hosa. They're loaded. I feel like they're there Pronger, for that Pronger. reason. <laughs> I know. It's like, uh, hey, can you do mind taking this guy that doesn't play for us anymore? Yeah, like that's why you're here. But you know what? Trading Chikrin, I don't think was very easy, and I think a lot of teams. We're like, okay, well, if this is the price tag, you got to take this contract. Like, maybe you got to take Yamamoto from, um, you know, uh, Edmonton and, and, and pull the RV from Edmonton. And, and he's like, I don't want those guys. Yeah. It, that doesn't do me any good. Like, I, I don't want to take on money. I don't want to take on contracts. You know, there were a couple players from Boston that they would have had to probably take. Like the Smith, Craig Smith, who ended up getting dealt. The Riley guy, like, you know, they would have had to take different, you know, um, what's his name in uh, in California or in uh, L.A.? Cal Peterson. Like, that's a contract they probably would have had to take from the Kings to move him to L.A. So, listen, I, I, th- I think he probably ended up doing the best that he could, even though a lot of people just automatically assumed that the return was going to be so much higher. But if you don't want to take contracts back or you don't want to take money back, then this is what the deal is probably going to end up looking like, you know? What do you think about Johnny Johnny Quick being traded? I say we get two teams in Arizona. Another one? Yeah. Jonathan Quick, let me ask you this. When you're a legendary, iconic player with a franchise, yeah. do you think the team should pull you aside a couple days beforehand and be like, hey, dude, this is what we got going in the works. We, yep. may, we may have to move you. 100%. Did they do that? No. Not at all? Is they, that confirmed? That's what I was told by his camp. Okay. So unless I'm being lied to. He's okay now. He's in Vegas, baby. In Vegas with Barbie. He wasn't going to go to Columbus, though. And I give I give Columbus a lot of credit for flipping him to a team that yeah. he probably wants to go to. Columbus is going to get that Bedard, brother. I think Chicago might. Oh, God. I think Chicago's the worst team in the league. Oh. So I think they're going to end up finishing with the fewest number of points. That's tough. And they'll probably have the best chance. Now, who knows how Chicago the lottery's going to go. I think Chicago needs to a couple years out, a couple more years. I do, too. I think they've been through so much. It, and it's not good for hockey because you want mm. Chicago to be on top. I think it's they boxed market. the whole Kane situation. They just too. screwed a lot of things up in the past couple of years. Yes, they okay. have. Yeah, like, yeah. and I love yeah. Quinville. We yeah. love those guys, but you guys got fucked up. You mm-hmm. fucked up a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Now you're on top of the world for a long time. You are on top of the world in hockey. Mm-hmm. That place is loaded with Kane jerseys. Chicago's red everywhere. It's hockey. Yeah. It's Blackhawks. And then you done fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And I think you need to sit some more years out. <sighs> now, how does that work? I don't know, yeah. Andy. Do I want Bedard to go to stupid Arizona, which we, we like people in Arizona? I wouldn't have a huge I issue. I don't know if it. I want that. Now, do I want Bedard to go to Anaheim and play with Troy Terry and our boy Ziggy? Zegras? That'd be kind of cool. Do I want Bedard to go to Columbus and get buried in a tiny market? No. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I that's good. I don't, I don't know about that. What about Montreal if they finally... You know, we're or Philly. Ty loves Columbus, Philly. by the way. Oh, really? Because his team, his Kirkwood team, is the Columbus Blue Jackets. They oh, have been well, that's cool. So whenever the Blue Jackets are, he wants me to okay, put them on. Okay, then we want Bedard to go there for a little time. <laughs> but I think uh, <laughs> Philly would be cool. Uh, it's a huge market, dude. That's be, That'd be good for the NHL. Like, I don't know. Can I ask you one other thing? Yeah. What's, what's Carolina doing? They're good, man. Yeah, but they don't do anything at the deadline. I'm not saying... What are they supposed to do? Well, and they got Pulley RV and they got Goss to spare. Ghost? What, what else you need? A scorer. Like, inject Are they not some, scoring? You know what? They what don't, are they don't have... As, as far as, like, the top team. They don't, how's have, their goal? Go they don't have a go-to guy offensively. You'll need a go-to guy. If you have everybody that's pretty damn good... Well, we'll find out, don't, won't we? Who the Blues go-to guy? And they won. Well, Tarasenko. Was he? Sure. Is he their go-to guy? They don't have a Tarasenko on he that team? He was their best. He was their but most dangerous offensive goal scorer. In the whole thing? They, it was from everybody. Now, actually, Jane Schwartz had more points than him. No, no, no. So That's go-to. not what you're asking. Who's your go-to guy? Like, when you need a – like, when you who who do you – like, who's your guy? My, my point is no, – I'm no. not saying he led the team in goals during oh, the playoffs. And he's not your go-to guy. Your go-to guy is the one that leads you. So, my point is, like – you don't need a one guy. No, I you get it. In the playoffs, sometimes it's like the unheralded guy. You need like you depth need on your roster. Star. All I'm saying is this. 
they don't have that. And I just wonder if the Fashion players really f- and the, and and they got good D obviously was pretty good. with Slavin and and uh, Brent Burns and and yeah, Pesci and some of these guys. Loaded, dude. Okay, but let me tell you this: when you see Boston doing what they're doing, who's loaded, <sighs> and they story. go out there and get more loaded, and you see the Rangers who are loaded and they go out there and get more loaded, and you see Toronto who's loaded and they go out there and get more loaded. And Toronto had some holes. They did. But if you're Carolina and you're one of their best players, then you're probably like, well, when are we ever going to fucking do anything? Are we going to do Who anything? Who would you want them to get? Any of these guys. Kane? They were in the mix for, like, they're always in the mix for everybody, and they're cheap as shit. You know they're that. They're cheap. That's true. And so okay. that's the bottom line. Oh, they're killing teams. And their GM comes out and says, we're not going to give up a player off our roster. We're not going to give up a first-round pick. They're like, you, you got to, like, get past the second round well, here eventually, okay? They so. Will. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Andy, I don't know, but of all the teams I've seen the Blues play. They're Car- damn good. Don't get me wrong. I saw them lose to Vegas you. last week, too. So, Well, they just killed fucking Tampa, too. They did. So it's well, like Tam- Tampa's got some issues right now. I don't Until mean they to, don't. I don't mean to be too hard on Until Coop. they don't. I just felt like when you're dealing with, like. They got killed by Vegas the other day? The grown men who are, like, multiple Stanley Cup champions who are, like, future Hall of Famers. I'm just saying. Just sit them aside. Sit them in a room. Be like, I don't know if you need to, like, call right. them out. Because that could backfire. I didn't do it. When I saw the Blues play Carolina the other day, they're fucking. I good. go, what the fuck? Pardon my language. Oh, I go, what the heck? Here comes another uh, message. What in the heck is going on here? Jeez, Louise! I go, this their team is dang no, good. They're dang. damn good. They're dang good, damn Andy. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, they're good. They're like really good. But I, I, I do think, Cam, when you add that player, because now you know, like when you're a contending team, especially the teams that haven't won. Now it's like you just you know you're heading down the stretch run once you get past the trade deadline, and I think sometimes you just want to get that little injection. Not, oh, not I like that injection. Boy. Not Pauly RV. <laughs> you don't want to get injected with Pauly RV. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? Could be a downer. Gosh, to spare. I don't know. Like, you want that good injection? Okay. You so you just want that injection in the room to be like, oh yeah, all the teams down the road who are doing this and that. We want it. We want to feel that type of like yeah, elation. It's hard to do, man. I'm not worried about but them. But they're cheap, be hard dude. To beat. They're cheap. They're cheap. Well, they're not a big market. And now they, you don't want to give up a first round pick. Well, you better get, you better advance, man. I'm putting hey, I Carolina's it, I on notice right now. You better get to the conference final. Stop just yeah. being good every I year. Agree. You gotta be great. You know that was the Blues years ago when they kept losing in the first round. You're right. They kept having these great regular seasons. Then they finally broke through and they got to the f- conference final. And then a couple years if later, they end up winning the, the Stanley top, Cup. At the past five, six years, Stanley Cups, not one of the teams made a big move at the deadline. Not one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I don't remember what like Washington. Well, did. they didn't. I don't remember what. Uh, well, because they didn't. Tampa did. Because they didn't. You get that? You don't remember? Well, they because probably they didn't did do, something. No, they, didn't. they didn't do much. Yeah, they got. Coleman and Gujo, you didn't even know who they were. Last year, you they didn't even know who they were when they got them. Coleman, I didn't know who Coleman was. You, they or, weren't a big time ordeal. They, they weren't a big. They got Hagel Patrick and Kane. somebody. La- that's Tampa a, Bay. That's got, a third line guy. They, what are you talking about? They traded two first round picks from. So they, for a third line guy. But I'm just saying they don't. Third line guy. They're giving up first round. Pick. Well, that's how you win. You. you better. You're telling still make a big some, splash. You're talking about making a big splash at the deadline. The last five Stanley Cup winning teams didn't do much. Didn't they get McDonough or something at the deadline or something once or okay. Something? Of journeyman, I'm just telling you, they didn't have a big splash for chicken. A journeyman, McDonough, right? He like helped them win, dude. He was their he's best awesome. defenseman. Yeah, but like he's, yeah, I know he was great, but he's not a superstar. Like he's not like he's pretty good. He was what, a captain of the Rangers before he got moved. I know where he who he was. He's older then too. He's older, a lot older. I'm not talking about when he got traded to t- to Nashville. I'm talking about when he went to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, I know where he you was know, a stud, dude. I, he was a stud, blocking shots, doing his thing. But you're like, hey, we need a big Well, they don't splash. win without him. My point and is, they got Corey Perry you really, and some other things. Yeah, like that, 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 he's old. I'm talking about like the Patrick Kane, the Jacob Chikrin, mm-hmm. the uh, Ekblad. Tyler Bertuzzi. The, the big guys that are just sitting there. Ryan O'Reilly, Vladimir Tarasenko, whatever the case is. Right. Those teams that do they, the last five Stanley Cup. Tony Barbashev's not a big deal just because he's a third line guy. The third line guy. No, I'm telling you, he's not they a big deal. He's a third line guy. They My point them. is, like, if you he'll look be at, heavy in the playoffs. They, if you look they at it, like, like they didn't, they didn't do much. They just they picked a couple third line guys, and they, they Carolina didn't, didn't do much because they're cheap. 
Okay. That's why. That's there's the difference. And you know and what, dude? Fine. I'm telling you right now, I like Carolina a lot as well. But and my boy Paul, Paulie Stastny's there too, man. I hope they. I like Paulie, man. He's I ho- good guy. Ho- hope they win it all. Now your brother. He's lucky I didn't throw him. I would love to see Stastny win, but my fear is they're going to end up losing early in the playoffs again. Maybe because they should got because they should got Kane because because of the cheapness. You should have got Kane. Well, even get a Tyler Bertuzzi. Hey, the GM comes out and said we were in the mix in the midst for a big trade, but we just didn't want to lose a player from our roster or a prospect or a first round pick. It's like give up the first round pick. Once in a while, you have to. Yes, you do. You'll get you'll get another one I'm back. I'm just saying, if you go that big, hey, it usually doesn't work out. Has That's anybody all. mentioned, by the way, that Austin Matthews is going to get traded this offseason? I don't know. Has anyone mentioned that? Uh, I'm sure I read something or something. Is, is that this? out there, Brody? Are you breaking this story, Andy? Yeah, I'm breaking it because uh, they better sign his ass this summer. If they don't sign him this summer, then they may have to move him. In fact, I think they have no choice but to move him if they don't sign him this summer. You're going to lose him for nothing? That is risky. And I don't think he's going to resign there. So I think I wouldn't. I think if, if you lose, if you're if you're uh, Kyle, does, say hi to Kyle Duvis. Hi Kyle, how are you? What's good for you? If they Better come out of the first round, that's what's good for you. If they lose, if they win the cup or something like that, you can't really just trade Austin Matthews this or summer. If they lose the cup. If they lose early, they're not going to lose to a Western Conference team. <laughs> you and you're going to get a boatload. Obviously, for uh, for Austin Matthews, you're gonna get a shit ton. What would you have to? What would they give away? But all I'm saying is, you can't lose him for nothing, and you probably have to trade him this summer. It's, he it's gone. Just, you think so? Sorry, Toronto. I hate to do that oh, to you. Oh man. Sorry, Carlo. What would they get for him? <laughs> Carlo's upset. Oh, Carlo. Oh God, we have to call him. He's like, I need more him. sports. God, Carlo loves sports. <laughs> what? What would they get for Austin? You think? Like 20 first round picks. I know. Like Eric Lindros stuff. No, Matthews, regardless, he's going to, they're going to have to make him the highest paid player in the game, which he will be. 14 mil? I bet you he'll get somewhere 13 and a half, yeah. something like that. Well, who's the highest paid right now? At 13? Yes. Well, then maybe he'll get 13 the con dog. and a half. Maybe he'll get 14. Listen, he's been banged up this year. He's still on pace to get somewhere in the range of 40 goals. So it's not like terrible. But just like uh, Matthew Kachuk last offseason, he steered his way to. Florida, Austin's going to be able to do the same thing because nobody's going to trade the package, like we've said several times, required to get Austin Matthews unless you know you're going to be able to sign him long term. Where's he going? So who's going to step up and trade for Austin Matthews this summer? I want to know. Somebody step up, trade for Austin Matthews, get him signed. Who? But if Toronto Who? doesn't win the cup or if they who's don't got go room? deep. Who's got picks? Well, nobody's got room for him right now. Who's got picks? Who's got all the above to get him? You have to have a No, no, no. That's not the question. It's where does he want to go? Yeah, I know. That has... No, no. Where does he want to go? Yeah, but you can't just go where you want to go if they can't trade for you. Yes, he can... He'll pick... They'll make it happen. If he wants to go anywhere, they will do whatever it takes to create whatever necessary space and roster room and all that to bring Austin Matthews on board. Where does he want to go? I don't know. I don't think he wants to go to Arizona. I think he wants to go somewhere south. Go to New York. You got room for all that? I don't know. Where he's going to go. Well, you're the insider. We'll, like, we'll find out where he wants to go. And we'll start getting some information in terms of, of where he wants to go. Probably. American boy. Go to that Tempe rink with 4,000 people there. It's sick. Go to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle. That'd be cool. He'd be I'd play sick that. In Seattle. I'm not going to lie. Hey, they're, a, they're a cool-ass team. Hell yeah. Man. They're cool. Seattle's they, they, cool. Got, they got some cool-ass dudes on that yeah, team. I like Seattle And a lot. their PR girl is nice, too. They're cool. Everything about very it friendly. Cool. Very friendly. I mean, like you know, I did yeah, an interview I, with Vince yeah, Dunn. No, you don't do that. You don't. Act no, I'm just saying. But she was very nice. She was very accommodating. You're the one guy that says something about a girl. Well, Jaden you meet, meeting Schwartz is dealing with like a skin condition, kind of like what Hosa had before. Oh, really? Yeah. Which, yeah. So like you know, he wasn't available to do intermission type stuff because he needs to get treatment and stuff. So. That's brutal. All right, let's get to uh, Stevie McIntyre, Cam. Mm-mm-mm. Brought to you by Hair Club. You talked about it before. Uh, they are going to make the back of your head look as good as the front of the head. At least that is the uh, rumor that I'm hearing. And listen, I, I can't thank them enough. The pill you're talking about, what yeah. does that do? It's um, it's, it a, it's not like a little blue pill or anything No, like it doesn't get no. you a boner. Oh. But, um, but no, it just, it just helps you grow. Not your back hair or anything like that, because I specifically asked them about that, because I certainly don't need that. 
But just your hair and your beard just thickens and thickens it out. It's very easy. There's wow. no side effects besides maybe a mm-hmm. maybe a couple of little things here and there. But the doctor takes mm-hmm. it, and uh, they're gonna how they treat you. They treat me great, dude. Ray Bro, Riley's wife's mm-hmm. there. Lovely woman. Mm-hmm. Very gentle. I watch a movie. Oh, what'd you watch? I didn't, well, I didn't watch it, dude. I didn't. Last time I got my surgery, I watched a movie. This time was a consultation. How was the consultation? It was great. How many you, people did you meet with? Just a doctor and a couple people. Can they do stuff for back hair? Um, I don't know. I, well, no. you mentioned the back no, hair. I said the pill doesn't make your back hair grow. It makes okay. your hair on your head grow mm-hmm. and your beard. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I wonder how the beard will look. You might that. need it, homie. You need a couple <laughs> pills. I, mean, you. <laughs> I don't do pills, dude. And don't. Hey, one thing that's making me nervous, too, on the trip, because people are asking that they're going to have, like, IVs and stuff yeah. like that. I don't do, you all, don't the, I don't don't do, do all the needles and stuff like that. You don't do it high-maintenance, boy. Okay. You know? Like I, I do, I do, I do, worry I do plan bit. on... Uh, Pumping, like pumping home, up the boys you know, during the before the games yeah. with some speeches. We'll do some funny stuff. I'm bringing some Cam and Strick Mango Lemonade Hard yeah, Seltzers, bring, by the way, for the Don't, for the plane. Yeah, yeah, bring some stuff for the plane for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, we'll party all the way down there. Mm-hmm. I haven't decided who I'm sitting next to yet. We'll, we'll do our. Dr- it doesn't matter. I'm joking. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> You're starting to worry me about Can't stuff. I, like, I don't want to, like, this is so still my serious. vacation, too. Like, you guys, like, I got to, like, control Well, there's 15 a couple of things dicks. you've had to control. I got to control 15 swinging dicks down there. Like, I got to oh, have fun, too. It'd be easy, dude. Yeah. It's an no, easy, it's, easy it's an group. Easy, it's a good good group of dudes. Yeah, good you, did, you dudes. did good with that. Yeah, I think I did pretty good on that. Really good. Yeah. Um, Cam and Strick, or excuse me, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Yeah. Just go there and go there today and get yourself hooked up. Yeah, don't wait. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Write that link down and remember it, man. Just memorize it. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Cam, which, can you repeat that for us? Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick, baby. There you go, baby. And my, uh, I tried the barbecue beef stick today. It was damn good. Is that not incredible? It is really I good. I brought them for the boys this past week. I've been bringing them to Brody, man. What else did I have today? Well, I have my protein shake in the morning mm-hmm. and my vitamins. I do the brain vitamin two and how are you and i do my seeing some results with it yeah no i feel great in the morning man like i gotta get up so damn early and Mm -hmm. i just i get up and i get my shit done and uh i'm on it man and i'm still kicking it with you this is i mean we're three i'm six hours into talking isn't that amazing six hours into talking you look great i'm not even cussing you're doing well you were a little bit i've heard you cuss i've heard you cuss a couple today no one said you can't cuss no 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 but i i need to calm down and I was okay today, I thought, right? Okay. You think so? Yeah. Because I'm not going to listen to it you're again. You're working on it. Yeah. No, I could be dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, I've been doing the fruits and the greens, dude. The, this is, I mean, incredible. When you look at first form, get all the fruits and the vegetables that you need all in one shake, dude. Yeah. I had to shake it up. The shaker cups are incredible. Yeah, the Take shaker cups are me. great. And they're f- and um, actually, I just ordered a bunch of clothes for the trips, too. Yeah. <laughs> I got loaded up, man. That's what you'll agree. That's what you're going to wear every day. Jason Cam's too. like, I need to go shopping. I'm going to go to f- get a bunch yeah, of sweatpants from I first. I know. I'm going to wear sweatpants <laughs> the whole time. I'm not dressing up down there. Oh, dude, you got to look nice. No. I'm, no? Gonna, I'm just going to look chill. I don't have any nice clothes anymore. I'm just going to wear sweatpants and stuff. I'm not impressing anybody. I don't this is a first form sweatshirt right here. Is it? Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I know. That's, I'm just going to wear that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to wear a first form everywhere in Nashville. Mm-hmm. That's I've, what I'm going to do. Do you me. buy stuff for Kate? Um, no, I just, from I get her the, the healthy stuff that she takes in the mm-hmm. morning, the shakes and all Dude, that. Dude, the bars are incredible. Yeah, they got, every, just look at their Meat website. Meat sticks, the cake cups. Crazy. Um, I give my kids the vitamins. I take yeah. the fish oil pills. Yeah, I do too. I am feeling better than ever, Cam. Yeah. Look at look at my eyes. You look good. Look at my skin. No, you don't have bags under your eyes. No, I don't. No, you look good. You do. I told somebody the other day how old I was. They couldn't believe it. You look young. They 100%. thought I was like thirty-one. Yeah, you could be thirty-one years old. Really? 100%. Well, take your hat off. Your hair is great. That's but true. You could dye that in two seconds. Yeah. Just for men, you could brush that mug in two seconds. No, I would never use that product. Why not? Unless they were sponsoring us. Yeah, all right. No, it looks good. You're I fine, dude. You look good on TV the other night too. Oh yeah. Yeah. One thing I do, dude, Cam, though, is uh, so you go. Don't, to fr- you don't look jacked, but you look good. Oh, is that true? Well, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't look muscle bound. Or really? Nah. I'm surprised to hear you say that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> did somebody say that you did? <laughs> Firstform.com slash Cam Go there. Use our link. Support our sponsors, fellas. Yeah, man. They are, these are great They're people, They're the best too. of the best. I'm telling all y'all. Um, Spark Skate Sharpeners. S-P-A-R-X. I need mine. 
done. Oh, bring them to me. I will. Because get my. Oh, well, give you them need to all me. your equipment ready. You should have given them to me today. I would have had them done by Wednesday. No, you need. I'll get them to you tomorrow. Okay. Actually, let's go skate tomorrow night. Or Wednesday. No, Wednesday night. Yeah. Let's skate Wednesday night. Let's be on the same line so we can develop that chemistry. That's fine. Okay. That's fine because I probably will be on. No, you'll be on my line. Just in case some shit goes down. Yeah, I, I got to protect you. Yes, you I do. I got to protect your brain. <laughs> I don't want you slowing down. I mean, if, if something happens to me, that uh, affects you. It affects me financially. And then I got to step in. <laughs> <laughs> so don't let that happen, I okay? Won't. I won't, dude. You got a, um, we got a badass team. That's why we use Ain't the Ain't nobody messing with us. Hey, listen, somebody, uh, somebody said to me at the rink the other day, they were like, hey, man, listen, I... I'm not letting Seth sharpen my skates. I'm like, see, you're a smart I guy. Know. And I bash Seth. What's his name? Seth? Seth? It's a tough name to say. Well, like, I have a lisp, I think. The guy who works at the rink. Yeah, the, the no sleep. The kid. The, you, know, you know the kid. He's got he's got bags under his bags. Like the guy eyes. who works with him, like, Seth, can you get their skates? They've been standing like, there for 20 minutes. He's like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't see. <laughs> yeah, that guy, you know, like, you know when you see him. And you're late, and you're just lazy, mm-hmm. and you know he's got cookie crumbles in his belly button. Yeah, I hate when you say that because he does. I don't like that because he's just sitting on it's, watching. Yeah, you know what? Rather night. you not. Can you come up with something else? And he's please. just eating. He's eating like fuck, he, Cheetos. He's Cheetos, and he's eating like those uh, TV tray dinners. Oh god, the TV with, dinners with like yeah, like with. With dinosaur yeah, chicken McNuggets. Yeah, but, he, but you know what, Cam? He doesn't throw it away afterwards either. He, he, he they let, pile he, up. He piles up downstairs. The cats are eating all his stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And his he, parents he, haven't seen him in like His two parents weeks. are way upstairs. <laughs> they don't even know what's going on with the kid. He's half naked. He's a virgin. Oh, shit. Uh, well, really? Saying, well, I didn't know that. Is he getting laid, do you think? Probably no, not. Probably no. not. No. But and then he's sharpening your skates. Mm-hmm. Half sleeping. Yeah. So, so what's the alternative? Do it yourself. Spy, yeah, get a spark. It's simple. It's so simple. We might have to bring one down. Uh, I yonder. think we got half the team using the sparks now. Listen, yeah. you guys should get one too. Use the promo code Cam and Strick. It's going to save you more money than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And can you believe that type of deal, Cam? It's you a good get? deal. Promo code Cam and Strick. Get that sparks and get it today. Gel sticks is another great training tool. So you get your sh- uh, skate sharpened by sparks, and then your stick handling with gel sticks, Cam. It helps big time. The weighted man. stick. I started that back in the day. People used to make fun of me for it. You really? Know, in the locker room. And know. then it would feel good when you get on the ice? Yeah, dude. I get the puck out of the zone. Mm-hmm. How many it touches do be- you think you'd get like a game? Depends. Yeah. You know, more than you got. Probably. But, um, <laughs> it depends, man. It depends on the You're game. not bad in men's league. Oh, I know. It's so funny, man. Like, I could not play hockey for three months and then go out there and just go. And dominate. Mm-hmm. Like I still have it. I got to be honest good. though, if because there's a thousand dollar prize, you yeah, know, for to league the league, league. I'm, I'm going for it. I hope you do get it because I know you'll Can make you it rain. You set me up, dude. I will make it rain because if I get it, they're gonna bitch so bad. Chaser's gonna get pissed. I need you to score, and then we can make it rain for the boys. Mm-hmm. You keep four hundred of it. I just got like a new. Um, Is that cool, David? Well, I'll tell you what's. I got a new David Prawn stick. He gave me. A couple dude, bring a couple, couple of righties. My, bring a couple righties down. I just got one. But it's mine. Okay, I'm we'll have to that. buy one. Yeah. Oh but yeah. When's be, the last um, time you bought a well, stick? That's, <laughs> they're like two hundo, dude. More two thirty. It's just it makes me sick to my stomach. Why are hockey too. sticks so much money? Why are baseball bats expensive? Why are oh we're starting know, baseball season soon expensive. too? If you buy a basketball, it's expensive, like hundred bucks. Damn. Mm-hmm. For a basketball, I think so. I don't think it costs that much. Or when you look up a nice NBA basketball, see if it, how much see it is. How much that cost? It doesn't cost hundred bucks. I think it's about ninety bucks. Gel sticks is a great, it's great value too. Somebody too. said a basketball costs hundred yeah. bucks. So what happens is it's a weighted a stick. A basketball. Yeah, no, it's not hundred bucks. Uh, it's a, a, an NBA one. Just see real quick because I could be completely get a, wrong. Check out the WNBA one, will you? You would like. That. Oh, I can't wait. The season starting. Brittany's starting. It's uh, women's month, by the way. Is I'm it? surprised okay. you haven't brought that up yet. We're gonna go to the. We uh, love all the women. I want to go to the season opener for. Good. Go out, go there, man. The Mercury, Wear a mask on the, the Phoenix Mercury. Be with the other guys on the on on uh, the court side with masks on. You look you look cool, shit. Who has it? How much? What did I tell you? Really? Man? Yeah, basketball. Told you. Well, that's an official. It's probably signed. No, that's what they do in, with like. Yeah, it's signed by Seth Curry. No, no that's yeah, high keep school. reading. Keep reading. No, that's what high school basketball uses. Hundred yeah, bucks. I told you. Yeah. That's that's the industry we probably should have gone in back in the day. Just going to Sporting Goods. <laughs> Although if you open the big idiot. box stores, they just they. Compl- I look at it like, what could I have done differently? Well, I could have stayed off of drugs. I could have just focused more on stuff. I couldn't have worked out. Could harder. have stayed off of drugs. Off of drugs, you know. Oh. But I, I couldn't have worked out harder. I, I almost done had heart attacks because I worked out so damn hard because I'd made up for. 
be, be maybe, maybe did be you really effective. work out that hard? Oh God, psycho, Andy! I played ten years in the league. I know, from but Eureka, did, you, Missouri. did you really work? I did, oh, it God. wasn't like natural strength. Well, yeah, that's always the case for sure. I feel like it was a lot of it was gene- genetics yeah, with that, you. That was a, uh, but I had to get my endurance, dude. I had to learn how to fucking throw bombs. I had to learn to get the puck out. You of didn't know how to do that. You weren't like a natural fighter. Yeah, but you can only be you. You don't just grow up and know how to punch. Like I had to work on it. Mm-hmm. My dad taught me it at a young, young age. No, but I understand that part of yeah. it. But like you didn't. I was a killer. No, like I, I'm talking Always. about like in the gym. Like, did you really work out that hard? Oh God, yeah, hardcore. I'd know. I'd never miss. Where would you rank among the fitness testing? Oh, I'd be up there with everything. Would you? Yep. Like with how everything. many? How many pull ups? A lot. Everything. Fastest. Strongest, all that. Really, fa- among yeah. the fastest skaters. Oh yeah, big time. And runners and all that. Andy, you, I played you, ten years. I, now. I'm, a, I'm a joke. What are you like, running? There's a reason why. What are you, I was ru- athletic. You, what are you guys getting? You guys getting time yeah. with your running yeah. off ice? Um, yeah. In Where would you do that? Like that? Oh, in junior. I'm talking about with the devils, dog. Yeah, the devils. Yeah, we would do sprints and stuff. No doubt. We'd off the sprints. ice. Yep. We do sprints okay. with the blues too. Really? Yep. With Nelson, absolutely. The beep test. Now, did you ever do the? Did you ever do the beep test? Did all the time. Did you? Andy, I was, a, I was an athlete for How did you handle years. the beep like, test? Jesus. How did you handle that? Uh, great. Okay, good. I was in shape. Okay, good. I was in very good shape. Um, Andy, if I wasn't in shape, I would have made any I teams. know you were like, in I don't shape. I'm like, not saying you asking. weren't in shape. Like I'm, just, you, like I'm you, saying I, how hard you're, did you really just, have to work oh my God. in the gym? I had to kill it, dude. Then God. I had to stretch. Then I had to learn how to stretch. I see all these NHL guys. I mean, I know they work out hard and everything, but I don't I mean, are they really like... Balls to the wall every know. day. I don't know how they Are work. they just I, naturally gifted because they're sick hockey players? I don't know. I wasn't naturally gifted. I was a good athlete. Not everybody's not like just like crazy physical specimen. I didn't Some of them look like teenagers. Yeah, like they look like you. And they put up 100 points. Yeah, they look like you, but they're an athlete. You know, I'd get up and I'd, I would never miss anything. I'd, I'd force other guys to come in with me, like Patty and all those guys, to ask them. And then I'd go box. Then I'd go skate. Then I'd go to a chiropractor and have to do stretching All things. in the same day. Yes, all in the same day. It's a four, it's, a, it's just 10 hours of working out, mm-hmm. five, six days a week. Did you barbecue a lot back then? Then I'd come home and barbecue. Oh, actually, I'd go get Joe Bacardi's and then my buddies would come on. See, that's not healthy. I was reading the, well, mo- that's the most downfall. unhealthy food you can eat today online. There's a lot of, un- well, we'll get burnt, into that Andy, next time. I was burning 20,000 calories. We'll get into that next time. Wow. So, Ryan O'Reilly, in fact, it's been confirmed, which we know, already knew. I told Carlo today, I said, you can't say this on the air, but he's got a broken finger. No, going on no. long-term injury. Timeline uncertain. John Tavares won't play versus New Jersey as he's under the is weather. It, yeah. oh, under the weather? Yeah. Or is he rocked? Gelsticks.com, so check that out. Get it today. And Cam, real, real quick, to summarize what it does for your hands, though. It helps your hands out tenfold, man. By? By using the different weight. The weighted stick. Yeah, the weighted stick, and all of a sudden you go out and And then the puck, the puck feels puck. like a Especially what? Especially for a kid, too. Feels, feels like a ping pong ball. ball. Golf ball. Golf ball, yeah. Feels like that. All right, Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. That's two N's. I mean, this, the, the, the weather is getting nice. My allergies so nice. are getting worse. But check it out and get there today to Bellman. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Located where, Cam? Chai. Chai, Missouri. That's right. Okay. Buick GMC on one side of the street. On the other side, they got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I'm looking at that Jeep Wrangler for the summer, man. It's either yeah, that or a farm. School. I get the farm. <laughs> and a Jeep. You need a truck like I got. You need a shite kicker. Truck like looks I pretty got. good. You feel you feel more around. confident driving that. <laughs> kind of. Do you? Yeah. You feel yeah, like you, you own the road. the road. Yeah. You scare people when mm-hmm. you pull up on them. You yeah, know? but you won't be scared when you go to Bellman because the uh, customer service is top well, notch. They ain't got camp. no swinging dicks. No, nope, mm-hmm. they give you Not sushi there. there. They give you sushi when you eat there. Don't lie. Well, I'm just That's saying they will do stupid, that. Like, no, yeah, they'll they'll do that. That's not turning anybody on. Would you send your wife there? Yes. By herself. Hundred percent. 100%. Hey, they accept anybody, by the way. If you have bad credit, no problem. Yeah, they'll take care of you. As they should, man. It's easy to get Say bad credit. Say hi to Danny boy. Danny you? boy, what up, homie? Damn. And what about Dale? Dale, how you doing? Kenny? Is that Kenny? Hey, Kenny, what's going on? Say hi to Stevie McIntyre. Hey, Stevie, big dog, Stevie, big dick. Toss to the interview in the most nice way possible. This is Steve McIntyre on the Camus Trick Podcast. Let's go, baby. Hairclub.com, baby. Oh, you're damn right. Go to our landing page today, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Regrow, restore, and replace that hair. Don't wait. Now to the interview. Hello? Big motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) 
Are you, What's shaking? Are you on the tractor? Yeah, where are, are you, you at? Are you, are you bailing hay? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm up here at Saskatchewan. Or Saskatchewan, baby. I want to hear those windmills, man. Those power, those, those power oh, windmills. God. Where do you, where, so where are you exactly and what are you doing? Uh, I'm actually, well, I'm from Brock, Saskatchewan and from, from, uh, little, little, little farming community there, little ranching community. <clears throat> and then I, I'm actually living three miles just straight west of my mom and dad's where I grew up. So. Wow. That's cool, man. Are they still with yeah. us? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Dad, actually, um, my, my mom and dad are doing good. My dad, uh, he had a little bit of a scare here back in 2019. He had some issues, colon cancer, and actually that was the reason why uh, I was down in North Carolina uh, firefighting for uh, almost four years down there. And then uh, my mom, she she asked me to, you know, come back home and say, hey, you know, if you want to come back home and take over one day, this is probably a good opportunity. You know, your dad's not going to ask you for help because that's just, you know, the old yeah cowboy rancher type way and so yeah it was i came home and it was uh it's been an adjustment but uh you know we're we're still uh like i said he's I, i've learned to just sit back and just listen yep or i'm trying to, anyway <laughs> and, and enjoy it man you know like we, we right. all gonna go right. through that stuff so you were down you, you were a firefighter because i saw you do an interview I, and I you were that. in a firehouse yeah like going down the pole yep. and everything. With no Mac shirt on. <laughs> You're doing a calendar spread. You're doing like a calendar, my, Mr. October. I was, I was doing my uh, Andy Strickland impersonation. Oh, he knows. Hey, hey, he knows hey, what the fuck hey, that's all about. Listen, Stevie, there's oh, only God. one, baby. There's only one. Hey, how tough? Hey, is, your mom and dad, big and tough. His oh mom my, uh, my dad's e six four. My mom, she's uh, probably five four, but I swear to goodness, uh, when she hollered or when she spoke, by God, we better be high stepping because she uh, back in the day she's mellowed out a lot now, and she'll she'll probably kind of laugh and giggle now, but uh, yeah, she she uh, she was the boss back in the day. She still is, but uh, uh, but yeah, they're they're uh, you know they're just honest, hardworking. Uh, farm you know they that, they grew up with it they my my grand or well my grandpa and grandma my great grandma and grandpa they they had a uh dairy farm you know they had a bunch of cows and milk and then they had beef cows and then my grandpa my great grandpa my dad's side he came over from scotland so you know they're hardcore homesteaders and and you know it's uh they've kind of you know throughout the generations they've you know hard work has been a big uh Obviously, you know, big part of it. So, of course, your mom was tougher. Yeah, I no, knew that I before know. you even answered the question. I knew My wife's tougher way, than me too. I mean, tougher. people wouldn't believe that. We, we know but. that, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what is way it? tougher? Hey, okay, so you got a farm, okay? You're a cowboy up there. Like, what do you got to do every yeah. day, man? What kind like, of farm is like, it? Like, what kind of farm? Like, what do you got to do when you get up? And what time? Well, do you do? Give me your fucking setup here. We got we got Saskatchewan beef. Or Saskatchewan, or however you say it. Saskatchewan. Get it right. <laughs> is that better than Alberta beef? Because we'll get a Sutter on the line you know right what? now and have the little beef off. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll go nose to nose with Sutters. That's all right. No, they, no, they they've got they've got some really really nice cattle. Yeah. Uh, I won't knock them for that. I you know it's always a little bit of a rivalry, but Western Canada, you know Saskatchewan being you know they call us a bunch of double jumpers and that's fine, whatever. But uh, no, our our. Our everyday they call chaser way like, worse than that. Yeah, just double jumpers. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, no, it's it's actually in the wintertime, it's 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 you know, you're dealing with the elements. Um, you know, like I'm kind of I'm the chore boy. Uh, you know, if dad's needing help, I go help and cut the strings off the bales. I haven't graduated full time to tractor work. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll we'll go out and feed cows, you know, we'll feed them chop. You know, we usually feed in the afternoon, um, and then we'll put out a bunch of bales, put out chop, like barley, in the feed bunks. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it as far as, the, you know, the wintertime chores. You know, we'll put out bedding or whatever needed, depending on the weather. Um, but like I said, I've got a full-time job. Uh, I work for Baytex uh, Energy, 
uh, I go around checking wells, making sure the pump jacks are going up and down. So that's what kind of keeps me busy. And then uh, I help mom and dad. And then uh, I've got some horses that I that I kind of ride, trying to get them ready for, you know, uh, I like steam ropes. So I'm trying to get them, get them kind of going for that. And then, uh, you know, I might sell a couple here and there. Just kind of depends on where they're at. So, yeah, that's kind of. You know, the cowboy Andy. everyday life. I mean, He's a goddamn yeah, cowboy, Andy. Yeah, but the he, opposite of you. But he, well, look the way I'm dressed today. <laughs> I know. Uh, I look like a cowboy today. <laughs> yeah, big time. Hold on. Listen, you're confusing me, man, because, like, I don't know how you have time for all this. Like, you're you're doing the chores in the morning, and you got all this hey. stuff and responsibility on the farm, and then you got a full-time oh, job Jesus. on top of that. Mac. Like, that is your full-time <laughs> job, being a cowboy. You need to, like... Just quit the wow. energy job right now. Let's focus on the farm here. <laughs> well, you know, it subs- one subsidizes the other. Like Andy's I said, a if I wasn't thinking that, oh, <laughs> well, I was. I was a fireman. Like I said, I was a fireman uh, down in North Carolina, Kernville, North Carolina, for almost four years. And I absolutely, I absolutely love that job. Um, I had horses down there as well. And then, uh, like I said, I moved home and. And as you probably, well, you might not know, but having horses is, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you want to become a millionaire in the horse business, you better be, be a billionaire first. So they're very expensive. They're, uh, I've got, uh, you know, I've got not a lot, well, a lot of money tied. Like I, I take pride in my horses and, and, um, you know, I work, like I said, we work cows with the horses as much as we can. And, and, uh, so it's, for me, it's, it's a, it's a, I hate to say it, but it's a dying tradition. My grandpa, he fed all the cows with, uh, with a team of Clydes. And, uh, you know, it was, when I was a little kid, it was like, oh my gosh, it takes forever. But going back to tradition, you know, the cowboy way, the tradition behind it, it's like, now I can appreciate it that much more. So I'm trying to kind of keep my, my grandpa, you know, our, our family tradition alive and keep it going. So I can pass it on down to my kids and they can pass it on their, to their kids. And, you know, it's kind of one of them things. It's, you can take the, or they you can take the boy out of the country, but you'll never take the country out of the boy or something like that. Now that's how it so, is. Yeah. 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 And he knows about yeah. that. He's oh, a country yeah. boy. Hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. so, okay. What are the, what, what do you have to deal with, with, with the animals up there protecting them? Do you have wolves? Are there bear cruising around? Like, is there anything like, I know uh, maybe coyotes. Yeah. The coyotes, like I said, we kind of, I try to, like I said, I've probably shot three or four of them this winter already. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're kind of just a pain, yep. uh, but not so much wolves. They're a little bit farther north. Uh, the bears are a little bit farther north, but there has been some spite, some sightings of like some cougars, some big cats down this way. So, you know, guys always, you know, may or may not be riding around the old thirty thirty in the truck, or you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, you just kind of try to do the best you can for them. But as far as uh, you know, keeping keeping care of them, Dad, honestly. My dad wanted to be a veterinarian ever since he was little, and and uh, he never had this, you know, the necessary schooling because I mean it's not something you just go, uh, you know, just apply and get in. You gotta be, you know, it's years and years and years of work, and and then on top of that, it's it's you know paying off that school dad and everything else. But uh, my dad, you know, he he's he's amazing in the sense that he can he can see an animal before it's sick. And, you know, we're trying to treat him or trying to do whatever's needed to get done for him. And, I mean, he's such a good stockman. He's probably a stock, like, you know, you, you, you learn, you, you use the term cowboy. And a cowboy is, you know, a guy that goes out there and, you know, they're a little bit maybe rough around the edges, a little bit this or a little bit that. And, and there's a difference between being a cowboy and a stockman and a cowman. And my dad is a cowman. Like, he, he knows the, you know, you know, he knows what's going on all the time. He knows the way the animal is, you know, is not, is not up to snuff. And he knows, you know, he just, he's just very knowledgeable in that sense. And, and like, for me, I'm the cowboy. I want to go out there and get it done. Boom, boom, boom. You know, yeah. we got to do this. We got to do that and get it done. And he's a little bit more like methodical. And, uh, but in saying that, uh, you know, he, you know, the biggest factor up here is the wind and in the cold i mean it gets very it's Jeez. very frigid up here like it's very cold here today. Christmas, it was, yeah yeah it, it, it's it was 52 to, uh, below zero oh, uh and that, that was here. uh <laughs> I guess, 
Yeah, it, it, and then plus the windshield. So we were putting out a lot, like extra feed, and you know, making sure them cows were in the wind breaks, and and uh, you know, because like I said, the wind, the wind is the biggest killer. Like uh, you know, the one day it was blowing from the northwest, the next day it was blowing from the southwest. Like it's just a constant battle. But you know, that's the the one thing about about having cows is is it's not for the faint of heart and you know everybody wants to be a cowboy till it's time to do cowboy shit yeah and you're right about no, that, that down, hey, Andy. hey no that's you want to be a fucking that cowboy. should be a t-shirt <laughs> and by the way we toe drag them cougars over here yeah, we, okay so i mean the cougars trying to get those got them cougars just, down here. just so you know hey right. a couple things listen and, and then we'll get into some hockey stuff but um how many acres yeah. do you have and like what's the cost of keeping this thing going like yeah. every day like i mean is it expensive as shit? Like, how do you make money on the farm? Are you selling the bulls? Like, what are, what are you doing to make the money? Well, you know, it's it's, it's kind of one of them things. When I went, when I first got home, um, you know, we went and sat in the egg rep, you know, and, and I we got talking about, okay, how can I take over this operation? How can it be profitable? And the guy flat out told me, he said, you want to go farming? I said, no, I want to go ranching. He said, you want to go farm? He asked me this three different times. And three different times I said, no, I want to go ranching. And unfortunately, with the way the business is going, it's, it seems like it's, you know, with the cost of inflation, with the cost of diesel fuel, with the, your input, I mean, it's just absolutely through the roof. You know, you're, you're dealing with the weather. You're, you're hoping and praying that, you know, Mother Nature is cooperating with you and, and you're getting rain at the right times and you've got grass. And realistically, there's a lot of good people uh, this past summer, you know, we had rain, but not at the right time. And they were out, the grass didn't come up. Um, you know, they weren't able to, to get water to their cows. So, I mean, they're having to sell their herds. So, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not one of those things where you just, you know, you go out there, you calve them out and you go to the lake. Uh, you know, you've got to be with those cows and you've got to take care of them, you know, whether it's, wintertime springtime summertime like all it's a full-time year-round job it's not just go out there plant your you know your crop in the spring you know come back in june spray and then come back in the fall take care of stuff it's a full-time job and do you have a staff you have a staff no it's just uh my mom uh my dad mostly mostly my mom and dad and then and me we've we've rented out our farmland uh you know when dad got sick um you know and that's it's it, it's definitely helped him as far as a stress relief, um, but that's what we're that's what you know we were farming a bunch of land and then have cows on top of that and then have, so it was a lot of added stress to dad, and I'll be honest with you I've never been a farmer I have the utmost respect I just it's not in my blood as a as a no. farmer I I'm it's I'm a, like I said I the cows the horses you know ever since I was little we always had cowboy boots on. You know, it was it was cowboys and Indians when I was a kid. It was, I mean, that's all I ever wanted to do. Hockey was actually kind of a by. I mean, it was kind of a byproduct of it. It was like, well, I couldn't, you know, it was cold. I couldn't go out in the, in the winter time necessarily, so I pick up a hockey stick, and then that's kind of how I started playing hockey. But yeah, ever since I was little, that was what I always wanted to do. But you know, I answer your question about you know the the profitability. You know, how is it kind of going? You know, it depends a lot on those things. You know, the cow market, the price of the cattle, the calves. We sell our calves in the, in November, you know, end of October, end of November. We wean them and then, uh, you know, take them to market. And hopefully, we we're hopefully we're we're betting on the market to get a good price, and then we can cover our costs for the year, and then we go another year. So man, that's stressful, man. Yeah, it, it totally is. It, and you want to keep the, the legacy gamble. alive and all that shit, dude. I I, I get that, man. I get it. It's it's yeah. tough. It's a different animal. But like, okay, so sure. like, man, I'm looking you up. Like, fuck, did you play for a lot of fucking teams, <laughs> Big Mac? You keep all your. I was 19. <laughs> oh, okay. So like, when did so you got into hockey? And you were you always a big motherfucker? I mean, were you? I was. I, mean, I was always head, head and shoulders over everybody. You know, I look back and our team. I go back to the Brock Rink in in town there. You know, I play a little bit of rack hockey and. And, you know, I was a kid that was head and shoulders over everybody with the big goggles, with the big, you know, glasses, big thick Coke bottle glasses, you know, just that big nerd. But, uh, you had to wear glasses. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I was, yeah, I, Sport I can't see nothing. 
Oh, <laughs> fuck. That's like Losey. Losey's the same. He wears glasses. So what were you wearing, like, when you were playing, though? Were you wearing contacts, contacts or what? Well, didn't they yeah, ever fall I was, out? I always had contact. Yeah, no, I, every once in a while they'd fall out. I think I was fighting uh, Eric Goddard one time when we were in junior, and uh, that was the one time that – it was only, like, a couple times where it fell out, but uh, – just blame yeah, that. If you contact. ever lost a fight, just say you lost your contact. Goddamn contact. You couldn't see his ass. Right. <laughs> hey, right. What, what was that? You know, what was, see him. <laughs> hey, so you you know, you know played a dub, and you play in the, with the Continental League. Where's that at? Yeah. And you get fucking what? booted from it. Like, to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you guys got? <laughs> <laughs> we got a long time. Well, what'd you do to get booted? Yeah, Start like there. This, what, what is that? Like, what, uh, explain the league and how'd you get booted. So the league was, it was like a glorified junior B league. I think, you know, like I wasn't going down there to play, you know, I was going down there. My, my deal was, is I was going down there to, to see the country, you know, hockey was for me was, you know, I never really got serious with hockey. I mean, I always knew, like, I, I, I knew I was a big guy and, and I mean, you know, I wanted to play hockey, but I also knew that, Hey, the real realistically, I, I probably wasn't going to make it anywhere. I didn't think at the time. So I was just like, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to see country. I was, I was 20. I think I just turned 21. Uh, I got a call from this, this guy. He, he was, uh, I can't even remember his name. He was, he was from Flint, Michigan. And I said, Hey, you know, we're, we won't, we're starting this team up in this new league. It's Continental elite, elite hockey. League. We want you to come play. Yada, yada, yada. And my parents and I were like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, let's go check it out. So literally I got put on a train uh, in Malta, Montana, I took a train from Malta, Montana to, uh, well, I got off in Chicago and then I took a train from Chicago to, uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, and then jumped on a bus, a Greyhound from Battle Creek, Michigan to Flint. And I mean, I, I'd never been out of the country. And, and so, I mean, you can imagine small town farm kid, getting on a train, going to Chicago for the first time, going to Union Station down there. And I mean, it's just like, holy smokes, everybody's walking around. And I got my hockey bag and a couple suitcases. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out where I got to go. And anyway, <laughs> stuck out like a sore got, fucking thumb, dude. Oh, <laughs> huge cowboy hat, probably, you know, oh, like, man. but I mean, I, I ended up getting there. Um, like I said, played probably, oh, I don't know. I think it was like a two two months or a month or two or whatever, and they ended up having some issues, financial issues, and he was kind of a shady shyster, and and there were some people that were around the team that ended up buying the team, and they kind of ran it from there, and and we kind of excelled. There was a bunch of us Canadian kids, like there was a bunch of Maritimers, and you know there was a couple guys from uh, Manitoba that I played with that ended up being my roommates. Um, you know, we 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 just ran with it and had a ball and. And, you know, before Christmas, I think it was like one of the last games before Christmas, their goal, the goal, we were playing in Toledo. And it's funny, actually, I'm, it's, people are asking me all these about these stories. And now it's, it's starting to all come back to me. I should actually write them down. But anyway, uh, we, we're, we're playing in Toledo and, and one of their guys, goes and, and crossed or kicks our goalie in the, in the hand. He covers their pocket. And nobody did anything. And I was just, I was just losing my marbles. So I jump off the bench, grab this guy. And I mean, you know, whatever it, it is, what it is. And then I got booted out. So well, I got seven games or yeah, I forget what I got for that one. I got, anyway, I, I pretty much got to go home for Christmas early. And, uh, I forget how many games I got, but I got, you know, whatever. And then, uh, the second time we were playing up in Traverse City against Barry Soskin's team. They were Traverse City Enforcers, is what they were called. Well, this guy, I'm, 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 he pinches down and he spears me right in the nuts. So I'm like, uh-uh. So I grab him and we're fighting and I grabbed his helmet with the ear strap and I whacked him over the head a couple times with it. Probably not the smartest thing I've ever done, but uh, and, and you know, and so that obviously got me some suspension and then. The final straw that broke Camel's back was uh, we were we were playing Detroit and uh, one of the Detroit teams and we were me and this guy we were in front of the net and it was the commissioner's son and and I give him a little extra shot and they're like all right you're, you you got to you know you you got to go find somewhere else to play and then that's what ended up that's how I ended up playing in Muskegon and and winning a cup there and and uh, 
kind of the start of my long <laughs> a journey to the NHL. Yeah, it was a long ass journey, dude. Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm watching all these videos of oh, you. Oh God! But like, there's a there's a fight you got into. You were playing against the Falcons. Like, was that was that in the American <laughs> League where you're fighting everybody on the ice, <laughs> including the goalie? Oh, you're oh. chirping the bench on the way out. Like you With literally you literally fought everybody on the ice. Like before you left the ice. Like what is going That's on American in this League. fight? This is in the American yeah. League, right? Wow, that was that was when it wasn't even tough. The, the toughest years was oh four, the yeah. Loco year, yeah. and I want to say me and Cam actually went at it. And uh, where was that? That, that was, was in Albany. Albany. We both. Do you remember that? Yeah, dude. It we was kind of like a big win, whirlwind. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. that was, and then we were like, oh, okay, well, we're gonna go again. We're gonna go again, and that never happened. I don't think I got out on the ice again. <laughs> Man, like, well, so wait, what but, happened uh, though in this fight though? Like you went absolutely berserk though, man. Right you went crazy. Oh, he's, oh, no, he's no, you know what the funny thing is? I was not, it was, it was so like looking back. So one of their guys, Greg Mario, he's a, he's a, he was a, just a word. Like he's just a, right. just a pain in the ass to play against. You know what? He was a tough, a tougher player. He's not a super heavyweight or anything, but he played when I was in the coast, he played in Columbia and we were always battling. Like it was just, he was a, D man, I was a forward slash D man. So I mean, it was just back and forth, back and forth. It was just, you know, we'd fought like once, I think, and and uh, you know, it was it was a little bit, you know, whatever. And uh, I might have got the better of him, you know, but not nothing bad. And uh, so anyway, him and uh, one of our, you know, not a uh, not necessarily a skilled guy, but he wasn't a, like he was a third line guy, whatever, and didn't really fight a whole lot, but. He could handle himself. He kind of jumped him. And I said, uh, we were lined up on the on the half wall there. And I said, Greg, it's time to pay the piper. He's like, what are you talking about? And I said, I said, you know, I said, this is going to, this is what's going to happen. You're either going to take, stand up, be a man. Or I said, I'm going to jump you. I said, yeah, but it's going to happen either way. Blah, blah, blah. You know, he's trying to whatever. And then, I mean, I just, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? So, and then the goalie got what involved, happened was, dude. Well, yeah, he got, he was kind of, you know, goalies, everybody says all oh, goalies are off limits. Goalies, and I mean, my goalie was always off limits. If anybody touched my goalie, I'd kill him. Yep. <laughs> but they start mouthing off and, and, and saying stuff that's, you know, inappropriate and rude. I mean, by God, I'll punch them in the lips too. I don't care. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what happened is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good old lips. You know, <laughs> Right. Don't punch me in my Everybody, lips, man. Every, right. Everybody's got plans to punch me in the lips a couple times. <laughs> Dude, but, uh, was it hard to, like, um, I mean, were you dusting guys off in these leagues? I mean, like, because you're so much bigger. You throw with both hands. You're willing to eat one, which, you know, people wanted. Didn't they have to warn you? Didn't they have to warn you? Like, hey, man, like, you're you're in the league. Like, you don't need to take punches to stand in there because you're probably used to being you're, you're you're so big you're used to using your you're good at like like using your your reach and still throwing powerful punches i mean you must have been dusting cats off left and right you know what cam i the i i never did like i i never ever i you know i was wired a little bit different like i i'm you know i like i listened to your guys and i just have to giggle because and i one of my good buddies is trevor gillies and Trev is like, he's, I mean, he's a nut. He is the most intense individual I've ever met in my entire life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but he's one of my good buddies and, and, and I'm thankful for that. But, you know, when I was, when I was coming up through junior, like it took me a long time and, and to, to understand and to fully accept what I did. Like I didn't, I didn't understand it. Cause I didn't grow up, you know, we, 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 you know, we played hard and we played tough and, and, but we never ever went looking for something, and I mean I, that was that was something that I took pride in. I never ever went looking for it, and I never ever would goon it up, and I would never, uh, you know, take liberties. I mean I you know I would play right on the line. I mean I'd whack a guy if he needed a whack or whatever, but I would never ever, you know, go out and purposely try to hurt somebody. I'd try to go out there and hit somebody, and you know, play with play the right way but play you know being as big and heavy as i was i i tried to hit guys and i mean i wasn't gonna go out there and play patty cake with them but i mean you know i i was trying to impose my will that way within you know the confines of of the game and 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 then when i got to actually the turning point 
of my career was when I went to Providence, um, I had, uh, Doug Smith was my, was a, my fight coach. And then I also had, uh, uh, Paul Vincent and Mr. V and, and Doug, they worked with me every day after, after practice, before practice. Um, you know, Doug was a, he was a police officer and I think it was Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And I think he still is a police officer, but he was, you know, he'd show me different things and, you know, he, he would help me, you know, understand the role that I played and, and work on my skills. You know, I, 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 I had a bad shoulder. I always had a bad left shoulder. So I had to learn how to fight left-handed. And, uh, you know, that was kind of my ace in the hole. Like I, I, it wasn't a looping punch. It was like straight down the pipe. And I, you know, for my, and thanks to him, he taught me how to use it and use it effectively to where I would never, ever get in a position to, you know, get hurt, like hurt my arms. Like I, I'm, I'm proud to say like, you know, I never, ever broke my hands. I was, I was, I was close to breaking. I, I think I broke knuckles. But uh, but he showed me some things to where he he let me use my my uh, my strengths like I'm a big like I'm a big physical strong guy he he taught me how to use that stuff and you know granted I had to eat four or five punches it seems before I kind of got into the fight and I don't advocate that yeah. but uh, yeah. you know it was just kind of my way of okay all right I'm in a fight here uh, let's go. And, uh, but Doug Smith and, and Paul Vincent, like if it wasn't for those two guys, Mr. V helping me with my skating and my puck handling, like I would never have had a sniff. Like, let's be honest. I would have never had a sniff in the NHL. Okay. So let me ask you this. Like, in, in all due respect, like I want to know, cause like you're playing on teams with like Crosby and Malkin. Like, so you, you gotta be on the ice with them during practice and everything. Like where was your skating? Like, where was your skill level? Like, could you... Like, did you like? Did you feel like you belonged in the NHL? Like, could you hang with those guys even in practice, just getting through random drills? You know, and it, to answer your question, when I first got to, well, when I first, they first time with Pittsburgh, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ride shotgun for these guys. I mean, I was just like, I, I, I've arrived. Well, my first day of training camp, I have never felt so out of place in my entire life. But, it, and not necessarily like, you know, every everybody had a skill set. Like, I've got a skill set. You know, Cam's got a skill set. Andy, you've got a skill set. No, he doesn't. Yeah, Everybody's no, got do. a skill set. My mom's, my mom's <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> right. I got good hands. And, you're fin- and Finnish, too? <laughs> yeah, she is. But, uh, yeah. It, She's but a cowboy, you know cowgirl. <laughs> there, you, there you go, cowgirl. Yep. And it was, so... It took me a couple of days to kind of get settled in, but it's like the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like I, I'm, I'm, these guys are like just flying around me. And I'm like, Holy cow, where am I? Like, it, it, you know, in Edmonton, when I was in Edmonton, it really never, I mean, it did when I first got there, but it was different. It was just, it was a different level, you know, in Edmonton with all the respect to those guys, it, like they were a bunch of lunch pail guys and we had some skill and we had some hardworking guys and we had, you know, we had some stars, but we didn't have like the Genos and the Sids and the Latangs and the Flowers and the, you know, la, 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 la right? Yeah. And there was just a diff, you know what I'm talking about? Like it's just, yeah. it, it was just a, so I mean, for me, it was, it was a little bit tough off the first, you know, uh, off the first couple of days and then I got settled in and it's like, Oh, okay. I, you know, this, I got this. It's not a big deal. It's, you know, the, the level of hockey and I know it may sound cliche, but, um, it gets, hockey gets easier as you move up. It's quicker and it's faster, but it's easier to play because everybody is in their position. Everybody knows where they're supposed to be going. And all I had to do is just go be where I was supposed to be, you know, get it in and get it out. It wasn't like, it, it's not, I mean, you know, I'm not going to go down there and, you know, I'll use my breakaway sk- speed and go down there and score. But, you know, I could chip pucks in, chip pucks out, stand up for my teammates. And, and a guy with you know, that was, once in a while, you know, Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it, 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 I wish I, yeah, it, it's, it's not, it's not as hard as it's extremely hard to get there. It's harder to stay there. And, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that was, that was the biggest thing is, okay, you know, I got there. All right. Now, how can I stay there? How can I develop, keep develop my skills? And, and, uh, you know, the year, my first year there, uh, Sid, 
it was the year that he was hurt. He was he was out for for most of the year. You know, we'd work on some things, and he would take me aside and help. You know, do this and do that, and and you know, Tony Granado was another guy that that helped me out a lot when I was in pit. You know, we'd be working on skills, and I'd be working with Sid. Well, you can't help but get better if you're, you know, on a line like Sid's on your line. Like I was, I was kind of laugh and giggle. You know, I say I say to all my buddies, I was like, hey, you know, Sid's on my line. Like it's not I'm on Sid's line. It's you know, <laughs> Sid's on my line. So that was my, you know, that was my feather in my cap. And Sid was on my line. How but, was he uh, with you? Like, he cool? you know, was yeah? Did he like? Uh, did yeah. He, I mean, give us give us a story or two, because I would imagine. Listen, everyone says how cool he is, yeah. and I'm I'm just curious how you know how those guys interacted with you. Like you know, I'm sure they embraced you being there. Sid, Sid is honestly, pro- well, that whole organization, like you know, from top down, like you know, like Mar- Mario is just he is unbelievable. Uh, Ray Shiro, when I was there. He knew my, you know, my name, my kids' names, their birthday, like, you know, at the time, my wife, like everything. He knew everything about us. And I mean, it was, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get over that. And I mean, you know, you talk about building, winning, you know, championship teams, and it all starts from the top. Like, you have to have those kind of people in charge because it, it filters down. Like, it, it builds, like, Mario, you know, he was, at his level and then he he took Sid and then he taught him and now Sid's taking the young guys and he's teaching them what Mario and and those guys taught him uh you know when he was a young guy and like I said I I have nothing but respect for Sid and and that organization as a whole uh he was like my little guy um he was oh shoot he'd probably been four or five and he'd take them, hey, Caleb, how's it going? Like, he'd talk to them, you know, because he'd bring the kids in after the, after the game or whatever. And, and uh, you know, he'd be in the back room shooting pucks with Sid. And we were in, back in Edmonton uh, in the summertime, and we were at, I think it was called Hockey Life or Pro Life. There was, like, a big sports store back home and, uh, you know, back in Edmonton. And there was a big mural of Sid on the, on the wall, and, and Caleb goes – daddy there's my buddy Sid like you know how many kids can say that like how many kids can have that experience you know what I mean so he was and of course my daughter she just thought the world of uh you know uh, Sid too like she just you know she she she'd get all she was pretty young she I think she was two so she was pretty young but she'd get all kind of googly eyed and she really didn't know who he was but he always spoke to them as well so you know what Sid they were it was such a great organization to be a part of and and you know to, to all my, you know, like I said, after Edmonton, but, uh, but yeah, that, that was, it was an incredible, unbelievable feeling, he, he, you know. Yeah. That's we, we've heard nothing but awesome things about that organization. Mario, all Sid, those, guys, all those yeah. fucking guys, man. Hey, let me, yeah. add, you've knocked out some, you've had some nasty ass knockouts, man. Like in the minors, <laughs> fuck you. That crusty guy, crusty. Oh Jesus. You killed. There's so many knockouts from you left and right punches. But the time you fought Evenots, Radis Evenots, who's a really good guy, by the yeah. way. We had the same agent. And yeah, he's fucking a, he's a great Edmonton, guy. fucking Calgary. Knocked him out. You're at home, <laughs> and you catch him. I mean, like that blew. I remember watching. Like I remember, like being in the league, that happened, and everybody in the whole league, especially the fucking tough guys like us, looked at that and were like, "Oh, Jesus fucking Christ." You, I mean, like, did that blow your superstardom up a little bit? Like, you're like, okay, like I'm going now. Yeah. You must have been popular. What do they shit call it? Battle of the fucking Battle of fucking of uh, Alberta. Alberta. Like you were King shit. Dick. <laughs> no one's done that in a while, well, man. First of all, let's just bring her down a bit. Like I'm, I'm just <laughs> Steve. You know, I mean, first of all, like I said, if it wasn't for for Mackie and 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 that. Uh, like the Oilers organization giving me a chance. Like I was signed with, with Florida and because of the year I had in Providence and, you know, it kind of went, they put me on waivers, ended up going to Rochester and then Edmonton picked me up. And that's how I got to Edmonton my first year. And, and uh, you know, the, it, it all was kind of a perfect storm. Like there was some history between me and, Aritis and I, and, and, you know, we played against each other. We both kind of had a, a similar 
uh, career as far as like we both, I want to say we both started in the UHL. Yeah. Uh, he was playing for Rockford and I was playing for Muskegon and, uh, we kind of had a few run-ins. Um, one in particular, he cracked me with, he had a broken hand and he hit me with a cast and he's open pretty good. But I mean, you know, me just being like a little blue healer dog, I ain't going to quit. And, uh, so we, you know, we finished the fight and I always kind of held that. I was like, you know what, if I ever figure if I can ever get that son of a gun back, I'm going to get him back. And, you know, anyway, long story short, he made the NHL and I'm going on my journey through the different leagues throughout, you know, North America. Well, we had, he got signed in in Calgary. I was in Edmonton. I got I want to say re-signed. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but I got re-signed with 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 Cal or with Edmonton. And you know it was a it was the first it was the home opener and it, our home opener up in Edmonton. And you know we'd kind of been jawing back. You know we had fought in preseason, and actually that was a better fight. I mean it was like two big grizzly bears just beating the car out of each other. And. Uh, it actually was a better fight and you know what it just kind of happened that we kind of were jawing back and forth a couple of lightweights like Stefan Meyer and my buddy uh uh Jones that they fought and you know Everly scored that unbelievable toe drag top cheese on Kiprasov there oh my gosh I had front row seats to that one yeah I remember that man. and was uh that first goal oh, ever that was, career or something like that I think it was first first NHL goal yeah yeah, yeah I think so and Sick. I mean, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it was unreal. Hey, I remember you uh, when you played I, in the UHL, by the way, because because uh, now that I think about it, like I was I was broadcasting for the Missouri River Otters, man. Were you, you remember, in Missouri? You, you remember? <laughs> you, you remember playing against those guys? Yeah, you guys had Marty the Meat Grinder Melanchuk. He was the toughest <laughs> guy in the league back in the day. Melanchuk. Like, this guy was huge. C- huge, bigger than you. Melanchuk's yeah. bigger than you. Uh, I gotta look this motherfucker. Hey, yeah, he was like six, oh. six foot three, and I mean, he was like a refrigerator. Like he, like he was enormous, and he loved to fight. And it was like that was my first. I think it was my first full year in the in the U-Haul, and I was just coming up from junior. And or, well, I played the year before. Actually, that was when I played in the Quebec League. So I was coming back, and I was fighting him, and it was just like, oh, geez. Darren Kimball was on guy. the team too. Oh, Kimby, we and, like him. And you know. People kind of leave, left him alone, but a, a couple times he got yeah. pissed and he would fight. But there was there was fights all the time, man. It was just crazy. Did the did the did the Trashers, the Danbury oh, Trashers, did they ever try to sign you? No, I want to say I was in the where was I then? I think I was signed with Hartford. I was up and down with Hartford yeah. when they yeah, came you in. You were during the lockout. Yeah, I got a lockout here. Yeah, yep. lockout. Yeah, like I was up and down with Hartford in, in Charlotte. That was probably the best year I ever had playing hockey. That was unbelievable. For me personally, oh, yeah. anyway, but just like it, yeah, yeah. I, which, I mean, it, which season? I'm looking at your stats right now, Stevie. Which one? The one with the goal. I want to say it was. <laughs> yeah, it probably was the one with the goal. Maybe I got an assist. Yeah, you, know, you scored a couple goals, man. Hey, Mac, I'm looking at every my stats year. too. They're the same thing, so who cares? Yeah, but he scored. <laughs> he scored goals um, every year. He did. You always, you always had one or two. You, you had you listen. Everyone careers at one year. You had three one year playing in the in the East Coast League. So, hey, you did hey, your thing, man. Let me ask yeah. you something though. So you're crushing yeah. motherfuckers. You know how to eat a punch. You're throwing heat with both hands straight down the goddamn pipe, which is horrifying. But then you fight Goddard. Mm. And that's so oh, yeah. He throws hard. Awesome guy. I talked to him the, oh, yeah. the other day. And he catches you with one. Did he break your helmet? He in broke half your or fucking, his bo- fucking orbital bone. No, yeah, no. Orbital what happened? Yeah. So me and Goddard, we'd fought. Like, I, well, we both. I want to say he was a year before I was in the dub. He was playing in Leftbridge. I was in Saskatoon, and he was a big, just a big, oh. tall, lanky guy that threw absolute bombs. Oh. And, uh, you know, we we would fight pretty much every game we played against each other, with, you know, get in the dub. And then I fought him. We never, I don't know, I think I fought Graham Belak all the time. I never fought, I never fought Godley, but he was another tough guy. But uh, we, we had fought, while well, we fought at, uh, in Pittsburgh, and uh yeah he 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 caught me three right bam 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 and uh he dropped me to a knee and he broke my herbal bone and he broke it i guess there's four little bones and he broke all four of them so that kind of that took the wind out of my sails and that was that was a big loss for me because you know i i i never 
I'd never really knock on wood. I've never really ever been hurt in a fight. Like, you know, I'd never been knocked down or pardon me. I've been knocked down, but I've never been knocked out. And I'd never, ever been, you know, I've had some stitches and whatever it comes to fighting, but I'd never, ever been to where I wasn't able to play. And, you know, that it, it, I know how like when boxers and, and those guys, you know, they, they come, how they come back after a loss. That was, that was huge. You know that, and that was the biggest probably, block, uh, I guess mental block that I had is is how do I deal with this? And you know Sheldon Surrey, this is I don't care what anybody says about Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon Surrey is probably one of the best guys. Like he honestly, he is he is a farm you know small town kid at heart. I was at the front of the bus or at the front of the plane. Come in, Mac T looks at me and he kind of chuckles. And of course I'm like, oh, what a truck, you know. He says, uh, backer said, you might want to think about, you know, better defense. I looked at him. I said, well, a better defense is an even better offense. And I kind of went back to my seat, sat down and, you know, I was kind of feeling pretty glum and, and, uh, you know, about halfway through the flight, uh, Shelly comes up, sits down and he says, you know what, Macker? He says, I, I know a hundred percent how you feel. You know, I've been knocked down, knocked out you know, yada, yada, yada. He said, but it's how you come back is what's going to really, you know, be a testament to your character. (laughs) We're wondering what the fuck happened. Hey, hey, you got to, you got to tell us, you got to tell us what he said. You you, you cut cut out. out. Oh yeah. So Sheldon Surrey comes up to me and, and sits down. And I mean, he he just signed a big, you know, big deal with Edmonton and, and, you know, he's an all-star D-man, yada, 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 hey, list goes on and on. models. Oh, well, we had I mean, him on, man. We'll get into that in a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's, not, story. he's an unbelievable, unbelievable man. Like, he just really is. And, you know, he comes up to me. He says, you know what, Mac? He says, I've been knocked out, knocked down, lost fights, done this, done that. And he said, you know what? He said, I know how you feel, and I want to encourage you. He said, because, you know, how you come back, how you pick yourself up after you get dusted like that, is you know a testament to your to your character and that's what's going to show the guys like hey you know what like he's in it for he's not going to just get beat up and then come back and you know be tentative like he's going to come back and you know come back with a vengeance and so i i i always remembered that i, I was always thankful for that and i always wanted to get godzi back for that one but maybe i'll get him back in like some kind of alumni game or something i don't know <laughs> that's what i do now <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> that's what i do now hey when you're hanging out with Sheldon Surrey, who we love, when you guys oh go, when you guys fucking go places, do you look at the women when you guys walk into places? They stare at him. Did you know? Like when he walks in somewhere, like the guy's the handsomest guy in the world. He's cut up. He's got that long hair. Like he's tan as shit. Like explain walking around with him because Scotty Gomez came up to me one time. He goes, "Hey, when we're hanging out with Shelly, women would go up to him and say." You're the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my life. Women would say that to him. That's like ridiculous. I was hanging out with him. Hundred percent true. Like it, unbelievable. Like it, you know, he just had a. He's got an aura, a swagger about him. Yeah. And of course, you know, hell, I didn't know, you know. But I mean, just being around him, it's just like, you know, of course, it, it's just one of them. You can't even really explain it. It's just. Some guys have it. Some guys don't. I didn't. I mean, I got my, you know, fantastic personality that got me by. But, uh, you know, with him, it was just like we were in Dallas. And, and uh, you know, in Montreal, like, we had a rookie party in Montreal. And I, me and Rolly, we just sat back and just was just watching. And it was just like freaking full. Oh, all the, hot, the hottest girl in the bar were just like flocked. And it was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, Wow. Hey, living up. Do you, how do you compete with that? You, don't com- you know what? You don't the best compete. part about it. Right. You just saddle up and say, hello, ladies. Hi, extra <laughs> ladies. Hi, the ladies that can't wheel Hi. him. Come to me. <laughs> That's what the fuck Hi, you do. Uh, don't compete with him. My, name, lose. my name's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Saskatchewan. Hey, you got good hair, dude. Saskatchewan. You look good. You walked in with a fucking dude. suit on, dude. Who are you kidding? You're listen. You're privileged. Right. You're a tall, soft oh, bitch. Need... You got long fucking hair. <laughs> if you, go, dude, don't play with me. Everybody notices you when you walk into a bar. 
I'm telling you. All right. They're like, who is that goofy looking money trucker? Who's that who's that cowboy? <laughs> hey, when you came down to hey, when you came down to the US so because like, you're from a small town, man. You never left Canada. Right. When you went down to fucking Dallas and you went to some of these cities and you saw some of the fucking talent cruising around, were you like, God, what where are we? Oh, <laughs> yeah. My, it, yeah it, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> it, 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 they come out of the woodwork. Kappa. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. Atlanta. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just like, whoa. You know, Dallas. I mean, I was always a Texas fan. I've always been a Texas fan. Uh, Nashville. There's oh, another one. Oh, God. That's honestly probably my favorite road city, Nashville. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right up your alley, Stevie it's, Mac. It's up, oh, it's it's up everybody's now alley. Now you yeah. blend in, yeah. baby. Uh, you're a Nashville mother. But there's a, lot of fake, there's a lot of fake cowboys there, though, man. Like, you're you're a real cowboy. Uh, you know, there's some real ones. I don't but know. You, you, oh, the real ones know, know the real man. ones. Right. Well, you know what? It, it, like I said, up until, well, Beeler was playing there. So if Belak was playing, I was playing. And if he wasn't, it was like, off so i'd go you know we'd go do our workout or whatever get back shaded and then the guy'd go for lunch and i mean i'd sit there and listen to the music i mean i love music so that was that's a big part of my you know family is music my my uh my grandpa on both sides my grandma on both sides my mom my you know they, we all played something and so the music that was that's obviously a big part of you know nashville but uh the yeah, the talent that walks around Nashville, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. But uh, oh, yeah. you know, Dallas, that's nice. Atlanta's good. Florida's, good. I mean, it's I mean, Florida. You know, North Carolina, that's oh, a sweet Carolina, city. Baby. As a fire, hey, you're like from you're like the hey. first person from Saskatchewan we ever talked to with like a southern accent. He does, he's you, got a you, he's a mud. You're like he's got a mud accent. You got a southern accent. Well, I had some guys that I worked with down in in North Carolina. Uh, you know, when I was playing the coast, I framed houses or helped frame houses for a summer. And then, uh, like I said, the last probably, well, the last three and a half, four years, uh, all my buddies were a bunch of redneck hillbillies. Well, not hillbillies, but I mean, they're a bunch of rednecks from, uh, you know, just outside of uh, well, a little town. It's kind of right in between Winston-Salem, Greensboro, you know, oh, Charlotte, Raleigh kind of area. Man. Oh, tobacco and, road, baby. And, Good old barbecue down there. Yeah, actually. Dang right, and it's uh, it's you know they, they they'd always give me a hard time about being a Yankee. I'm like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. I ain't no damn Yankee. Oh, but uh, but anyway, it was it was like I said, guy kind of picks up on that a little bit of the Southern slang. Yeah. Like uh, when you use y'all and a in the same sentence, everybody kind of looks at you a little bit funny. Oh, I'm a goofy bastard, but, dude. I got it all. I got yeah. the Canadian. I got the goddamn right. Jersey. I went over to Britain. Right. I'm mixing. I, I'm mixing and matching. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> hey, did you you marry a, a marry a, ho- a hometown girl? No, I, I well, I was married. Well, I was married twice. I married a girl from North Carolina, and then uh, things didn't work out. And then uh, married another North Carolina girl didn't work out. And then I'm actually dating uh, a girl from here. In, uh actually, I'm just on my way home from uh, Lethbridge, uh, from from Alberta. Her and I've been dating, and uh, we're actually expecting a little girl here in the next couple of weeks. So, oh, wow. yeah, it's kind of exciting. Wow. How do you? So, did you? Were you like? How did you meet this girl? Did you get on like? I don't know. Farmers. What are they called? Farmers only. <laughs> farmers only. <laughs> no, farmers them. only. You guys. Get, I swear to God, if I could reach through this phone. <laughs> <laughs> farmers no, only. You know baby. Hey, fuck hey, that. I'd do hey, it. Search farmers only. <laughs> Leth- Lethbridge. <laughs> They're hardworking women. <laughs> you know what? We uh, we had kind of known each other from before. She used to work for the Hurricanes back in the day as a hostess, and I was, you know, we were coming That's the back and forth. Hurricanes. So it, it was we we've kind of known each other for a while, and and then uh, you know we both kind of went our separate ways, and then we just kind of reconnected here last year, and or actually last couple of years, and like I said, we kind of kind of hit it off, and yeah, things are good. I'm, uh, yeah, she's absolute rocket. That's got a fantastic personality and just love, you know, my family loves her and, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's, I'm happy and, and everybody deserves to be happy. Oh, like I said, it's, it's, it's going great. Yeah. hundred percent. Hey, listen, 
Life is good. Good for you, man. Seriously. Were you playing hockey like to to get to the NHL? Like, was that in your mindset? Were you like, oh, I'm gonna keep playing because I'm gonna get to the NHL? Like, that's my focus. That's my goal. Or did it just mm-hmm. happen for you? You know what? Honestly, like I was playing, like I was making pretty good money. You know, I wasn't breaking the bank or nothing, but I thought, you know what, this is a good opportunity for me to keep playing and for me to make a good living and hopefully put enough away for, you know, a little piece of ground and, and, uh, you know, maybe have my own little place one time and at some time and, and, you know, kind of be a, be a hobby farm ranch or whatever you want to call it. And and I always kind of had that goal. I never, ever thought that I'd play in the NHL and like, you know, I was in Providence. I'll tell you a funny story. So I got, I was retired like, I don't know, I retired like two or three times. And uh, Providence had called me, you know, two weeks before training camp. And uh, <laughs> I'm 280 pounds. I'm fat, out of shape. And I'm like, uh, you know, like this is where I'm at. And, you know, they're like, no, we, you know, we want you to come to camp. You know, we've got a skate coach. We've got a skills coach. We've got a skills coach, skating coach. You know, we've got Doug Smith here. He'll help you out, you know, help you fine-tune your craft. I was like, you know what? You know, it's worst-case scenario, you know, I'll get to go see the country again. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll come up there. So I'll go up there, and we're skating around, very first day of training camp. Mr. V, if you don't know who Mr. V is, he's, like I said, he's a wonderful man. He's like my hockey dad. I, I called him up the other day when all this BS started, you know, on the media and blah, blah, blah. I was venting. I was mad. And, uh... So anyway, so I get to meet Mr. B and, and he says, Hey, Mac, how's it going? I said, Oh, pretty good, Mr. B. You know, he said, Mac, you know, he's from Boston. He's from, uh, you know, uh, he lives in Falmouth and uh, so he's got the Boston accent. So he says, What do you want to do, Mac? I said, Well, Mr. B, I said, I just want to play one game in the NHL. That's, that's my dream. He said, He looked at me and he said, Mac, I got a better chance of dating Meg Ryan than you do playing in the NHL. <laughs> That's what he told me. And I'm like, and he might have not said dating, but, you know, I got to keep it somewhat clean. But uh, <laughs> but he said, and I'm just sitting there, I'm just like, I just crushed me. But then he said, but, he said, Macker, he said, if you come work with me half an hour before and half an hour after, he said, I'll do my best to get to the NHL. He said, but. If you are late, if you miss a day, he said, we're done. He said, end of story, we're done. Wow. So, you know, he gave me that opportunity. And, I mean, every day that he was there, I was out with him. Every day. And, I mean, some days I wanted to, to like, literally, I wanted to squeeze my stick into a bunch of sawdust because I was so freaking mad. I mean, that that's me in a nutshell. Like, I, I can't do something. I, it's frustrating. But, you know, of course, I was a kid that had to work at every, like, I mean, which is fine. Yeah. But, I mean, it not, never, ever really come natural. Nothing's come natural. So I've had to work at it, which has made me who I am, and I'm thankful for that. But, you know, guys are out there. They tell them once they go out there, do it. And I'm, like, out there just struggling, you know, trying to do it. And I just, you know, my body just wouldn't work. And, uh, but he always, he, he always had patience enough to work with me. And, and the funny thing about Mr. V, so Mr. V, like he knew, he said, Macker, what do you like to do? I said, well, I like to rope. Well, he went back and he learned, he went back and watched some videos and, uh, you know, he figured out what I like to do. And then he came back and brought it back to, to the, to the drill we're doing, Hunter's Hounds how to skate, how to handle the puck. He said, Macker, when you're riding a hoss, that's what he said, riding a hoss. He said, how do you ride a hoss? I said, well, you got to do this, this, and this. He said, it's the same thing when you're skating. How do you rope a cow? Well, you got to have your hands here and here. He said, well, that's the way you have it when you're handling the puck, when you're getting a pass, when you're giving a pass. Like, you have to have your hands out in front of you. And it was just like, boom, a light bulb went on. Yep. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I never, like, he, but that's the kind of guy he was. And, and I mean, you know, like, I just, I, I owe a lot to him. And, like I said, Doug Smith, like, there was days that Dougie'd come in, and, I mean, I'd be tired, and I'd be, you know, sore. And, and he'd be like, no, we got to we gotta push through it. Work. You want this? We got to push through it. We got work to do. And, hey, so who is Mr. Yeah. P? I want to give him the and proper, I mean, proper just, shout yeah, out here. Say his real name. Paul Vincent. Oh, so Paul Vincent. Okay. He, uh, hey. yeah, he was this. 
he was a skating coach for Florida for a lot of years. Uh, with, a lot of guys, uh, Chicago, a lot of guys go want... back and skate with him out in Boston right now. Oh, I know yeah. some people, I some think, kids yeah. from St. Louis yep. that go and skate yeah. with him. He's a big, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, like I said, he's got well, uh, most of the guys. Well, John Scott had him in uh, Chicago well, when work. John was there. It didn't work for him. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Scotty. My bad. I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to bust his balls too. Like I, I love John, but he was chirping me the other day. I was supposed to go on the show on his show and. I, time frame he was supposed to call right so i'm glad you guys called me because he was trying to set up something with zoom and i'm like what the what is zoom oh. like i'm trying to figure it out he sent me an email and, and of course i didn't get the email till later and he's like hey are you coming on i'm like well i thought you were calling me oh. so no he's a he's a great he's guy a he dude. is a big big man yeah he's he really a, is he's a good dude but, he's an all-star He's an awesome. Yeah, guy. that was a good. Hey, yeah, he rolled off into the captain. sunset. That John Scott, we like him. We've had oh, him on. I've been oh, on yeah. his shit. Hey, let me tell you something that you did yeah. one time. You know, I'm not scared of of, of Mini P. Like I'm just not. But you and Boogie, right. you and Boogie, yeah, like even Big George, like like I know he's strong, but I was worried about you because I know that I couldn't duck what you were gonna throw at me. Boogie was tough right. because he's so long and strong. Like God damn, I was just I was worried about you two. And I remember one time, right. I'm, we're in St. Louis. You're playing for Edmonton. I think I fought big uh, Jimmy Vandermeer <laughs> instead of you, thank God. And I'm sitting yeah. there, and we're in the defensive zone. Jimmy's a wonderful man. Awesome dude. His whole fucking family, yeah. tougher than yeah. fuck. Yeah. Love all Western, of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Western yeah. shit the kicking Western motherfuckers. Hockey League too, yeah. So me and Ryan Reeves Back. are at a face-off, <laughs> and they put you out, and you skate slowly up to us. And you stop on a T, you know, the, the stop, the T stop, like I don't give a fuck yep. stop. Mm -hmm. And you looked at both of us and you go, Daddy's home. <laughs> and I go, The fuck? <laughs> like I look at me and I go, I already got my fucking fight. I'm like, God, Daddy's home. And I stole that from you. Daddy's home. And I told that Who story wants to on go to TSN. Sleep? I go, I told that story. I was like, God, that's like the perfect thing to say. Oh, yeah. When you're a monster. Dad, I'm so, your fucking So dad. what no. happened? You, he fought Nothing. Reaver? No. No, Reaver didn't. Because, Are you kidding? Listen, you did that in one of your Bugard fights, too. Stortini was lined up next to him. And you came up the with the most stop. casual yes. T-stop and little tap Look, on the back uh, of the calf. Fucking daddy. Like, yeah. get out of here. Motherfucking daddy. So did you, did you say that to Bugard, too? Uh, no, I said, come on over, you big son of a bitch. <laughs> big boy. How was Boogie? Were you scared? You hey, know you're not scared of people, but Boogie, Boogie, could, oh, Boogie wow. could knock you out. And were you a little nervous with him? You know what? And with all due respect to Boogie, I was more worried about Godzi and b oh, Like, okay. the, thing about, the thing about Boogie, and I mean, you know, rest in peace, the thing about Boogie, and I've told this story. I was at a bulldog in school here there a couple weeks ago, and they were asking me different stories. And I said, the thing about Boogard, if you could weather the storm for the first 30 seconds, you know, and if you could be patient, you could get by him. Because, you know, he, he would. Because he would swing, and he would try knocking your head off. But, I mean, obviously, if he caught you, you'd be your head is rolling down the ice. But, or you'd be on your back looking up. But the thing about him is if, if you could weather the storm and kind of just wrestle and tug on him and wrestle with him and kind of grapple with him a little bit and kind of get him to where he's kind of getting tuckered out, then a guy could, like, Dennis Bondi used to do it to me. Like, every time we'd fight, he would do the same thing to me, and I never really could ever figure it out. And then finally, I was like, you know what he's doing? He's trying to get you. He's a second-half fighter. And, Cam, like, you're a second-half fighter. Like, yeah. it was the same thing with you. You know, guys, you know, they wouldn't maybe have the same conditioning or, you know, and if you could figure out a chink in their armor, like, you know, I, I, I like going, I like going the distance. I, I like, you know, I, I mean, I'd like to end it quick, but I mean, I, I'm a fan. Like, I, I, I want to see them go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Like, I watched that Lucha, Lucha fight uh, Oliver the other night. and. Yeah. I thought, I thought, man, you know what? That's a, that was a great fight. My hat's yeah, off to Oliver. He wanted he wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe until he caught a couple, and it's like, ah, yeah, I'm good. I don't know if I want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him anymore. But, I mean, you know, that, that was a good fight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, thing, the, the, thing about, the thing about Boogie is if you could wrestle with him and you could weather the storm, he was, you know, and, and we'd fought previous, of course, you know, Madison Square Gardens. I'd never fought Madison Square Gardens before. 
So, you know, Derek, or, uh, you know, Derek Booger, Steve McIntyre, I go over there. The first fight, I bounce off him, fall over, bounce off him, try to get up, hit him again. And he just, I mean, he's just such a big man. And, uh, you know, he kind of gave it to me a little bit in the first fight. So we go to the penalty box and serve our five minutes, come back out. And Storch and him are jawing at each other. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, we're going to fight again. I said, you know, uh, we, I ain't letting you away with that one. So, you know, that's how I came over and starts beat it. So, starts beat it. That was kind of how it you should have how had Storch started. Get his ass kicked, to be honest with you, I love Zach Stortine. I played against him in fucking juniors, but you should have let right. Storch just kind of maybe like go boogie one time. I don't uh, know. You know how it is. I, you know what? Storch, Storch. Starts, starts to start. That wasn't gonna let him. That was my guy. You know that that was the big boys like, need to go against the big boys. The big boys, the big boys against the big boys. And you know, my dad often thought he's like, "Why are you going out to the biggest guy?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, it's just kind of part of the entertainment value." You're I guess, the biggest but, guy too, dude. You fought somebody <laughs> right. though. I was I forgot the name when you were in junior. This guy who was like six foot seven, like lanky Mitch guy, Fritz. Mitch Fritz. Yeah, I him. I oh mean, yeah. What's his story? Mitchie was, he was, he Mitchie played, he was played no a couple joke. games like in the he, show, too. He, uh, he was a big, he played in Kona. And him and I, I think we fought once or twice. I think we fought once in Kona and then once down in Springfield. He just about took my nose off an uppercut. But uh, yeah, he was just a big, he was another big guy. I mean, he could fight, he could fire him. I think he probably maybe was a little better. But I think, you know, he fought, like, well, he fought uh, Big George there, and I thought he did really well. I think he beat, I would say he beat Big George. So, you know, that kind of shows you that he was no, uh, you know, slouch either. But, uh, but yeah, Big Mitch, he was, he was a force too. Yeah, I want to say he played like 20 games in the show. I, I looked it up a couple days ago. Um, so he, he played so, for uh, the Islanders. Yeah, so he made it, he made it to the league. Hey, when you were in Edmonton, you mentioned that it was different than Pittsburgh. And you were there at yeah. a time when they had all the first overall picks, man. I mean, they had Eberle. They had Taylor Hall, who 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 Cam says my son looks like. He thinks like Taylor Hall's my... Uh, well, he did come visit St. Louis <laughs> one, one time. Thinks Taylor Hall's my, right. my, right. my baby's work, yeah. daddy. But, um, like, why couldn't they ever, like, get, get over the hump? You said Mac T was there as the coach or whatever. He served in, like, so many different roles there with yeah. the Oilers. He's actually here now as an assistant coach in St. Louis, but like, did you feel yeah. like they were ever going to be able to turn it around? I mean, obviously, you get McDavid, things are going to change, but you weren't there for that. You know, it's a, and I, I mean, like I said, Edmonton, they were, they have been so good to me, uh, you know, as far as the alum, being part of the alumni, you know, as far as making me feel like I'm part of something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I was when I was in Edmonton, my very first time I was in Edmonton, Mackey was coaching, and, and uh, Ethan Morrow, Morrow was our captain. And uh, it, you know, it, it was the first year I was there. It was just a different feeling. Like we, you know, it was such a tough division that year too. Like all those years were like Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, you know, Dallas, and whoever else. Well, uh, the King, like it, it was so, so close. Like it was just like within a point or two. And and uh, you know, I think we had. I forget how many points we have, but we ended up missing playoffs by like six points. But I mean, you know, that was kind of a, that was a downer. Like, obviously you're never, ever going to have that team. That was the closest. I think they'd come to maybe making the playoffs. I'm not a hundred percent sure since those six. And I think there was definitely, there was a drought, uh, you know, all those years up to, and uh, you know, it, it was, you know, I can't really necessarily put my finger on why I, I was there. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm still in, oh, I'm still, I'm, I'm still here. They haven't sent me home. I'm, I'm just trying to, to, to get through practice to make sure I'm not messing up to, you know, to be on time for everything and, and, and to not be out there, you know, busting drills up. So probably not until later, my second or third year, or third time that I was there, I kind of really started understanding maybe the, the why and you know, I think a lot has to be put on the players, you know, not taking ownership, you know, certain players, um, you know, maybe needed to step up and, and, and maybe different roles and, and take the bull by the horns, me included. 
you know, I should have been like, Hey, like, come on guys. Like I'll go fight to do whatever I got to do. You know, you guys aren't going to get pushed around. I thought I did that, but I mean, you know, I'm trying not to make excuses, but you know, when you go from coach to coach, to coach, to coach, to coach, oh, yeah. it's hard trying to find a rhythm and consistency, you know, man. trying to find a structure that consistency of, you know, you've got similar players pretty much, you know, for the longest time, I thought they were kind of, you know, the, the, the players we were getting were, were all kind of the cookie cutter players. Whereas we needed some big stud defensemen and a big, big, some big forwards that can be hard to play against because back then, you know, teams were played were hard to play against. Like, you know, the, the, the skating phase was, was just kind of starting to come in where it was, it was faster, Maybe guys were a little smaller, a little faster, a little more skilled. But really, when it came down to the brass tacks, it's like if you're laying on your ass, looking up, and you're not, you know, you're not, you're not part of the play. You're not, you're not you know, you're not gonna be scoring goals looking up. And I think that's, you know, the the like, you know, you look at the teams that Boston had, those kind of type teams. They were fast, big, skilled. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh, like the teams that won it. Those are the teams I think that they were trying to get to, but. You know, because of certain maybe individual uh, things from certain players, and I'm not naming names, but, you know, we, we just needed to be better. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. We just needed to be better. I get that. And we weren't. So. Hey, hey, what about and, – and, and I, I love Mar- John Morasti. I follow him on Facebook. You know, all the tough guys. You know, we all like. Connect. He looks like a psycho, man. Like, well, I mean, we are inter- a psycho. I mean, Andy. I'm like, whoa, this guy because he, he's you tougher can, than fuck. Because next to you, Stevie, like he, you could tell how much bigger five, you ten. were than him, and he's got the mohawk oh, going. Got, I'm oh, like, oh, this fuck. guy, this guy's ready tell, to tell throw. Tell us about Morat because I saw some of your fights with him, man. God damn. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like honestly, it's like hitting a bowling ball with ice. <laughs> you can't hurt him. He listens, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's tough, man. He's tough. I mean, John, I mean Johnny, will, Fuck yeah. Johnny will say the same thing too. Like he's just, you know, they're they're up up north in Metal Lake. They're just they're just different. They're they're north of the river. They're a little different breed. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and I mean, you know, they'll say the same thing as uh, south of the river too. But uh, you know, them the guys like DJ like, King from yeah, Metal Lake. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, Bo Kinger. Oh. There's a tough scary the man. Holy oh. moly! Hey, I just oh, talked yeah, to those guys. And Kinger. I just talked to those guys. Kinger now. was on that. Yeah. On that, uh, you know, Losey put that thing. Reed Lowe put that big group together. Yeah, and we're all talking. I went. Is on. that happening tomorrow? Yeah, Wednesday nights. It's, it's happening tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be on there tomorrow. Oh. Too. Yeah, I think it's unreal. Why are the guys so fucking tough from up there, man? Is it just a hard goddamn well, living? It's, mm. you know, what? it's it's like I said, Metal Lake. You know, you're up in northern Saskatchewan, and you know, it, it, like I said, it's it's it. Saskatchewan is a special place. You know, it, you, it's the elements are. You know, we don't get the Chinooks like you do in southern Alberta. Uh, you know, the people from northern Alberta. I got really good friends from northern Alberta. And they're just as tough and probably tougher, but it's just a, it's a mindset, you know, that's been ingrained since you're a kid. And it's just like, Oh, well, you know, it's, it's a little bit cold. We'll just throw another jacket on or another sweater or another scarf or away we go. You know, it's, it's just one of them things where you just kind of have to yeah. suck it up cupcake yeah. and you got to do what you got to do. Like, you know, like for us, you know, we're, we've, you know, we've got animals and critters and I mean, it doesn't matter what, what the temperature is outside we got to get them suckers fed otherwise they die so i mean you know that's that's the mindset is is uh you know i give my heart kids a hard time about you know making sure you're doing your chores before you eat like every morning you know i go out feed my horses you know make sure my critters are taken care of before i go have breakfast and i mean that's just something that's been ingrained from from the time that i was little and it's the same thing with my kids they know that they got to go feed their dog or you know their cats or whatever and before they eat breakfast and make sure they're taken care of. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I hate to say it, but I went thirsty and hungry a couple of times cause I had to learn the hard, the hard way. And I think that's, you know, all Western Canadians. And I mean, I say this very proudly, Western Canadians are, we're, we're a little different. And I'm oh. proud to say that, like, like, you know, is, it, it, is, it, is it, it still like that though? Or like, or like, like, there? like the, yeah. the young kids now, are they being raised the same way that they I, were? I don't, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't think so. 
I would hope so, but I think today's, you know, society and culture, the way it's changing, Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not, it's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're about powder puffs, but you know, watch uh, the language. Like I said, I had it. You think they're powder puffs up there, Stevie? Come down here and see how they are. Hey, you're in fucking yeah. shit, Kickerville. Still, just so you know. Hey, how about the? Uh, yeah. I, I love the Morasti fight that you had. And there's an announcer. Like, I love the minor league announcers during oh, they're, fights. They're awesome. Like, you're literally oh, yeah. like throwing punch after punch, and he's like, Morasti's killing him, <laughs> and he's killing him. Oh, what are you doing? Where? Let's get a disco ball. You want to dance, McIntyre? You're half his, he's half your size. Oh, yeah. And he's like, you're throwing punches, and he's like, he's painting the picture that you're just getting absolutely yeah. destroyed in this fight, you know? <laughs> That's how yeah. it is. Well, you know, that, that was the thing about John, like it. fighting John. It's a, it's a lose-lose battle because – you know, we, well, actually funny. I'll tell you a funny story about John. So very first time I met John, we were roommates together up in Prince Albert. And I was trying to figure out, okay, so I was, I think I was 19 or 20, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, we were roommates and we ended up getting in a scrap and, you know, in the whatever black versus white game. And he ended up breaking my nose. I ended up taking my job. So, you know, that was, of course, I can't never live that one down. He broke my nose. He caught me right on the button, just bang. And uh, so I never forgot that. But like I said, we fought, like, how many times we fought? We fought once in Bakersfield, which is, I think, the fight you're talking about there, Andy. And then I think we fought, I think, two or three times when he was a little training camp and I was in Hartford. And then we fought a time while he was in Syracuse, so I tried spearing him. And soccer and I'm, I was being dirty. I didn't really want to fight him. I was like, I don't want to fight. I want to fight, but I don't want to fight. I didn't really want to fight him, and then all of a sudden we're fighting. So, but he was just—he was just one of those guys that you, you couldn't beat him. Like you could not, even if you did beat him, you still didn't beat him because he's freaking tough. Like he just had a head like a freaking, you know, a, a brick, you know, a, a, a cinder block. Like he just—you couldn't hurt him, and uh, which you know. I hope he's he's okay now later on in life. But I mean, he took some heavy, heavy punches. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, we I was, all did. We I all was, did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have really. I mean, but, uh, if you really think of, and, and he's doing okay, man. I, again, I, I love following everybody. Like that's why I like when guys are on Facebook <laughs> and fucking. I just know what you're doing. It's mm-hmm. interesting. Then you could right. talk to him and shit. But he's he's on that show up there in Shoresy. He looks good, man. Like because yeah. you do. Yeah. I am concerned, man. Like you know, I, I I hear about it a lot and shit like that. So how's your head? You okay? I'm good. Yeah, no, yeah. I was. I kind of had a. To be perfectly honest, with you, there was times where, you know, at the, at the end of your career, you know, yeah, you made some choices that you did. You probably shouldn't have done. It did, and then you know, it, it's just like anything. I mean, you know, you spoke, you know, candidly about your your issues that you've had, and and for me, it was like, you know, I like I said, I, I made some bad choices and did some dumb things, and and for that, I'm still, you know, I have to suck it up and say, you know what, I can, I, I can take that on the chin. I, I worked hard to, to do it the first time. I'll, you know, I'll work hard and, and do it the second time. And that's kind of been always my mindset, but I'll be honest with you. If it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't for my mom, you know, and my dad and, and the, you know, our face, like my mom, she's, uh, you know, I'm kind of, she's, uh, she's been my, like I said, she's prays for me every day. And she, you know, there's days where she shakes her head just the same as my dad. But if it wasn't for my fa- family and my parents and the people that were closest to me, I, you know, I'm, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here, well, you know, and that's, I know. I know. that's, that's, that's the reality. You know, my big, like I said, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an animal guy. And, and honestly, if it wasn't for, for my family and, and getting up every morning and, and feeding my critters and, and making sure my big black dog Dozer, when he was with me, you know, he was doing all right. Then, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't know where I'd be. Well, I don't think I'd be here. But, I know. I you know, there was, some, there, was some, there was some dark, dark times where, you know, I don't want to blame it on hockey. Hockey gave me an opportunity to see the country and meet a lot of good people. And, and uh, you know, we've, you and I have talked in passing there a few times. And, and uh, you know, it, it's given me an outlet to, to, to give back to the community by sharing – my stories and saying, you know, to some of these kids, like, Hey, you know what? I was you at, at one time. Like I was, 
just because you think you can't do something, you know, go do it anyway. Go try it. You won't, you, you don't know. Like I was just having this conversation with my, with my girlfriend's daughter last night, you know, she was, uh, we were talking about volleyball and she's a big, she's tall. Uh, you know, she's, uh, like she's 15 and, you know, she was interested in playing volleyball and, and because she's so tall, she kind of gets picked on, um, uh, you know, she's expected to be a good player. And I said, you know what? Well, I said, if you don't go out and try and, and, and just, you may not be very good at it, but at least you went out there and try. And if you go with that attitude of, okay, I'm going to go try it. I'm going to learn from people that are better than me and I'm going to work at it. You know, the sky's the limit. You can do anything. And I mean, you know, with me is, is in my career is I was given an opportunity by Mr. V by this, by the, by the, you know, the, the Bruins coaching staff, uh, when I was there, I was given an opportunity to see how far I wanted to go with this thing. And I got an opportunity to sign a deal with, with Florida and, and I got to play parts of five years in the NHL. And I mean, I, I accomplished my dream and I'm very thankful for that. So, Should be. you know, it's, 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 uh, it, you know, and for the most part, like I didn't, with the exception of that one time where I got, you know, hurt from fighting, you know, it was, yeah, I took my lumps and bumps and bruises and everything else, but, uh, you know, it was, it was a, I had a good time and, and, uh, got to meet a lot of good people and, and, you know, I'm able to come on your guys' show and have a chat with you guys. No yeah. Shit. So no let shit, me, let dude. me ask you this. Did you, did you like fighting? Like, is it something that you enjoy doing or did you not like it? And, and did you deal with anxiety because of it? Like, I mean, you mentioned dark places and whatever. I mean, how much of that you think was related to fighting or was it not related to fighting? Like, did you, did you enjoy doing that? Like on the ice? You know, <clears throat> I, I didn't enjoy the, 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 the lead up to it. I, I, then once I was in it, I was like, okay, I got this. You know, like I, I never, you know, I, I fought Donald Brashear. And I mean, I was a little bit, I mean, Donald Brashear is a big, strong man. Yep. And, you know, when you, when you're, when you get like, it's just like with boxing or anything that you do over time, you develop, uh, you can see things happen. You can see everything slows down. And with Donald, like, yeah, I was nervous. I mean, yeah, you know, this is a guy that, you know, uh, you know, had fought, had a career, and, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, but you know what? It is what it is. But I, things start slowing down because you're, you're, you, you know, you're not, you've been in so many before. Uh, you're able to see things happen. You know, you're able to react to it. And for me, uh, you know, that fight, I was like, obviously nervous right off the hop. I was like, Oh God, this, this is Donald Bashir. Oh my goodness. You know, he's a big, strong guy, blah, blah, blah. But then once I was in it, I was like, Oh, okay, this is no big deal. Like just, just another guy. This is another big, strong man. Like he was by far the strongest guy that I've ever fought. Um, but you know, I was able to, to do what I wanted to do and, and, you know, it, you know, able to survive the fight. I mean, obviously, whenever you get into a fight, you want to be able to survive. You want to be able to, you know, do your job. But, you know, sometimes you got to take a couple and sometimes you might win, sometimes you might lose. Hopefully, you know, I, I, I tried, I was fortunate enough to, to win a few more than I lost, but I always remember the losing the ones. And, and it was funny because, you know, at a young age, I was always taught, hey, you know what? Just because you're big and strong doesn't mean that you're the biggest, toughest guy in the world. Like you've got to, there's always somebody bigger and tougher. Oh, yeah. yep. And so that mentality, you know, I think it saved me a lot, you know, just having enough, like having respecting my, my combatants or whoever I was fighting, like, you know, like Cam, you and I, you know, we squared up and it's like, I respected you because I knew what kind of a fighter you were. You, you were going to wait, you were going to pick your spots. You're going to hold that right arm out and you're just going to sit there and, you know, do your thing. And, and it was coming down the pipe, but I mean, you knew it was going to happen. And, and, but I respect, you know, it, it, it's just, everybody did things a little bit different, but, but to answer your question, I, every fight you go into, if you're not nervous going into a fight, there's obviously something wrong with you. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know. That's just me, my mentality. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, 
uh, uh, an aggressive person. My person, that's not my personality necessarily. Like I, I'm not going in, like I said, I've said this time and time again, I'm not going in there to play potty cake, but when I really, what took what, where I went to the next level is obviously training with those two guys, Mr. B, Mr. Like I said, out of respect, I call him Mr. B, but Paul Vincent and, and Doug Smith. And then obviously a of my kid, like Caleb, you know, he's my, he's my boy. He's 16 now. When you, when you have kids and you are in an aggressive role playing an aggressive sport, it's, it's almost like the, the wires kind of cross and they, they kind of, because now it's like, okay, this guy is trying to take food off of my kid's table. And then it's like, you know, that's kind of where it went from. All right. I'm just, you know, doing my thing to, all right, like, I've got to do this the best I can do it, or there's going to be another guy come along and another guy. And then it's just going to be, you know, you're going to be behind the eight ball. So you have to make that choice. Yeah, so man. I get that, dude. You, you know, know that the lead up long, is long and short of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the lead up the night before, you know, the, 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 uh, pregame nap, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you know, I don't know if I kind of miss it now because it's, it's, you know, it, it, I kind of miss the adrenaline. Like I love the adrenaline rush. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm an adrenaline junkie, but I mean, obviously I, I went firefighting, but there was a couple things. I enjoyed the structure, you know, with hockey, there was structure with firefighting, there was structure, you know, I needed that in my, in my life. And, and that's what I found, you know, <clears throat> with, with the guys at the fire station too. It's, it's like, you know, you go into a battle with those guys, you know, you go into a battle with, <clears throat> and I've got a lot of friends that are, are military <laughs> And I asked them the same question. I said, what got you through the day-to-day stuff? And they said, well, you know what? Watching you guys play hockey. Yeah. And, you know, watching uh, this, you know, the, the Stanley Cup playoffs or the mm-hmm. Super Bowl or the World Series or whatever. That's what got us through. And it's like, you know, the men- the, the psyche behind it, the, the, the mental, like they had, to, you know, they it, it's, it's, it's similar, but it's so different. Because if we get knocked out going into battle or if we get stitches, that's, you know, that's, that's it. Right. But if they mess up or if they, they, they get, you know, taken home in a body bag. And I mean, when I started thinking it that way or looking at it that way, it was like, okay, I got this. I can do this. You know, it's, it's okay. I'm going to be all right. You know, this is the worst that's going to happen to me. Yeah. It's just like but, fighting uh, the first time, you know, man. It's like fighting the first time. You get right. punched a couple times. You're like, what yeah. the fuck? I could do this. Hey, you never got suspended in, yeah. in the NHL, did you? No, I could never afford it. Okay. I know, dude. I get you. <laughs> I was I just you. curious. Did you save your money? It was funny. Did you save your money? You know what? I, I I wasn't very smart with it. Like, you know, like you go through, and I mean, I'm being, they, they flew me into the PHPA meeting down in Orlando. And, you know, the, all the, like, you know, you're talking about the workers comp and all the things, like all the injuries that I had, all the cuts and bumps and bruises and everything like that and shoulder surgeries and this, that, and everything else. Like, you know, I should have kept up with that, but I was like, I always thought that, man, if I say something, those teams will blackball me or blacklist me. And it's like, you know, I, I just, you know, so, you know, I didn't. Um, and then obviously being <laughs> getting worse, that doesn't help. But, uh, you know, there was always, and, and those are decisions that I made, you know, the, 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 like I, I and I mean, I, I honestly don't think that I would change anything. I think I'd probably be a little smarter with some things, but, I was, I wanted to make sure everybody around me had a good time and had fun and, yep. you know, uh, just take, took care of them. And, and, uh, you know, there were some deals that I kind of got taken advantage of, um, because I didn't know any better. I mean, I was coming from, you know, small town Saskatchewan. I didn't know any better. Like I, I you know, I didn't have a money guy. I didn't have, and that's the one thing that I wish teams had is a guy or a person that would, go to these teams and say, you know, okay, you guys that are, are like, obviously you have your top echelon of players, right? You've got your superstar here, whatever. You've got your top six, whatever. But the guys that are, you know, they play our jobs or the third straight goalies or, you know, the backup tenders or, you know, they're actually, they kind of split the season. But, you know, back when I was playing, we had three goalies. Well, you know, and then we had extra players, and then we had this, that, and everything else. Well, you know, those are the guys, and I'm not making excuses, but I wish there was a, uh, you know, to teach those guys. And, of course, a lot of the responsibility goes on us. But, you know, we to 
to that, you know, I got my first NHL paycheck. I'm sitting in a keg in, in uh, Toronto. I think it was either Toronto or Winnipeg. I can't remember. And my, my three good buddies are sitting beside me. And I opened up my check and I was like, oh, my goodness, boys. Like, wh- wh- look at this. Like, I, and I wasn't bragging. I was like, you guys are a part of this. You're, you, you guys are with me. Like, uh, you know, but I, I've, like, this was a year's salary and pretty much in, in one paycheck How for me when I was it? playing the minor. How much was it? I think it was 20, it was 25 grand was my first paycheck. Two weeks, 25 grand. Yeah. I cleared yeah. 25. <clears throat> so, I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, I can do this, 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 and this. And it's like, hold on a second. Like, looking back, I wish I'd have been like, okay, take that, put it in the bank. Don't, you know, first couple of paychecks, throw it in the bank, you know, toss it, you know, forget about it for, you know, until you're done playing hockey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's the stuff, that's the stuff that I think guys, you know, if you don't have it, you don't know how to handle it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Like it's, it's like, you know, when these kids, like, I I don't think these kids are getting, I think these kids are getting drafted at way too young of an age. For me, for like you know, I think they should be getting drafted at 19, 20 years old, and then have some life skills. Like get get that development. Like you know, some of these kids are getting burnt out, and it's like you know, 18 years old, you're giving these kids a million dollars, and it's like giving a kid a, a little gun and saying, "Here you go." You know, they, they. I mean, that's that's my personal belief. I'll probably get a little bit of flack over it, but no. you know, it, it's at 18 years old, you're still a kid. You you haven't developed into a man. Well, like, that's, you don't why, know that's where the parents that. got to get involved in yeah. the agents, man. Make well, sure and the agents, yeah. you know, make sure you don't sure. have money and you work your fucking ass yeah. off, and finally you make the NHL right. and you get money. You're like, oh, I got to save it now. No, I need yeah. to. I want to buy new yeah. jeans. I want to fucking like, do you, something. You, sh- you can do that. You know, it's just oh, really, oh, thanks, Andy. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you need some new jeans, <laughs> actually. I mean, no, I want to buy a fucking car. I want to get out of my parents' just house. Don't spend I wanna... foolishly and, like, no. and spend all your money, you know. And that's oh, where okay. agents and parents, oh, agents and parents, should hopefully be involved to be able to. It's ha- hard help, to think help that help way when you've never had way. money, and all of a sudden you're like, "I'm going to make the NHL, make the NHL, and fucking you make the NHL." No, your dude, buddies, the horror stories are out your there. Your buddies aren't making any money. You want to show off in front yeah. of them, and it's like, "Fuck me! What well, am I going to? I'm going to yeah. be cheap now? No." Well, now nowadays, hey, the 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 top, you know, draft picks when they sign, like they're getting you know ninety two thousand five hundred whatever. Three years in a row, right? They're not getting the million dollar signing right. bonuses like, like they, they used right. to, the, yeah. and so that's changed. That, but yeah. you know, you're right, man. Listen, you you, hear the, you see the horror stories in other sports, especially where you know they 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 yeah. blow through fifty, seventy, a hundred million bucks in some cases, 100%. man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like I, like I said, by no means am I you know scraping the bottom barrel, but I just wish I would have been a little bit smarter. Yeah. But I mean, you know, by the time you pay escrow, by the time you pay agencies, by the time you you know buy a couple new suits, you it's, you move up into a tax bracket, you move up another level in the tax bracket, yeah. and then you know it, everything goes up one or two notches. From so I mean, even when you're trying to save, like for the first five years, you're really not making any money if you're playing if you're signed a league minimum playing the NHL. You know, it takes that while to get to that. I mean, unless you're like freaking. They're making 900 now, though. Yeah, well, yeah, it's more expensive now. It's crazy. But you need to buy things. You need to buy things. Right. You need to buy a new trainer. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. You want to get the fuck. You need a a home. Well, now you have two homes because you have to have a home where you're playing. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's a lot. And then not to mention, you make the least amount on a team. So you're Great. watching you're these guys, to and you're trying to catch up with them. Yeah, like, oh, they're going to yeah, sushi. Okay, right. we're going to sushi. I don't know. Yeah. It's no excuse, but it Stop does on. hit you in the face. And you got people like Cam ordering yeah. the seafood towers oh, at dinner, I, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and, and I, like, fuck and, that. And, and, fuck that. <laughs> I'm from fucking Eureka, Missouri, baby. I'm fucking spending money. Hey. Like, fuck that. Hey, good shit, man. Hey, you're the man, Big Stevie, dude. We love you, man. We love you, dude. Yeah. Well, guys, like I said, I, I you know, I've, I'm... I, when I'm checking well as I listen to you guys and I just can't help but just giggle because I, I really enjoy your guys' show and I mean I'm not just blowing smoke up the guys behind them but it's 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 fun listening to the different different stories of guys that you grew up listening or watching you know and, and come to find out they're actually really good guys and mo- I mean most of the guys are but you know you get that one little bit of a twit that you don't want to smash but uh hey. but it, like I said it's, it's it's enjoyable listening to you guys and I I can't help but giggle 
good. We want you to giggle. It's not every we day. We want you to giggle. Not every day we get a stubble jump around, yeah, you know, no, so. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, Cowboy, man. go do your thing, man, and enjoy yourself, hey. and, uh, and and keep listening, dude. I'll keep in touch yeah. with you. Saskatchewan, baby. Saskatchewan. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Say hi to all hey, the shit kickers out there. Saskatchewan beef, right, Andy? Hey, I'll send you a couple tables. Hey, hey seriously, do that. Send, send me, send send me a couple. Hey, but send it to me. Say hi to all my people out there, will you? Andy, they're not your people. I'll do it. All right. See you, big dog. All right, buddy. All right, Cowboy. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. and Get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was the farm boy. Big old boy. He's farming somewhere. He's a good dude. Former man. Uh, fire firefighter. I like him a lot, man. He's got a good reputation. I've never met one guy who's like, ah, I don't know about him. No, I thought man. it was interesting, man. I mean, you go that's from, like, dude. his background to all of a sudden being on the ice with Crosby and Malcolm. And those, that's got to be intimidating, dude, even if you're a fighter. You know what I mean? Of course, man. Like, we all went Like, are it. you able to, like, I meant that. Like, are you able to, like, get through practice and no, do hard. the drills? I feel like everybody's staring at you, you know, like. Right. You're not up to speed with them. My first couple of years with the doubles, dude, they were loaded. I remember, like, not getting the puck off the wall in practice. I remember, like, seeing practice. Did you catch the passes? Sometimes, and sometimes I was so nervous. Like, like even, like, the easy drills where they pass up, like, Jamie Langerburn would, like, do, like, a goofy little thing while he's skating. I'm like, wow. I'm like, well, I get it. I'm like, okay, do everything right. Do everything right. Like, it just, like, I, it takes a while to we get We don't think flow, about that. Man. You see these young kids in training yeah. camp who's, like, 18, First training camp, so maybe a second round pick or something, even a first round pick. Yeah, man. Everybody's that's watching them. They're going through the lines. Yeah. All of a sudden, they look on the board and like they're on a line with like two veteran guys. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, you know, it makes it easier or more difficult. I played with Alexander McGillney and Victor Kozlov. For well, a while. I'm sure he really appreciated that. They were so nice to me. It was I'm unbelievable. Sure they, were. they speak Russian with you. Yep. They spoke. They didn't speak Russian around me because they weren't. They. Included they wanted me. to include you, dude. They were so sweet. Oh, I love Can we get that. him on, man? I feel what I mean. Shout I want Almo. Shout so out bad. to Ovi, by the way. His dad passed yeah, away. Yeah, his daddy passed away. Ovi takes a beating from people. He does. I just don't get it. Yeah, but the Russian stuff. Oh, yeah. I know. And he still. I don't think like, he was happy with the uh, organization for trading Orlov. Yeah, I know. He's pissed off. I think he was too. They're in the mix. I think he's getting old. He's like, let's go for it. Like, That's what his are we boy, doing? dude. Yeah. Yeah, Orloff is boy. He's a good player. Probably the best defenseman. Boston gets him. How does Boston. Boston just? How do some of these teams just add how everybody? They, did they? That's what I mean. Did somebody get hurt? Like, did they put somebody on long term IR? Well, I think Taylor Hall, and then Felino got hurt too. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but like that was beforehand. Tyler, Taylor Hall wasn't hurt when they got Orloff. Ryan O'Reilly, a long term injury. See, this happened, man, with Felino last year. You got to be ca- listen. You make these moves; they only work out if the players stay healthy. You know what sucks is when you're a good team, and you know you're in it. And there's 20 games left, and you trade it for everybody. You lose picks, and all of a sudden, you're like, every game, you're not even thinking about winning. Mm-hmm. You're like, don't get fucking hurt. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's I, know. Such a, I know. When you think about getting hurt, and that's like, a fluke so entry. You know, I've been there before where yeah, someone takes a Maddie shot. Off did it to you, it was man. the same exact situation. I know. In that game, dude, I was like, you got hit in the hand. Like, and, you I, like, and it was by a, know it. it was by a teammate. Yes, you're standing in front and of And I was in front of the net. I know. My first time I invited Andy out with the boys. No, it wasn't. It was one of the first times. Yeah, I've been out there. I was out there all summer. Not with us. Yeah, all summer, though. It was This was towards the end of the summer before. It was the seventh game okay. of the series. But you were still, I, yeah, okay. So you had a couple games on your belt. But I like remember several like, weeks. I remember like in extra inviting you to come out there. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah and yeah. all of a sudden you, get, you break your finger and I felt terrible. Actually. I was trying to be nice, first man. Time Stop I, defending yourself. First time I came out there, you didn't know I was coming, remember? Kyle Kramer is the one that told me to come. And okay. and and yeah, so you're like, oh, but you're like on the ice already. I show up late, of course. Of course yeah. you do. Like, don't be doing that down in Nashville, homie. Like, you know, we got to no, like we, we'll be on a schedule. Yeah, can't be above the guys. How do we um, get to the rink every day? They have a bus for us. Though. Oh, all that, of course. Where no, we stay? No, you walk in. Andy. Where we stay? Do you know the Lowe's? Oh, uh, nice. Vanderbilt. Okay, good. Yeah, it ain't bad. Are we gonna do any sightseeing, Cam? Yeah, I think you and I should go <laughs> pick out a cowboy hat or something. And man, I have no clothes, man. I'm such a, I look like a bum. I don't care. It's all just chill. Who cares? I might wear a cowboy hat and some shite kickers. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't decided. I'm yet. gonna hook us up. I'm gonna call somebody and uh, we'll get out there this don't week. Give me the same size as you. 
I'm wearing sandals today from Summer Skates, which is a company out there, Cam, and they hooked us up with some Cam and Strick. Um, has the logo on the uh, sandals. Our and logo's so not Cam's easy to Cam's not make. a sandal guy. No, I'm not. Our logo's not easy to make, man. So anybody that could like uh, put together anything with yeah. our little like uh, caricatures of ourselves, mm-hmm. it just lo- it's such a hard detailed thing to make. But damn, these guys they do it. They put a little patch on this. I got like beer co- uh, koozies and stuff. I love it, man. All you guys that hook us up with all this stuff, we love all you, all mm-hmm. you fans out there, man. We love it. Yeah. We just want to entertain you guys. We just want to entertain, mm-hmm. get some good guests for you, entertain you a little bit. I love having Stevie McIntyre. Yeah, he's an man. awesome dude. Fireman too. I could be a fireman probably. Yeah. I'm not even going to do it. Don't <laughs> bait. Don't even bait. See, you, see, this is what happened last time. Like, I remember listening. Well, like, you you just, feel bad about it. You just bait me to chirp you, and I'm just not going to fall for it this time. I'm not going to be a dick. I'm just going to be like, yeah, you're a, you'd be an awesome fireman. So, you'd be in a calendar for that little town. What month? With your shirt off. Uh, Smarch. February. Smarch. The love the month. Non-mo- the non-month. It doesn't exist. Oh, really? It create a you think March is the li- least interesting? I said Smarch. Oh. What's the worst month of the year? February. 100%. Really? And then it's August. In oh, St. Louis, August is my birthday month. It's 110 degrees every day. It's miserable. Ugh. But I'd rather, if it's hot outside, you can still do things. You can get in the water. February's brutal. Now, this year's been great in St. Louis, man. It's like 65 degrees in, in February. is weird. But um, but February's the worst month. Not a little every Black day. History Month. Not and we'll give day. a little shout out. Not every day, is it? it 65 be. degrees. No, but it was this year. Dude, uh, Draymond Green from the... Uh, Golden State Warriors came out. He like is anti Black History Month in February because he's like, you know, you shouldn't just be teaching Black History one month of the year. You should be teaching it all. And I like what he said, dude. I thought it was very like, I thought it was very well said. Yeah. He's got a podcast. I think too. Morgan Freeman said the same thing. Did he? Yoink! Can you talk like Morgan Freeman? No, he's very articulate. So bitch. He's a hell of an actor. That guy. Great actor, man. I like it. Like he's not I used to thought I used to think I was going to be a movie star back in the you day. You should be. Yeah. I should have moved to L.A. Well, you should have been a hockey player first, I guess. Well, you my are. life would be so different if I just went for what it. What else? What else? You want to be everything? If I just went for it, were. huh, Cam? Why don't you just? Why don't you just like what you did? Man? Sometimes you just got to go for it. Like what I I know, and I did. <laughs> you know, and I did it again. That's true. So I did it twice over. I want to be a radio guy now. Host your own show. Doing great. Driving a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. You wanted to be. A reporter. Now that's what you are. Now you want to do a podcast. We want to do a podcast. What happened? Now we're successful as hell. Like, we accomplished what we wanted. Now, you probably wanted to be an actor and a hockey player. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so you you took on the media role, and it worked out for you. I wanted to be a hockey player. Hollywood actor. You know what I, what I really well, wanted you to been be Arnold. also? You would have been like Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Predator 2. Starring I want to be Strickland. like... Uh, Stand, You'd be good. Stand termi- up. Comedian. You'd be a good term- stand up comedian like uh, Chris Rock. Screw or that. Chris Rock just bashed Will Smith, rightfully so. Oh, did he on oh, his on his my special? God, bashed him, rightfully so. Will Smith is a cuckold, dude. He is. What does that mean? It means is that sexual? Yeah. Oh, really? A cuck is when your wife gets banged out by somebody else. And oh she my makes you watch. God, that's not what I thought you were gonna so, say. So, like, if your wife bangs your son's friend. And then takes you your on a, son's friend. Yeah, and then takes you on a, a show, and then she has to like talk about it in front of you. You're a cuckold. Isn't that what and then uh, you get pissed about? Scotty Pippen's ex wife is yes. doing uh, with Michael Jordan's son. Yes, Sandy. What's her? It happens problem? a lot in the NBA. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is like an NBA thing. Um, and NFL and NHL. I mean, and my, you know, it doesn't happen much in the WNBA. I'll yeah, tell, I tell you, you what, man. You divorce your girl, guys are gonna be on them. Oh God! You do. You get divorced with your girl. All oh those hockey God. creepos, they man. They'll be, be on that. They don't over. give a shit about you. They will be on that in two seconds. They'll be on that in two seconds. It would hurt your buddies. It would, it would hurt that me. you think are. It that, would hurt your me friends. to the core. Your buddies that think they're your friends would be all over that. Hurt me to the core. Don't get divorced. I won't. I know. I'm trying not to either, man. Oh really? Well, no. You have to try not to. Well, of course, you have yeah. to try in every way. Hey, life. dude. So after the game Brother, Saturday, you t- ain't that cool. T- you better try a little bit to satisfy dude, her. Dude, I do. I know you do, man. Your wife loves Come you. Come on, you're bro. good with your. No, give I'm me some it. credit. Don't even be nice, guy. Be no, nor no, be I'm like. Being, I'm being honest. No, you are. You are a great daddy. You're a great husband. 
hundred percent. So I know that for a fact. Yeah, I could always tell, mm-hmm. and I know the dipshits. Oh yeah, oh, I just know. Yeah. Like you, you can tell that there's like a have yes. real, real relationship. With yes, them. dude. Yeah. I hear it. Um, I see it. So you're all, good. Dude. All the dads were hanging out. The last game on Saturday was at like one o'clock in the afternoon. So all the dads were hanging out. Next thing comes one. One thing leads to another. I mean, people are taking shots. Kids are like running around doing their thing around the rink. It's like the that's greatest cool. thing ever. Yeah, man. The it's like left them like they're, they're so Vincenti. contained. Where are they gonna go? I, I want my kid to like that's his home. Dude. It's a sanctuary. The rink, dude. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, the wives were get, uh, some of the wives were just getting furious, Cam. With what? With their husbands not being home yet and just like partying. Oh, okay. Well, their kids are with you though. It's afternoon. It's afternoon. I don't know. Well, they might have had something to do, Andy. No. How do you know? Well, I don't know exactly, exactly. what they had so to do. Know. Why are you judging, man? So, I mean, so sometimes you just, you know, and I don't, I'm not. Hey, maybe some of those dipshit husbands are never, dipshits. Yeah, you never know. And the wife's like, where the fuck are you? You know, like, you don't know. No, you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what a good relationship is. I mm-hmm. can meet somebody like Brody and his girl. Mm-hmm. Like, they're solid. They do everything together. They don't take pictures at events, but they, they do everything they else do, pretty well. They, <laughs> they don't take pictures of us at the events to help <laughs> They our don't podcasts. come to our events and do any social media. No, no, but, no, they, but they love each but other. But they hang out they with they each, each, each other and just sure. sit back and relax. But I know some, some, and you're just like, well, why even, like, really? You know, so anyway, mm-hmm. it's all good, man. It's all I good. would never live unhappy. No, I know. That's what I said. Like, uh, don't ever. We're, we're staying together for our kids. Well, I don't know, dude. You're miserable. Are you going to wear the sandals I got you? God, no. Wait, I will. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, no. No, I don't wear sandals, Andy. I don't wear sandals. Dude. No, I, I told you when to wear I'm them. I'm going to wear them at home when I go on a back porch. When you're barbecuing. Yeah, when I'm barbecuing and stuff, but I don't do it. Does Kate it. need a pair? No, she's okay. <laughs> no, she doesn't wear sandals, dude. She's oh, she doesn't either? Well, she's, her feet are tiny. Dude, every woman wears sandals. Um, Open toe really, shoes? I don't really see her wearing too many sandals. She doesn't get, like, you don't ever see her toes, like when she puts shoes on and stuff? Um, Yeah, well, she has nice. Does she get her toes painted and oh, stuff? Oh, God, like yeah. She's a woman. Okay. They do. Okay. Hey, Stephen McIntyre Cam is brought to you by the Cam and Strick Podcast. Check it is. out. They've got locations all through North America. You mean... You, brought to you by you, the yeah, podcast. you mean... Oh. You mean the well, it's club. brought to you by Hair Club and hairclub.com. Don't, don't edit that. They've got locations, Cam, everywhere. Over 1,200. Yeah, they do. I just had a consultation. The easiest damn thing in the Get world. Get out of town. We talked about it. I had a consultation. Mm-hmm. They're going to fix my... So egg. tell people what to do. Just call them up and say, hey, can I have a consultation? Like, 800 279 And they have stuff for women there, too, at Hans. It's a very big industry. Yes. Kate's like, what's going on there? I'm it's like, a Dude, very they, big industry. They do, like, facial stuff and Everything. stuff like that. Yeah. Everything. So your, your woman could get some stuff done, too. And listen, girls lose their hair as well, just so you know. And they're really <laughs> concerned about that. It does happen. Like, way more than, like, I would never notice Kate, mm-hmm. but she's like, Cam, I'm telling you. Okay, let's go in there. Mm. It's our sponsors, our baby. Really? Yes, let's go in there, Kate. Whatever you need, girl. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you need. Whatever you want. Whatever you need. That's amazing. So they do a lot of stuff, man. Okay. Right here in St. Louis. I'm going to let you handle a lot of the live reads here on this close and this edition of the Canvas Podcast. Well, first form. First form, form too. Tell us about that. Getting jacked. I I take the protein every You think Nick's paying his dues right now? Oh, my God. As we speak? I mean, mean, every time I look at First form Nick. Paying dues. We're getting together this week. Although too. my arms might be as big as this. Oh, really? We're gonna have to do another workout. An arm coming. off? We're gonna have to do a uh, a flex off, dude. Oh, okay. Let's just see. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. You sure? <laughs> well, um, but yeah, Nick's Nick's there, and he's doing it. He yes. was somewhere the other day. Um, but first form's a real deal, and they mm-hmm. got great clothes too. Dude, I was just my handing God. out bars to people yesterday, like I was like Chris Kringle. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, you want a bar? Yeah. People are like, really? I'm like, yeah. Try it. Try it out. I brought bars and uh, meat sticks for all the boys. I told you I was going to do that. Are they selling first form energy drinks with vodka at somewhere? Oh, my God. Dude, listen to this. Where I did, didn't tell you did this. Did you tell me this? Where did I find this out? I think at? I might have told you. I don't know if I did. I don't think I told you. So it's funny at, you bring that up. At Enterprise? Yeah. So at Enterprise. Oh, my good so for at, you. At Enterprise Center, I... um. You know, when the, when the Blues played the Penguins, it was a national TV game. So uh, I went to the game, took my buddy, took Ty, took my buddy's uh, kid, Kellen, too. Sit in front row on the glass. We had uh, access to the club, right? Yeah. We get to the club. My buddy's like, 
hey, you want a uh, first form in vodka? I'm like, what did you just uh, say? Hell yes. He goes, a first form energy drink in vodka. I'm like, yeah, that's my territory. Like wait, he said that he, to you. He said it to me. He's like, were you like, whoa? He's I get like, you that. He's drink. like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'll do that for you. He's like, no, dude, they're unbelievable. Wow. So sure enough. Oh wow. Yeah. Dude. He goes and it was a citrus flavored. Oh. And wow. it gets me. I'm like, oh my god. And you feel good. Like it's not Red Bull where you're edgy. No. It's a different feel. Yes. Dude. Wow. I know what I'm doing when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so you Nick's can, like, no, be healthy. Be oh healthy. My God. So who knew you can do Fuck, that too? Yeah, good for damn right. That's pretty cool. Good. Uh, so, and it's a perfect day for it today. Yeah, Sunny. That's a on. summer drink. If I, you can have a Camastric uh, podcast, uh, mango lemonade, hard seltzer from Four Hands, and do a first yeah. form energy drink with us. Uh, You'll get rocking and rolling. <laughs> Feel good. Yeah, man. Um, awesome, awesome, man. So, anyway, so check that out. Uh, firstform.com get the fruits and the greens get all the vet get the fish uh fish, fish oil, oil pills yeah. they Vitamins. got stuff for your heart yeah. they got stuff for men they got the stuff greens, for women they got stuff protein. for kids they got the best apparel but you got to use our link you got good stuff firstform.com slash yeah, camera use our link guys yes. it helps out so much for all of us spark skate sharpener wrong. and that sparks with an x cam yeah, I know. S-P-A-R-X. I know. Just, I don't want you to like get confused when you're doing your little Google search. It's S-P-A-R-X. They're out of Massachusetts. This guy's Steve Jones. Say hi to Steve. Hey, Stevie boy. He's what the up, man? best, man. He loves the game, but he also loves making you a better player by having the proper skate sharpening technique. They got all different uh, grooves and different uh, hollows you can use. I go with a half inch. You can get the five base. You can do whatever you want, Three man. Eights. You can do that, too. Yeah, you Is that what you, you use? Um... I don't know. I haven't okay. got my skate sharpened in a long time. Well, check it out. I'll do it for you. I don't you. know what I want. Let me know how I do when I, I will. sharpen them. We're going to have to do it. Um, so check that out. Get the Sparks. Sparks Skate Sharpener. Use the promo code CAM and Strick. It's going to save you more money than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it's going to save you just a bunch of money in general. So get the skate, sh- uh, the Sparks Skate Sharpener. If you are a hockey parent, if you play men's league, whatever it is, uh, listen, it's the most amazing investment you can ever make. So today we've got evaluations, tryouts tonight. I have no time to go see Seth. Oh, God. No, I have no to. time. And no, I don't want to go see Seth. Who does? Nobody, actually. Even yeah, like he's eating Cheetos he's, and he's touching his stuff. You think he's got a lot of friends? You got orange skates. You think afterwards? he's got a lot of friends? No. No. No, his, friends, his friend is the internet at 3 o'clock yeah. in the morning yeah, drinking, that's, that's, drinking and Mountain Dew Code. And then, he, and then he's sharpening your skates, guys. Sharpening your skates with one hour of sleep. Camus Drick is the promo code. Go to Sparks. Go to do it today. Gelsticks, gelsticks.com, G E L S T X. Get there, get that weighted stick. They have golf, they have lacrosse. We're focusing on the hockey. I mean, you stick handle with that before the game. You go out on the ice, it's going to feel like a golf ball, and you're going to be dangling like a mother. I'm not going to say effort. it. I know, don't yeah, say it. Hey, we got, You've been we a got terrible the, influence. we got the big boy no, looking at me. That's what happens. we got to watch. i got to evaluate. And they're telling you that, too. So I know, it goes through them. So hey. get that gel sticks and get it today. Gelsticks.com. Love having them on board as a partner of ours here on the Cam Strick Podcast. And, of course, Bellman and Bellman.com, Cam. The best car dealership you will find anywhere. And they're located they're the in Troy, right down the street. If you have bad credit, doesn't no, matter. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter. No. We'll take care of you. And we know it's easy. You can to get send bad your credit. wife there. They got the Buick, yeah, they got the GMC. They yeah. got something for everybody. Then the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on the other side of the road. Yeah, it's easy, man. It's, they got a lot of options. Does it get any that. easier than that? No, it does not. You have a lot of options, too. And uh, I just got that badass 6.4. <laughs> Tell them how Danny treats you. Great. How does Dale treat you? Great. And Kenny, too. Kenny. Everybody. Hi, Kenny. They're the best. All right, Great Stevie dudes. McIntyre joined us in this yeah, edition. Big Stevie. Love all y'all. the Cam Strick Podcast. Uh, check out CamandStrick.com. Check out all our social media channels. Yeah, follow us on social media. Everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All of it. I'm everywhere, man. You can follow our individual accounts. I'm at Real Strick Nasty on Instagram. I'm at Cam <laughs> at Cam Jansen twenty five, I guess. <laughs> oh, my cameos are open. Right. I love doing the cameos in the spring. That's normally my cameo season. Yeah, Cam. people love it, Andy. Right around turkey hunting Rick, season. I can't wait to get a, cam- a cameo from Andy. <laughs> Talk about nothing. YouTube as well, by the way. <laughs> We're all over. We love it. Check us out on all, all platforms, guys, man. man. Hope you enjoyed Stevie you. McIntyre. I was a good boy today. Yes, you were. I was a good yes, boy today. Have, mm-hmm. a, have a great day, everybody. See you. Guys. See you.